Coming to you live from my apartment again, <laughs> it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who says, F you, I can get put loud too. I'm Rob <laughs> Sesternino. Hey everybody, it's great to be back. So excited to get to talk about the 18th best season of Survivor, Survivor Palau. First off, thanks to Taryn Armstrong, who filled in for me last week on the countdown as uh, we were uh, making big moves. And so thank you for Taryn for filling in, breaking the all-time record of longest podcast ever. We're talking about the 19th best season of Survivor, <laughs> Survivor Cook Islands uh, with uh, Matt Scott and Mari Forth. Uh, great job. It took me a couple of days and made it through. Uh, excellent work. Talking about the 19th best season. Very excited to talk about the 18th best season, Survivor Pullout, which I had a lot of fun going back and watching uh, this week. We've got a great panel of uh, Pullout experts with us to talk about it. Of course, first, let me bring in a woman who told us just now she has watched this season 12 times. She's an authority <laughs> on Survivor Pullout. Please welcome back Lita Brillman. Lita, how are you? I am. I'm so thrilled to be here at the Palauer Hour on Truck 108. <laughs> there you go. Nailed it. Yes. Uh, Lita, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, happy to to see that your big moves era is uh, winding down. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully <laughs> um, for now. Yeah. This is uh, this is my favorite season. I was I was the person who ranked it number one. Probably the only person. Um, okay. So definitely definitely interested to see what you guys think. Okay, why Palau, Lita? Um, I think that there's definitely a nostalgia factor. Um, I was telling Chantel, this was the first season that I really watched like on my own. Survivor was a show that was always on in our house. Like my parents and my older brother watched it, but I was five when Borneo premiered. So I didn't really like have my own opinions on it. Um, but Palau was the first season that I would like watch with my friends and not just my family and uh, was sort of independently a fan of it. Um, so it really kind of started my survivor fandom in a way. And Steph was just, she was it, man. I still have uh, a autographed headshot in my childhood bedroom that says uh, happy 11th birthday that my mom ordered for me um, from her. And she was just my, my favorite player ever. And I think regardless of whether you like it or not, this is a really, really memorable season. Um, nobody goes like, oh, Palau, like what happened in that season? Like everybody remembers um, the pre-merge at least. And then also it has a really memorable uh, finale. So I think... It's just a really unique season. And I definitely came away from it, um, having not seen it for a few years, I came away from it with a lot of different opinions than I had before. Um, so I'm glad I got to rewatch it with sort of fresh eyes. Okay, well, great to have you here as such a, a authority on Palau. <laughs> Another great Palau expert that's here with us, uh, Chantel Francis is back. Uh, Chantel, how are you? I'm great. Okay, news flash. For every two hours of podcasting, we are having one hour of break. We are. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> great, great. No, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, Chantel, that, so, okay, so if memory serves me, um, we have not had you back on the countdown since the worst season of all time, uh, the, uh, the Survivor Island of the Idols. So this is a real glow up uh, in terms of Survivor season rankings for you. Absolutely. And kind of in tune with what Lita's saying, it really represented a time in my life. Like I remember watching it and like being taken back in this rewatch. I'm just kind of like, wow, like I was so living for Steph. I was like the same age as her at that time. And like, it was like when I still kind of wanted to be on Survivor until like all those balloon eating things started happening. And I was like, oh yeah, this is why I don't want to be on Survivor. But up until that point with, with Steph, just like watching her, her, her whole game again, um, it just took me back to my younger self and it was really still motivating and I loved it. Okay, well, this was a lot of fun to go back and uh, watch this week. And so I'm really looking forward to talking about it. Of course, uh, we're just getting started here tonight. Uh, this weekend, the Patron Feedback Show is back. I'm going to be talking with Cameron Haas and Danielle Doby and answering more of your questions about Survivor Palau on our Patron Feedback Show. Of course, you can get that every single week at robiswebsitecom slash patron. Okay, so... Let's let's dive in. Let's let's talk some Survivor Palau. 
Uh, any big takeaways on the 12th time through Lita? <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'll come right out the gate and say I don't think Ulog is a bad tribe. This is going to be maybe my my hot take, my hot takeaway from the whole season. But they get so unlucky. They win three challenges. They win reward challenges. So if this was an era of Survivor where they don't do reward challenges anymore, they probably would have won three immunity challenges. And their rewards suck. Karora gets a new shelter, like a beautiful <laughs> shelter, and they get Pringles and Mai Tais on a boat. <laughs> they get a sewing kit. Who cares? Like they don't even get like a tarp with it. They just get the sewing kit. So of course they're not gonna be able to to come back from that. I just and they it's not like they get shut out at these challenges. It's very close most of the time. Um, or it's kind of like crap shooty things. Um, so I just I don't think Ulong is is that bad of a tribe. And I think one of the reasons that they also seem so bad is that um we just spend so much more time with them and there has to be some kind of story there. And the story is like, Oh, we're losing because we're disorganized or because we're not communicating or whatever. When the reality is like, they're probably just losing because you, you lose by a nose sometimes, but again, they win three challenges. Um, and I, I think that that Oolong uh, gets a bad rap. Yeah, Chantel, that's something that I also noticed this time through where that, you know, you think in your mind like, oh, it's just like uh, Oolong is going to just get the <laughs> floor mopped by uh, or they're going to get the uh, w w would they be mopping the floor? The Karor would mop the floor uh, <laughs> right. with Oolong and yeah. <laughs> uh, you just think that it's just going to just going to get their butt kicked the whole time. But yeah, Lita's right. It's it's actually it's very close. And you know, uh, Oolong wins some rewards along the way. Like, uh, like it's it's not as big of a mismatch as you think when you uh, go back and remember this season. Well, I'm also wondering, like, this could be a hot take as well. What if they hadn't voted off Yolanda in the very first episode? Like, what if they'd kept her around and had her strength in some of these earlier challenges? Like, I know that she was a little bit polarizing to this particular tribe, but she did have a lot of strength that might have been really adaptable and usable by Oolong. And I'm wondering if that's kind of where it all fell apart in the beginning. They didn't really have a leader, and she was willing to step into this role, even though it wasn't welcomed. Um, maybe if they had a little bit of guidance whether they wanted to or not they might have been able to come together earlier on and maybe maybe win yeah um certainly uh couldn't have hurt to keep jolanda <laughs> in in the game that uh that certainly would have been uh, a solid move for oolong uh but uh yeah the, it's the report of it being just such a mismatch i think is exaggerated over time. And I think the other criticism that Palau gets is that it gets boring after the merge. And I actually think that no. um, for a season where it's, you know, um, just one tribe has decimated the other tribe, I think that actually the, the post merge has hardly any like duds of, uh, of votes. It, it's actually a very exciting post merge. Was there even a merge? Because they still kept the same name, correct? Like it they was did an absorption. Yeah, absorption. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I was like, wait, there's no tribe name, the merge tribe, like, uh, you know, moment. So yeah, I, I definitely felt that the, the the second half of the game that it was really interesting, but I didn't realize how much. I was frustrated with how things were going. Like I knew you could just see how it was going to be laid out, especially now that we know how the outcome is. And it was just so obvious. So I was rather frustrated with just watching these people just get in line to let Tom win here. Um, so yeah, second watch around. I was frustrated. I, I disagree. I mean, Tom wins five challenge, five immunities. What are they supposed to do? Like there, mm -hmm. there was an opportunity at seven and that was frustrating, but I actually came away from the season a lot less impressed with Tom's game. I felt like I, I just generally feel like winning out is not an impressive way to okay. win. I mean, it's impressive in its own way, but it doesn't make me think you're a great, I don't think Mike Holloway is like an excellent survivor player. Um, and I, I actually thought Tom uh, skated to the end more easily than he actually did. There actually were a lot of moments where it could have gone very wrong for him. And um, particularly at the uh, the final immunity challenge, or not the final immunity challenge, the final four, um, where they have like that combination luck. It's just luck. It's pure luck that he wins that challenge. And if he didn't, then Tom wouldn't, I don't think Tom would be in the final three. I mean, maybe he would have, maybe Ian uh, 
wouldn't have turned on him, we'll never know. Um, but I came away from this uh, a lot less impressed with Tom's kind of chokehold mm -hmm. on the game. I don't think he actually had the the dominance that I remembered him having. Yeah, it's very interesting to go back and watch Tom's game because there are a lot of things that just happen. He gets a lot of like lucky bounces in terms of uh, the way things go, not to take anything away from like his uh, skill set as a provider. But, you know, uh, going back and watching this again, I I'm wondering, like, was Tom Westman just like a slightly more polished version of coach is uh, is that way off base because I feel like that that he was uh, set up to be sort of like the guy who was going to fall uh, I think a lot of the people in uh, Karor were looking at Tom like yeah okay well we'll let him run things and then eventually we're gonna pull the rug out from under him it was not necessarily like I think that any of them planned to have him go to the end then he just happened to uh, as Lita said you know win a bunch of the challenges like I, I don't know necessarily like uh how repeatable Tom's win uh, would have been. Yeah, I think that what the biggest problem or what really helped him was the fact that they never had to go to tribal council, really. Even the Willard vote, that's pretty an easy vote. So they never had to strategize. They never had to turn on each other. So they had to always stay together as a unit, as a tribe. Like, we're a tribe, we're together, we're a tribe, we're together. So he was able to really use that and being like, we've been doing this together. I've been doing this for you guys. Like, I've been keeping this tribe together. And I think that if they had to face at, like one or even two, uh, you know, tribal councils, they would have had to he would have had to scramble a bit or he would have had to they, people would have to work harder to to advance in the game and i feel like they just allowed the numbers to be dominant and like they were in the they were in the side with the numbers so let's just stick with that and they never really had to try anything new and i don't want to take too much away from uh tom's game i just feel like you know there were definitely openings where you know he like was able to avoid disaster on a number of occasions he also did a good job of i i think uh cutting any sort of like uh, major disasters from happening with the work that he does uh, with Karen as well. So he does a lot of great stuff on the fly as well. But I think that overall as a group, I think that they were really like setting Tom up for a f more of a fall than he ultimately ended up having. Yeah, I think the coach comparison is really interesting because this is um, early enough that integrity is still like a really big deal in Survivor. And Tom is really good at guilting people and making them feel bad for yes. not having integrity but i think one of the one things that helped him and also the reason that i think this post merge is so dynamic and interesting is that uh well first of all there's no room for a pagonging it's not possible because there's only one person on another tribe but the other thing is that because they have been together for so long and have had so much time out there where they haven't had to talk strategy they've gotten they've probably gotten to know each other as people even better than um, most other seasons where like, I'm sure everybody on every season gets really, really close, but they're talking strategy a lot more because they have tribal council every three days or six days or whatever. Um, out there, they probably had a lot of time to just talk to each other. And I think that played to Tom's advantage where he gets to the end and is able to tell people, particularly Ian, that like what he's doing is morally wrong. Um, and people are more willing to buy that because they're closer than the average, you know, final six or four or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that uh, overall this season is very fun in terms of like you spend a lot of time with uh, Oolong in the first half of the season and then you spend more time with Karor in the second half of the season. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like a nice balance where, you know, I I've talked about plenty of other seasons that have pagongings uh, along the countdown and like, uh, Redemption Island, for instance, you know, uh, there's no joy in Zapatera at any point. Uh, and even the stuff at Ometepe is uh, not as interesting as the like chess game that ends up getting played at Karor. So, uh, Chantel, I really feel like that um, both halves of the season, I felt like were equally compelling. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what's kind of like 
unique about this season as on a whole is that it's not really like any other Survivor season. You know, we really get to know two tribes in two completely different ways. So we get to learn one tribe. We know all about Oolong and them being on the, they're the underdog tribe and we're just, we're riding with them. We want them to do well. And they actually don't. They don't end up coming up on top, which is like not usually how the story gets told. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, it kind of goes the way that is expected to a certain degree where it's like they were always winning their their leader was Tom. He was doing a lot of the winning with the, or helping the wins for the tribe. And then he was winning a lot of immunities, but we were still getting to learn about these people, but like in the winning sense. So it was, it was definitely completely opposite of the way that we got to know these people and, and very compelling if we look at it that way. Lena, do you have any theories on why this is 18th on the countdown? I, I feel like that after going back and watching it again uh, this week, I, I feel like that this was way too low for Palau. Um, I do have theories. I think, um, everybody is going to approach a ranking differently. Um, and if we were ranking this based on, uh, if it was everybody who was participating in the rankings, just watched all 40 seasons one time, I think Palau would have gotten way higher. Palau just doesn't have the rewatch value. Um, once you know that Oolong is going to lose every single challenge and that Tom is going to basically win every single challenge in the post-merge, it's not as compelling. The reason I still find it very compelling and I love it so much is because I think there are so many great characters. I think almost every single person on Karor is a winner and I can understand why they got cast. Oolong, not so much, but they do get rid of all those people early. All the people Mm -hmm. that I don't really understand how they got cast. But Oolong has some great characters too. I would love to submit James Miller for the worst Survivor player of all time. I actually (laughs) think that there's a compelling case there. I think he is so funny and is so bad at survivor it's unbelievable um yeah but well, I, I think- well, like, uh, explore that a little bit like i get it like he's definitely uh like uh his a lot of his comments uh like i, I don't think that they were great in 2005 uh let alone 2021 <laughs> but why do you feel like he's such a terrible player what do you mean all she got is her sexuality yeah. <laughs> she's a woman um, yeah. I, I just think I think you guys talked about this on evolution strategy that he's he's a false prophet literally every single thing he says is wrong mm-hmm. but it's not just wrong it's wrong in a way that is actively harmful to the tribe like I know how to tie this knot <laughs> so well and I'm gonna fiddle with my skirt the entire time you uh, I, the I yeah <laughs> mass <laughs> stuff like that he convinces them that he's so yeah. good with tools and it's his confidence is just actively <laughs> detrimental to the tribe he's not good in challenges he doesn't contribute anything to to Oolong's success um i just feel like i mean we didn't get to see him really strategize um very much but i can't I can't imagine he has that much of a strategic head on his shoulders. I just think everything he does is detrimental to the tribe. Lita, what was his catchphrase that he was trying to make happen? Was it, come on. Was that it? (laughs) His catchphrase seemed to be that boy has some ass behind him. Because he says it like four times in the finale. Or some tail behind him. Some 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 tail. Some tail. Yeah. So... Yeah, Jay, I mean, about I mean, and he was a character, and this is a season of characters, Chantel. That I, I feel like that really the cast. Uh, there are a couple of duds over on Karor, but overall, oh, yeah. like this is a really great cast. No, that's something that I I'm was sorry, U- Ulong. Sorry, I apologize. I was paying attention to, and I did make a, a thought about him. I mean, like these are good, interesting people, and I did myself as well. Like, I did understand why all of them got cast. Like even with Wanda in the beginning and Jonathan, that didn't even make it onto the into the game. But these were really interesting characters that um, I, I understood why that they were going to be part of this, you know, social experiment, you know, fifteen years ago. Um, I wish that we could see we could have seen Karor though in the hot seat more often. Like they kind of just had a kumbaya, like uh, we're just living Survivor, like we're out, we're catching some sharks and we're catching catfish and clam. Like it just seemed like they're they're on like uh, I don't know one of those islands and uh, mm-hmm. they're just playing playing Survivor, but they didn't really get to get dirty. And so I would have liked to see some of those characters really have to get dirty and start instead of like you know, defending their character in the end when they actually were had forced to start playing the game. But I definitely loved all the people. Should yeah, they- but just just to 
finish my thought. I, I do think it's because the rewatch value is very low. So people remember the season as just being a total, like, you know, decimation of a tribe. And so I think that's why it's so low. Um, but I do think it was so exciting to watch the first time. Cause you with like, they're really going to let it go down to a tribe of one. And Steph <laughs> was so exciting. And now that people have seen Steph on Guatemalan heroes versus villains, that she's not as beloved. Uh, I think people don't look at Palau as fondly either. Um, Cause there was a version of her presented that now we know is not necessarily yeah. true. Um, so I, I think it's, it's the rewatch factor. Um, is that it's not as exciting, but sorry to interrupt. No, you, Lita, you brought up Stephanie, and I have to say that this time through, uh, I wasn't like super impressed with Stephanie. Like, I remember in the real time, Stephanie was America's sweetheart, that they everybody loved Stephanie so much. They brought her back the very next season. It was uh, like uh, three months after this, they went with that with a whole new, a whole new season. But you didn't Chantel, think that was because of Bobby John? Yeah, I will. You know what, actually, Bobby, John? Bobby John, I was a little higher on on this rewatch <laughs> than I was uh, like in, in, in the real in the real time. Um, but Chantel, like, uh, do you think that Stephanie was overrated here? I just think that she, uh, like, I don't know what she did that was so great. I think because at the time it was really the first opportunity we saw a young woman that was just so able to go toe to toe with a lot of these men. Um, mm -hmm. Watching this season, I was like, oh, all these challenges are just so physical. It's always going to be the two guys at the end that are going to do the last puzzle or whatever, like the shooting, whatever. There was always Tom versus uh, Ian or, you know, it's always going to be two men at the end. And I felt that she held her own for the most part with a lot of the men yeah. in, in some of these challenges. And I think that that was what was really compelling about her. Cause we're just like, yeah, she can do it. She can, she can swim fast with them. Yeah. You know, Steph can go against these guys. And I think that that's really a, a big part as to why we we're really riding for her is because she wasn't, um, she wasn't afraid to do well and, and go against these men. And it was not, not many other women were able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a great season for women yeah. <laughs> uh, no. overall. It's really just, I, I actually, I came away from the season very impressed with Jen, actually. I think mm -hmm. Jen had a legitimate path to, to victory uh, that I had never really thought about before. Um, but I think with Steph, it, it was also just like that she never considered quitting or slowing down or giving yeah. up when we had... One, maybe two, depending on your position on Ian, people quit this season that had had everything handed to them. And she never, like, she just fought the whole way. And for me, I did not come away any less impressed with her as a survivor, as a strategist. She makes yeah. some really bad moves in Ulag, forcing a couple ties that, like, did not need to happen. She was really lucky that Bobby John's an idiot. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, it was very not good. Um, and we now know that Stephanie isn't exactly a strategic mastermind, but it's not about that. It, it was about just, I still tear up every time at that tribal council where Janu quits, where she's like, I know it's me. And like, it's mm -hmm. so unfair. And you just, you have to be on team Steph when you see that it's so unfair. Mm -hmm. And even when she was by herself, like yeah. I was like, how did did she did she row that boat and get it up onto the the beach by herself? <laughs> like you know, like just the fact that she was able to do it against all odds. And and I, I agree with you, Lita. I'm going to start tearing up now, right? Because like <laughs> she was trying so hard. She really wanted to be there, and she wasn't going to get beaten down. Like she had everything against her, and she still wanted to persevere and move forward. And so that alone is something that anybody can connect with, and especially women looking for you know a hero or somebody that's like them or seeing somebody that's really never going to quit. It's just it's something that I don't know. I'm drawn to, and I, I support that, and I I want to see her succeed so yeah. that's she why meant a I, lot I to a lot of fan. yeah she meant a lot to a lot of young women yeah and because i think that this is a season where really the theme is about and, and tom is really the embodiment of sort of like uh working hard being tough uh you know uh never giving up under any circumstances uh i mean and tom is like the embodiment of that of course he goes 11 hours in the final challenge and really uh is sort of like it, the a, a model of what I think Survivor is looking for in a contestant. And Stephanie definitely has a lot of that. She survives Oolong. But I think that it, it's uh, an interesting contradiction between uh, what Stephanie brings to the table and why she's so beloved. And then Katie, as a finalist, 
who that she doesn't have like the tenacity or like the like physical toughness of a Stephanie and her game is just like raked over the coals. And I thought she actually makes some interesting arguments about how like, look, like uh, I, I'm never going to be as tough as some of these people. Like I played the game. That's my strong suit and you don't have to like it, but that's, you know, these were my tools that I brought to this game. And she's just like, uh, I feel like even from the show, not ever treated like a serious player in comparison to Stephanie, who is, uh, you know, not one tenth of the strategist and, you know, is beloved by the audience and like and the production so much they bring her back immediately. Yeah. Um, part of that is that Katie never had to face any adversity until the end. Um, and so it's hard to for those players. Um, I think on the jury, it's hard for them to kind of feel anything towards Katie when she never had like any challenges to overcome. And, and as an audience, it's hard to root for somebody like that, which is the same for Tom. But I, I mean, I hate to, to bring it up this early, but it's obviously a, there is a gender thing there that when you have something to to show, which is immunity necklaces, a shark head that you killed, like mm -hmm. it's it's way easier to show your game. Uh, but Katie has to tell it, and that's just not that impressive um, to a lot of people because yeah, she she was pathetic in challenges. Which okay, Greg, how many immunities did you win? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you just won the reward to see your buddy Greg. Um, but <laughs> uh, came away from the season very low on Greg and his buddy Greg. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, I, I love Kate. I would have voted for Katie in the end for sure. Because like I said, I am not that impressed by winning immunities until the end, but it is to me much more impressive as she said to never have protection at, after the merge and still make it. Um, and I don't know why people didn't take her seriously. Um, and it, it makes me really curious about how a vote would have gone down if Ian was there, because I wonder if people saw Ian, as kind of Tom's sidekick and they saw Katie as kind of like nothing, just like the the third in that triad. But Katie was trying to make moves in a way that I Ian was not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not Katie's fault that Karen sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think cause like back then though, as well, we weren't, we still weren't that um, forward the strategy elements of the game. We wanted people to be winning stuff. Like we, we, that was like the obvious path for people to get to the end. And so when we're looking back, like I was saying too, I'm like, there was, there would have been no way that I would be voting for Tom. And I would have been trying to make a case for Katie, like in the jury. I was like, if I was in that jury, I would be fighting for Katie to win this game. And so I thought that was also really interesting for me on the rewatch, how much, cause I don't think I was feeling that way necessarily the first time around because I didn't feel as though she won that much and her game wasn't as flashy but now that like my you know evolution of strategy has happened with how I view the game I've kind of gone back and looking at this and I'm like do you know what she actually played with the hand that she had a really exceptional game that just wasn't respected because people like well we want to see the ace but like you know you won with four of a kind but like we want to see an ace and so yeah I just uh I think that she, just because of the time and the era that it was, her game wasn't respected, even though I would respect it now for sure. Yeah, I think Ian was a serious jury threat at one point in the game. But Lita, do you think that Katie would have had a good shot against Ian? I or a I shot? was thinking about this. I, I just think she has a shot, 100%. Yeah. Um, I think she has a shot. I think people were not happy with Ian at the end. I think... There particularly was a lot of stuff said in front of the jury at the end that um, that worked against him. Um, and also Tom would have been very not happy <laughs> had Ian sent him home and would have gone and, and convinced the jury, I think, not to vote for him. Um, but that's why that's what I'm saying. I am really interested in how that vote would have gone because or even Tom Tom versus Ian, because I just don't know how people viewed Ian who were not there at the end game like how does Janu feel about Ian I have no idea because mm -hmm. we didn't see a lot of these relationships on Karor um outside of of those end game people um so I I would be interested in seeing that but Ian yeah. did not was not interested 
Should tell, <laughs> the thing that I was wondering as I was watching the post merge of this, like uh, Ian and Katie, were they the real pair? And then they planned on getting rid of Tom because the way that Katie talks about their relationship and the way that Ian talks about their relationship, it seems like that they were tighter than the show showed us uh, until right until the end of the season. They always portrayed it as. Tom and Ian, Tom and Ian, but I, I feel like that it might have been more Katie and Ian. I, I definitely think it was more Katie and Ian, and we didn't yet, they didn't show that storyline at all, enough for me to like, you know, like I was crying with them when they're on the beach. Like I know what that feels like to feel betrayed by your friend. And like, you know, this is someone new. Oh, that you just Chantel. Met up <laughs> I know I'm really, <laughs> I can get all mushy sometimes, but I cried a lot to be on this rewatch. Like it's, it's like an emotional, I, emotional season. And like, I love seeing bonds and I love seeing people working together. This is part of what it, it attracts me to these social strategy games is like seeing how people connect in real time. So like when I saw them, their, their relationship kind of falling apart and him not really even knowing what to say and trying to save it. Like, I do feel like there was a story that if, if things had kind of shaken out differently, if like they were the final, I think we would have seen more of their storyline kind of going along together. But because it just didn't end up that way, I think that that's why they kind of focused more on Tom's game and what Tom was doing in his relationship with Ian. Lena, yeah. do you have a clear read on that? On whether the, the, the Katie and Ian of it all. Um, I I don't I don't think that it's necessarily one or the other. I think Tom and Ian were kind of a pair and Katie and Ian were kind of a pair, but Tom and Ian seem to be playing the game together. Whereas Katie and Ian were just like mm. best friends. Mm -hmm. um, I will say watching this now, the conversation on the beach that you're referring to between Ian and Katie, where they're both crying and Ian's like, do you want me to like quit? Um, it was a lot <laughs> more uncomfortable now that I'm an adult. Cause when you're a kid, so Ian, I looked it up. Ian, was 23 and Katie was 29 at this time, something like that. I don't know. I didn't look up when their birthdays were, but you know, the close, close to those ages. So she's six years older than him. And for her to be talking to him like that, I thought was actually, um, oh, uncomfortable. I think I, at my age now would not talk to a 20 year old that way. Uh, somebody six years younger than me who clearly there's a huge maturity gap. I think when you're a kid, it's like, oh, they're all just adults. They're all in their 20s or whatever. Um, but I actually found the way that Katie mm. was was really upsetting Ian to actually be uh, uncomfortable and a, a little inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's some major league uh, emotional manipulation coming Ian's yeah. way, both from Katie and from Tom. And Tom. Uh, like he yeah. gets it like double barrel from uh, <laughs> both of them. Uh, like Tom is like a, you know, I'm just really disappointed in you, Ian. And Katie's like, that's it. Our friendship is over. And he's like, uh, I, uh, I can't, uh, guys, oh, I, 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 what, what is what, Ian you know? Woody Allen? Yeah. He's, got, he's just like all out of sorts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was really wanting to, um, Ian to be able to articulate himself. And I totally I, I totally see where you're coming from, Lita, with like it was she could have maybe, you know, shared her feelings with with him in a way that wasn't so like manipulative. Absolutely. Um, and I wish I was like always rooting for Ian. I'm like, Ian, you have a good case. Just like just get it out. Like you were in the right. You did what you wanted to do. Like, don't let these people strong arm you into feeling that you're a bad person. You haven't done anything wrong. I was yelling at my stream screen multiple times being like, Ian, it's okay. You're okay. But I think it's because he's a little bit young. And this is probably the first time he's really had to deal with these big personalities in a game. So high stress for so much money that like he kind of crumbled a little bit and it's understandable with his age, but I was really rooting for him just to like, just to give it back to them because like, I didn't think that they, I didn't like that they both kind of got their way with how they treated him to make him feel bad. So like, you know, in the end, when he steps down for Tom, I was like, to make things right, I was like so angry about that. So yeah, I was rooting for Ian, but I don't think that he had the tool set to be able to go toe to toe with those two. Mm -hmm. I got to imagine Ian was very popular at the time. I mean, obviously yeah. there wasn't really like social media, so it's probably hard to gauge, but um, I, I got to imagine, even though he thinks that he's coming off as the villain, uh, everybody was kind of on Ian's side to an extent. I love it. I'm a huge Ian guy, but also he's yeah. in Pittsburgh. So. He never got uh, asked back though, did he? I, I think that if I you look he... on the Survivor Wiki, they, they did ask him, but I don't think he ever accepted the offer to uh, go back. I mean, he was very popular. Tom was also uh, very popular. Stephanie is very popular. So 
uh, this is a season with a lot of like breakout characters. And I do think that this season serves as a really effective like bridge to the middle season, the middle uh, ages of Survivor, the, the Survivor's teens, where we talked about Survivor Vanuatu a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. And some people love Vanuatu, but I feel like that overall at the time, like it didn't really resonate with uh, the audience. And that with all due respect to uh, Eliza and Amy and, and, and Rory, um, there weren't really uh, any breakout stars from Vanuatu. And I think that this was after Survivor All-Stars, like I think that Palau served like a really effective uh, purpose in like proving to Survivor and to the audience, like Survivor like is alive and well, and Survivor is still capable of producing new stories and new stars, like post All-Stars. And the seasons are gonna be more physical now coming up. And I think that Palau is really the first season to sort of like push into like super physical challenges that we're gonna see throughout the teens. And then also that they're going to just have like these uh, great characters that the audience falls in love with. Amazing challenges on mm -hmm. the season. Yeah, like visually, at least I think some of some of them are a little silly, but um, <laughs> I, I think visually they're stunning challenges and the location and kind of the theme of it all. Um, it's been Great theme. not. Yeah, not every season has like both the location and kind of like a simple theme where it's like World War II, like pretty encompassing um, that ties it together. And that's what I mean about like the season is so memorable, not just because of the oolong thing and the the final immunity challenge and the characters but it also just sticks out in your brain as like oh yeah palau i remember that was the one with like the camo and the sharks mm -hmm. yeah and i also just loved how they you know they brought people the indigenous people to as part of some of these challenges you know we got to learn about the land and kind of the, some of the challenges and even the distance that palau was from certain areas in the in the world like we definitely got to learn a little bit more about palau um and i and i definitely remember enjoying that in earlier seasons where you know i guess there was a book at one point where they can read about the history of wherever they were and then they'd have some different challenges about like you know running into the wood i don't know it wasn't in this season obviously but like yeah i like a bush guy, about it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Like, they, like in the, like in the Amazon, we had like a three ring binder that was just like in the camp, and it's like okay, well, at some point there's going to be a quiz about this, so you would just read it because there was nothing else. It would be like laminated, like three ring binder full of I stuff. So yeah, they that. hardly ever do anything like that anymore. You're telling me that these people didn't just know that it's seven degrees north of the equator? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm. I do miss that in the more current seasons, the kind of homage to the to the the area and the land that they're on. Um, that they they kind of did a lot more in earlier seasons, and this is one of them that I really I really enjoyed getting to learn a little bit more about Palau. Okay, well, we have been learning all about Palau, and I think that uh, unless there's anything else that you want to talk about, are you ready to go back to uh, go through the season? Yeah, um, just another major takeaway. I think this is one of the hottest casts of all time. Hottest cast Whoa. of all time. I was looking at the picture and of, of everybody on the cast, and I was like, "Really? <laughs> yeah." I mean, there's some there's some duds, but there's there's some there's a lot of hot people on this cast. What is that rated by like <laughs> overall average, or are you looking for like a certain number of standouts? I, I think like number of people that I would consider attractive is okay. very high on this season. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if Mike Bloom is around for that eventual <laughs> list of uh, hottest casts of, of all time. I mean, there's a reason there's two showmances. I love when they talk about uh, Stephanie is like Jeff and Kim hooked up and everybody goes, ew. <laughs> like, they're fine. <laughs> All right, Survivor Palau, <laughs> season number 10. First time we have uh, 20 people on a season, but it's a little bit of a misnomer, 20 people, because we're still at the point, Survivor doesn't know what to do with 20 people yet. Yeah. So we're going to have a big twist where we're going to kick two people off after the first day. Uh, unbeknownst to uh, them, we're going to see Wanda and Jonathan go out. Chantel, uh, did you cry when Wanda <laughs> and Jonathan were not picked in the draft? Well, no, but 
I really don't enjoy when people who wanted to be on this show, so whether or not they applied or they were, you know, asked to be on it, they still went through this whole casting process. And like, I work in film and television. I know that this stuff, it takes a lot to get there. And just the fact that they've flown all the way out there, it's probably been the last, you know, couple months of their life they've been invested and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to maybe live out my dream and be on Survivor. And then they just get plucked off and they were waving to the people that get to enjoy their experience from the boat taken mm -hmm. away. Like it's just for me, that's not compelling. It's 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 mean. I Nobody it's mean. likes that. I don't know I don't why know. shows why do, do this. That? We we just it. my brother and I have been watching um the Amazing Race, a lot of old seasons uh, that we'd never seen before. And there's an, a season of The Amazing Race where they do this. And it's just like the last one to finish this like oh. very first challenge while we're still at the starting line just gets eliminated. And nobody likes it. I can't imagine anybody at home being like, yes. Yes. Like, <laughs> we don't Good. care about them necessarily. And like, you know, that their heart is broken. It's like, mm, that's not the drama that I'm looking for here. Especially because Wanda doesn't even get a confessional. She's com without the singing on Paramount Plus. She's completely edited out. Yeah, Lita, could you speak to that? Uh, Wanda has been uh, copyright <laughs> censored. She gets to sing on the finale. So I guess Oh Susanna is public domain, but maybe she the other ones that she parodied are uh, not public domain. I don't remember. I know they're on YouTube. I didn't watch them uh, in preparation for this, but I don't remember what songs she was doing i think she was making up a song on the boat when they were the, the rowing boat to the island yeah but what was, was the tune song. like it must be i don't think that was a real song it must yeah. be a copyright thing though well, why would they do this i don't know if it's a copyright thing or if it's even more complicated if wanda has made an original composition and that the oh. lawyers are like oh no she could sue us like this is her original song uh, so i again uh, i'm sure that we we'll, we'll, cd <laughs> we'll, we'll hear from some of the legal experts that are out there of why wanda's music like uh like copyrighted music totally makes sense i thought wanda Wanda was sort of winging it, so I don't know. I think this is maybe be hearing from my lawyers when they come. <laughs> when they come, so yeah. But so Wanda, Wanda's singing. What 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 is still in there? Her singing on the boat is still there, right? No, nothing. Oh, it's not, I, I saw. Oh, that when when she's leaving. Okay. No, uh, like when she's the... leaving is cut out, or when she's coming in. All, all of it. There's no. Oh singing my god. On the really? No, it's Justice even more confusing Wanda. because oh, everybody's shouting. Yeah. Everybody's shouting, "Give us a song, Wanda!" And people who have never seen this before are like, "What?" <laughs> is she? Okay, yeah, I, was, will she? I got confused because I went and looked back of like the best of Wanda, and then they did have it on the phone. So video. I that, so that I thought that um, I just had missed it when I was doing the rewatch. But you know what? You were right. When I watched it, I don't think that she was singing no, on the boat going to the island. Yeah, not at all. She only sings at the reunion. You know, uh, for Wanda, you know, it's a lot of highs and lows, uh, you know, <laughs> that Wanda, she w went out early, but then the wand off happened and then she had uh, international uh, acclaim, but then they took her songs out of Paramount Plus. So, you know, easy come, easy go for Wanda. <laughs> Well, and poor Jonathan, though, as He's been well. been getting shirked around mm -hmm. so much. <laughs> but Jonathan, though, I mean, I guess it's because he jumped off the boat early with Steph. I believe it was him to yeah. try to get the the idol. Um, and I think that that probably left a bad taste in maybe people's mouth. But like, I That's really what thought... he said, but Angie's like, no, it's because you suck. Really? Yeah. I, just, I didn't really see much of him, though. Well, yeah, it, Angie at the reunion says it's because uh, just nobody liked him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and Jeff has to like, all right, all right, all right. We, don't, we don't need to get into yeah. this. Um, I, I do want to mention, uh, before we get too far into the podcast, uh, very sad, uh, though, to go back and watch uh, Palau because there's uh, two young women from this season that have uh, been, you know, uh, tragically uh, passed away at a young age, uh, Jen Lyon and Angie also uh, passed away uh, in, in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, very, very sad uh, to lose two young women from this season. Both cancer too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this so, is, I think, the only season that we have two people that mm -hmm. have passed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely, especially uh, just having kind of a new respect for Jen's game. Um, and honestly for Angie, she's a Angie she's too player than I remember. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, because she gets a, a real like pre-merge arc in this season, which yeah. you don't always have in uh, a 20 person or 18 person cast where almost everybody has like an arc along the way because we really spend so much time focused on Oolong in the first half. And then we have enough time to give everybody something in uh, the second half of the game over at Kuror. Um, These survivors are here to play also uh, when they're all dropped off on the beach uh kobe is working hard from the from the second the game starts lita i love kobe I, yeah i know his internet presence has been polarizing uh, mm -hmm. but uh i think kobe is great on the season uh i don't necessarily think he's an amazing player um but i think he is such a good character um and i think probes probably got a real kick out of him um and it was a good thing for survivor to be able to do like you know he was bullied and now you know everybody has respect for him including the steel worker because he has so much ass behind him mm -hmm. um but uh no i i love kobe um but yeah he he gets actually a lot of screen time on the season yeah um, for being the merge boot he gets a lot of screen time and Chantel, even at the finale, Je Jeff is talking about like, Oh, we got to talk about Kobe, uh, survivor's favorite hairdresser. And they talk about <laughs> like, uh, they really made like a whole, uh, like segment out of his arc and how, uh, what it was, what it was like for him to be out on survivor as a, a gay man and how he was bullied growing up and what it was like for him to be part of the team uh, that I was really surprised. I, I didn't remember survivor making uh, you know, such a big deal out of Kobe. Well, actually on the rewatch, I was, I was like, Oh my God, I love Kobe. Like I was definitely rooting for him. Mm -hmm. I think it's because he was playing the game in a way that's familiar to me, but it wasn't really understood then. Um, you know, he, like he really, he sh they should, he should have gotten those girls together with the Greg and with the Jen, they should have made that flip in that moment. And they took him out at the right time because if he was able to turn that around, he probably would have gotten to the end or at least a lot closer. Um, I love that he was a person that was going out and do, and winning for their tribe many times like it was a really big glow up and it was a nice way to see that like even you know people like james were kind of putting him down and saying that like he got beat by a gay person like i, I obviously i was like oh my god that's so uncomfortable but at that time it was something that was pretty like amazing that like wow this man he's 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 so awesome and so especially because he was bullied when he was younger to see him have a glow up was um it was really awesome and i thought that he was the best strategist in in the game he just didn't know how to maneuver the pieces because they weren't playing and they never had to so i think he could have done a lot better if he was on a tribe that maybe lost once mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it's it's interesting that survivor you know, I think they they really gave themselves a, a pat on the back with Kobe uh, at the reunion, in particular. That's like, you know, a, about him being gay and all of that. Um, whereas we had two queer women on Vanuatu, and I don't think it was ever discussed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Survivor was not interested in drawing all that attention to that. Um, mm -hmm. So just interesting how much they're they're kind of celebrating Kobe on this season. Mm -hmm. And then. We are going to ultimately have uh, this pick uh which is going to result in uh, Wanda and Jonathan being uh, the last two people to be picked. Uh, this comes after we're going to get uh, a race for immunity necklaces, which Ian and Jolanda get. And Chantel, what a raw deal for Jolanda, where she gets individual immunity, and then uh, Jeff's like, yeah, you have immunity for 10 minutes. It's that's it's another part of like the beginning of this season. When I started watching it again, I'm like, why did I like this season so much? It starts off terrible from like what I like to enjoy. I was like, oh, I, I don't like, you know, the scramble to the, the immunity necklace. Like that's not really that enjoyable to me because I don't care about any of these people yet. I don't like people being ejected immediately. And I don't like, okay, so, you know, I, the black woman's usually going to be voted off first, especially back then. And so, the, oh yes, okay, she's got, she's got the necklace. Like she's going to have a shot here she's gonna be able to like maybe get into the game okay no she she doesn't at all and she's gonna be up first okay okay cool the <laughs> one world thing is also first. really weird yeah the, the one world thing is very weird at the beginning and i don't know if it 
adds anything to to the season in the long run. Oh, see, I actually think it's interesting, especially because then when Stephanie ends up being the one person to survive from Oolong, you know, she has some relationships uh, with Tom and Ian. And Kay. I mean, it doesn't but it go doesn't anywhere. Matter. It gave me it false it hope, though. It gave me such yeah. false hope. I was so upset because, like, they brought it back. They told us about that part again. I mean, like, oh, yeah, I kind of have a thing going with Steph. So when she comes here, she can be part of our four and make it a five or whatever it was. And so I was like, oh, my God, she might have a shot to, like, just make it past a couple of votes. Like, she might be able to do well and then it was like oh actually nah i'm gonna stick with these five people instead by staff and so i was like oh so who cares about what bond they made on the first day it didn't matter mm -hmm. at all yeah so i was like mm. you know i'm sure we got this question submitted for feedback <laughs> but lita how do you think that stephanie would have done if she was on karor um mm. i i think stephanie uh, probably wouldn't have placed that much differently. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I, I mean, I think it's possible she goes to four. Um, it's really, really hard to say because the reason that they wanted to get her out is because Stephanie sits at the end. She wins because of the Oolong thing. Yeah. I mean, probably, I don't know. None of them were there with her. So maybe she doesn't get any votes because none of them like know her, uh, if she did get to the end in this timeline, but in the alternate timeline where she's on Karor, um, I don't know what her story is that yeah. she wouldn't so have to try so hard. She wouldn't I don't have know to if be people fighting. Yeah, I don't know if people see her as a threat or if it goes how it did in Guatemala and she makes it deep, but it, it people don't really like her. Um, mm. So I think this was definitely the best possible universe for Steph as a person outside the game mm -hmm. um, sure. because people just loved her and uh, clearly that's not going to continue as much in her future seasons <laughs> you know i also thought it was weird where they had the tribes get drafted and then they send out wanda and jonathan and then they they go back and they live on the beach again like yeah. uh it was wild that they didn't split them up after the draft Chantel. I, like it didn't a lot of things didn't make sense so that was one thing that didn't make sense to me like i would have preferred as soon as like they have their two teams now then they separate and you know the games so the, in a way it's familiar with and also i really wanted them to merge quickly like or at some point like not at like nine or wherever they merged at like i wanted them to merge at 13 like we're used to and so both of those things were choices that i'm like they're doing things differently i think the name of this episode was like doing things differently than we've ever done before or something like that <laughs> And I was like, well, but this isn't necessarily good. So I don't think they ever brought it back that whole, that this beginning style. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm kind of glad about it because it didn't work for me. Yeah. yeah like it is a long pre merge. When do, is the eventual absorption of Stephanie? <laughs> what is it? Day, uh, day 20. Uh, day 24 is when Kobe gets voted out. So it's not, it's not super late. It's not like one of the latest merges. It must happen day 22. So it's, yeah. it's, it's late, but it's it, not like ridiculous. It feel, I mean, it's episode nine. Yeah. <laughs> it, it feels, I mean, part of it is just knowing what happens with the long. So on a rewatch, it, it does feel like kind of a mm -hmm. slog. Um, which again, I understand why people don't like love rewatching the season, but it feels like a long pre-merge. We start with more people than we've ever had and we merge later than we usually do. Mm -hmm. I literally forgot though, that she was the last woman standing and just like was absorbed. I, I, I forgot about that. I, episode seven, I'm like, we're only at episode seven and there, there's no yeah. merge coming for a while. We're halfway through the season. Like wh what's going on here? When is this going to like change? And it doesn't for at least two episodes. So, you know, the wild thing about these two tribes after they're created is that on paper, it looks like a big mismatch. Yeah, it looks like Oolong is going to destroy Karor because they have all the muscle. But it's a storyline as part of this uh, pre-merge leader that it's really Oolong has the muscle, but Karor has wisdom. Well, Karor has the ability to sit people out of every challenge so that they can pick the perfect squad for mm -hmm. every challenge. Oh my God, I can't believe they win when they can have Tom and Ian play in every immunity challenge and then they lose the rewards because they sit out so strong people for that like mm -hmm. of course the, this is why swaps are important because the more lopsided it gets the more you can just pick you can hand pick your squad and i mean 
with the exception of like Kim losing to Janu one time, which is like really embarrassing. If Oolong had to go up against, you know, like Janu and Katie in every challenge, then yeah, they would have won and Willard and Karen or whatever. Um, but Karor had the luxury of sitting those people out. Also, not for nothing, these are like all swimming challenges. Um, and so, I mean, not all, but there's a lot of swimming challenges. Um, and so like that clearly doesn't play to Ibrahim's strengths as, as we see, that doesn't mean that he's not a good competitor, that he's not a good athlete. Um, it's just that Ian swims in his job professionally every day. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, Steph is a great swimmer. Um, but she's not Ian. <laughs> so like, of course it's going to play to, to her strengths. Yeah, Chatel, do you think that there's a different way that they should have done the picking for the challenges where that everybody has to participate in a challenge that where it's so lopsided, where we get to the point where, what is it, eight versus two at, at <laughs> one point? And we have and we have these challenges, especially like when they're eating the um, balloon, uh, you know, uh, you, they're really able just to like sort of like, uh, as Lita said, basically like stack the deck against whoever is competing from Oolong. And I made a note of this myself that do you think that there's a better way they could have done the challenge selections? Well, maybe like sometimes they do, um, you know, weight distribution for certain things to make it fair. Um, so maybe they would be like weight classes. So like somebody that would be a weight class, like Stephanie had to be competing and then somebody in a similar category as Bobby John, maybe, um, you know, when we're down to, to being so lopsided because like, a lot of the times it'd be like Tom and Ian versus them two or, you know, some other configuration of that, but they definitely didn't have the same like strength versus strength each time around except for the one time where like i was i was upset with them for not winning but it was when katie and i think it was katie karen and somebody else i'm not sure maybe it was greg they had to make the the sos sos yeah and like that was one that they really could have done well why did they make it inland like it wasn't visible oh my god how are they supposed to know whatever Ulong's sos is better <laughs> mm -hmm. I, it was, it was, it was yeah. better but it, Story. They're like, we have a subjective challenge. Let's make Oolong lose again. Oolong's thing was better. It was more visible. It was more visible, but I did understand if I was judging as somebody. How are they like supposed Ariel? to know that? It doesn't look inland to them on the ground. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I thought that I call I call riggery. But right, anyways, so, the only, that was the only challenge though where it was yeah. uh, there was more women than there was. I thought the bathroom was nice too. Yeah, well, that, let's talk about this because I, th I think this is interesting. Lita, do you feel like production wanted the destruction of of Karor? That you, you, you uh, Oolong, Oolong. Uh, uh, that they, you feel like that they wanted to see them go down? Because I feel like that yeah. that you would think at first glance that production would, if anything, want to like level the playing field and uh, make it even. I mean, it's too late after a certain point. I think that's probably the idea. Well, if production wanted to level the playing field, then they wouldn't have had to pick them. They would have uh, assigned the tribes themselves, which is, I mean, that's why they do that. When they assign the tribes, they do it to make it fair. Um, so I think they expect some level of lopsidedness um, with the pick them. But I think that may be true kind of going into it. Um, but... I also think that once it got down to maybe like four, they were or even five, I think they were probably like, oh, this could be interesting. I think that's why they don't have a swap. I mean, maybe that that is all predetermined for legal reasons. I'm not sure. Um, but I think that production was interested in seeing where this goes, especially because Stephanie was such a rootable character. I think this was the best case scenario for production. Yeah, Chantel, it is wild. There is no swap because uh, there is uh, like eventually like I mean, there's some form of tribe swaps in seasons, what, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and then nothing here in 10. And then we're going to swap tribes uh, again in season 11 and 12 and 13. Uh, it, it is wild. No tribe swap here. And that in this season where I think they also say like, oh, no, we always planned that the, the merge was going to happen this way. I just that they could change that, though, like have them come together. They still have these two challenges 
maybe not a merge, but maybe do a swap where it's like, okay, let's make this even again. Let's get make something different happen for the core people. Like maybe they're, well, they would never be out of numbers, but they might be on a losing tribe at, at some point. And just to shift up the dynamic, um, I do agree with you, Lita. I do think the production was like, oh, this is, this is a direction that we didn't expect it to go. So let's allow this and maybe, you know, uh, just foster this version of Survivor. And maybe they did, I know that they said that they didn't, but maybe they did have a merge planned and then they decided you know what we're not going to do this merge because this is a different kind of storyline that's going to be something epic and memorable let's go with this and it did create a memorable arc force for Steph it created a you know survivor hero and so they probably thought that that was a better gain than making it fair for Steph to maybe have a shot so yeah you I know was, it's go ahead well I was just wondering if any of this maybe had to do with the introduction of the hidden immunity idol in the next season. Um, mm. Because this is a much different and some might argue better season if the idol is introduced in this season. Cause if Steph finds an idol on that beach, which Steph would have been the one to found to find it. I'm convinced. I don't think looking for it. <laughs> I don't think Oolong is a very smart tribe to begin with. And Steph is, you know, she's smart enough and would be the one, I think that would be driven to look for it while Bobby John is like, cutting down a tree um and so if Steph had gone into the merch with an idol i think this is a much wilder season mm -hmm. just to go back to what we we're talking about with the tribe swap so uh, the tribe swap is traditionally like day 13 there thereabouts uh so at that point in time angie gets voted out on day 12 day 12 is the day of the double tribal council with Willard and Angie. So five members of Oolong already have been voted out uh, at that time. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, if they were planning a swap, I definitely could see them saying like, uh, let's, Let's see what happens. Let's see yeah. what happens here. Let's see, see where, this, let's see where like, this goes. Like, There's no way that they could Maybe lose, they'll them, lose all. them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they believe that it was possible. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, that's when you would swap and they've already lost so much. They were down to a four-person tribe. Uh, that, what would you do? Like uh, we saw in Survivor Marquesas, I think they swapped when it was eight to five. And then uh, like would they level the tribes to, you know, six and six. So uh, it's complicated to do a swap when it's that lopsided. Or four, four, four. Is Didn't they do it? Oh. oh. No, they, they merged in, in Samoa. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they merged eight, four in Samoa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned like the idol because I, I I'm always the like, person that's like oh, I don't really love the idol like I don't really like I don't really like it like I, I like the bare bones survivor but there was a point when I was watching this I'm like oh, I just wish that she had something that they weren't able to just plow her over and like you know she couldn't really do anything about it like she just she did try her best she she was hoping that she can get these women together that they would make yeah. the best decision I did want an idol play to happen I mean so in I fairness uh, the Janu vote is as close as Stephanie having a <laughs> hidden immunity idol as you're gonna get. Like that the was like pretty much. Idol. The oh. ingenuity idol. Good thing. <laughs> yeah. We still got yeah. the bell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That uh, comes in a suitcase. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we end up with a, a really good immunity challenge where the tribes have to make a strategic decision about uh, what gear they're going to take with them across the obstacle course. And this is really the first time, Chantel, that we see where uh, Karor is able to use their smarts to get one over here on uh, Oolong. Well, that's and that was, I think, game changer was like the fact that they were just like, let's be light and let's just win. And just let's take what we most like the most important thing. We know fire is life, blah, blah, blah. Let's make sure we have fire and let's make sure that we win. And I can understand the sentiment like, oh, well, we want to win and have all these items. But like, if you don't win, you're not going to get them. I believe that that was the stipulation. Don't get so exactly don't get greedy just get the win so that you know you would have like the, at least that advantage of like fire so i thought that that was a really smart choice on Karor to not be fussing with all this other stuff just worry about getting themselves to the, the map first mm -hmm. and, and i was so upset with yolanda and steph like not being able to figure things out there because you see steph being like we should go like leave it leave the stuff leave the stuff and they're still trying to gather all these things and i was like I was I, I forgot how things went down and I was like, uh oh, this this isn't good. This isn't good. Yeah, Lita, it is wild how the tide turned on Jolanda so quickly. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, it's. I think it's a trend with Oolong that it's usually one person that messes up the challenge mm -hmm. for everybody. That like James does it a couple times, <laughs> Ibrahim does it once, Jolanda does it here. Um, it's it's usually one person that is the problem, and so I think for Oolong, they already didn't really like her because she's you know she's bossy, she's older. Um, they don't really like having a a leader, and so this was a very easy way for them to say like oh well she was obviously the the problem in this challenge um yeah. but i don't know i guess why she doesn't seem unintelligent to me so i don't know why she's so hell-bent on making these bad choices in this challenge <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure uh she is i know she's involved in uh her local government i'm pretty sure that she uh teaches also at a university so uh, i think has, has think Yolanda ever been on rhap yes she was part of the uh black voices of survivor roundtables uh that we did and she was very involved uh with uh the uh, diversity project with uh with cbs and gotcha. uh she was uh, you know part of a lot of those conversations that were being had uh with uh cbs to try to get the uh the whole diversity initiative uh through so she's been very involved uh over the last year uh and you know she definitely felt like that she did not get a fair shake on the show oh this is one of the least diverse seasons we probably have ever had i mean guatemala is gonna come and say hold my beer but <laughs> uh this is not a, a good season for diversity i think all all of Karur is uh well I, nobody is black that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> Um, so for, uh, Jolanda that she ends up, uh, going out by a vote of six to three, uh, Ibrahim and, uh, Bobby John vote together. And this was something that I forgot. Cause I think in your head, you're always like, Oh, Stephanie, and Bobby John, Stephanie, and Bobby John. But, uh, Bobby John's number one guy is, uh, definitely Ibrahim. Uh, Stephanie and Bobby John have like no relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Even when it's just the two of them, she's like, what like do we talk about? <laughs> he's blowing snot rockets over there i'm like Ooh. <laughs> like yeah they here. they are not buddies for like mm -hmm. the whole season she votes against him to force ties that don't make sense multiple times mm -hmm. yeah well i mean they're the same age and they grew up in, i think they're both from alabama so they well, had some commonality Bobby John james, and Abraham. yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. and james, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And James is from there, uh, Alabama Correct. also. Yeah. So, yeah, that is wild that you end up with uh, three guys from Alabama all on the, the same tribe. Well, uh, it's not, though, because that's what happens when you have a whole day to get to know each other and then you pick tribes. Yeah. Those three were probably like, oh, we're oh. buds because we're all from the same place. Did they that pick each other? That I feel like it was men picking uh, men. women. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was it was men picking women, but I still feel like you can go into that with like, you know, maybe Stephanie was kind of in that group with them or or whatever. But um, yeah, I feel like relationships that were formed there, definitely like even if they weren't directly picking people, I feel like you mm -hmm. can talk to people about who you're going to pick. Yeah, um, but not not that James and Abraham were buddies. Uh, no, they did not get along great either. <laughs> James uh, has some questionable comments about Eve. Sure. And we also uh, are going to see in this episode, uh, Karor, that, you know, before they become a great tribe, uh, they are also going to stumble uh, a bit. Should I tell they're going to lose uh, the flint in the, in the water. After they make a very curious decision of Jeff says, all right, you're the winning tribe. Do you want to go back to the beach you were just at or go to a new beach? And Tom speaks for the group and says, uh, yeah, we're going to go for the adventure. He says in the next episode that somebody said to him that this might have been him covering uh, for the big questionable decision. Uh, but he said that somebody else had said they wanted to do it and he just said it out loud. Yeah, no, he definitely was kind of backpedaling on that decision after it was kind of miserable for them. Um, he mentions that, you know, there was co more coconut, they were out of coconut, so they wanted to go to a new beach and maybe have, you know, they're on a, here on an adventure or whatnot. Um, I, I completely forgot, though, that they capsize and lose their flint. I, 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 that whole part, yeah. I remember 
gasping originally and I still gasped this time watching it be like oh my god you guys just won that challenge for this damn flint you're going to this new beach now and you don't even you can't even make fire and I, I always remember being shocked I'm like they, they have to find it eventually right like I don't remember them not having flint and so yeah I guess I, I learned later that they do go back and find it but yeah yeah Ian does still. it and and I actually think it's underreported maybe because he doesn't win a lot of individual immunities because Tom is there. I think Ian should be thought of in the same category as an Aussie in terms of like being Swim. equipped for uh, swimming and just uh, being equipped for camp life. I mean, Tom gets all the glory because he, he kills the shark and he wins the immunities, but Ian is one of the best like survivalists I think we've seen on the show up until this point. Um, I was really, really impressed with Ian kind of around camp and, and all of that. Mm hmm. And Got he's not even like clam. from, yeah, the giant clam. Um, and he's not even from like California or a place with water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, we are going to have a very special uh, talking with T Bird uh, presentation for you this weekend. That uh, I've been calling it the Palau trilogy, where last year we started off the long survivor off season. We did an interview with Tom Westman. We did an interview with Ian Rosenberger and we did an interview with Katie Gallagher. I call it the trilogy. Uh, T bird would be, if she was here, remind me, Oh, we talked to Steph also. So we'll have a little <laughs> bit from Stephanie, but what we've gone back and done is collected the best moments from those Palau interviews. And we're going to have a special presentation of the Palau talking with T bird box set coming <laughs> this weekend. So be on the lookout for that and don't drop your box set in the ocean. Cause Ian's not going to go back and get it, but we had some really uh, great conversations with three of the biggest characters from this season and uh, some really great uh, talking with T-Bird moments uh, that I want people to hear if you missed it. So you'll have to release like a poorly Photoshopped like T-Bird's face and then <laughs> all of the contestants <laughs> on the DVD cover. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, well, between me and T-Bird, uh, Tom, Katie, Ian, and Stephanie, I think we can get a <laughs> box set going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, by the second episode, yeah, things are not great for Karor that they realize that their new island is infested with rats. They're going to uh, call it affectionately Rat Island <laughs> and they don't have a flint. They can't make a fire and they get trounced in the reward challenge. Yeah. And it, it was like, I remember knowing, okay. So like, I'm like, so, okay, Steph's the stronger team and, and, and you know, that they're supposed to be like, they have all the muscle on that side, but I'm like, but like, but doesn't she lose all the time? I was still really confused trying to remember how everything went down. And then I'm like, they're on Red Island. They're all like freezing. And you know, they, they made a bad decision with choosing that to, to leave. Um, all of that. I was just still really confused trying to remember how everything shook out that like Karor was such a dominating tribe. Um, and this was no different. I just was like they just got slaughtered here i'm like how does this all turn around for the worst for you long they're not that great a tribe and Ulong's not that bad <laughs> this is what i want people to know about palau mm -hmm. it's not that great new not that bad yeah so yeah they do very well in that first reward challenge and angie is a, a real standout but let's not hype up oolong too much lita uh they still have <laughs> what do you mean uh, a, i think they're the greatest tribe of all time rob <laughs> they still have a uh, a kim and jeff problem uh which is what that kim is lame and doesn't do anything and jeff is a huge loser yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically i definitely didn't enjoy like I usually am into, like I, I love the Robin Amber of it all. And like, I, I'm usually <laughs> kind of into the love stories that happened on Survivor. Like that was actually a, a list that I wanted for for, um, for Mike being like, who are the best Survivor couples? Um, but these two, I just like, I didn't like either. Is this of the worst Survivor couple? <laughs> like, maybe they, that's they, these stronger. are like, they're the dollar store Greg and Jen who mm -hmm. are already kind of the dollar store Robin Amber. <laughs> So true. Um, but yeah, like I wanted to like this little story that could have been happening, but I was just was like, I'm not a fan of either of you separately. And so you guys coming together, I wasn't a fan of either. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jeff and Kim are not lightning in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And they really bring like nothing to the table at all. Either, either one of them. 
they, they both stink. I remember <laughs> Jeff being one of your least favorite contestants ever, Rob, on uh, Evolution uh, of Strategy. Yeah, you know, I was listening to it back. It was actually, I think Josh was really, Josh really <laughs> hated him. Uh, Josh really uh, had it out for oolong jeff but he does stink he ends up like uh injuring his foot on he like rolls his ankle on a coconut it's just like ah, i'm done i'm done everybody vote me out uh yeah i already know this is a three-week injury get me out of here oh and- yeah there's basically so three bad. quits on this season i forgot mm-hmm. that was yeah. that was the worst i think <laughs> there's I a so lot mad. of there's so many ties on this season and so many like quits or almost quits um, that I didn't necessarily remember. But yeah, he he will not wait one day to figure mm-hmm. it out. He, he's he's like, like, I already know. I already know. I know. It's, it's not going to get better. And they're like, we are literally begging you to stay. We will vote out Kib. And he's like, no, mm-hmm. I know. Did, did him and I, Kim like, even like date after the show? Like doesn't no, know so. they're they're very good friends. They're good friends. Learns this. Um, but <laughs> he also like um he's like more helpful around camp than her, but he also frames it as like I've always been a team player, as if like quitting is the team player thing, even though his whole team is asking him not to do it. He's like, I don't know, I guess I'm just too good a guy. Yeah, well, because he's the, maybe the strongest guy that they have. He ends up like beating Tom in a head-to-head challenge uh, where they're gonna fight over the inner tubes, and you see his potential. But uh, eventually, I mean, this is still, uh, I think, in, in the next episode of that, he just basically is like, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm out. I, I, this is not for me. Yeah, we might be jumping that- ahead, but two two things really made me laugh at the tribal council when Jeff gets voted out, which is that uh, when Kim is voting for him, she says, you've become one of my greatest friends on this island. One of? Yeah. Who is yeah. Kim's <laughs> better friend than Jeff on this <laughs> island? Um, and then also Jeff's final <laughs> words, he says, there's a huge part of me that wishes that I hadn't injured myself. I was like, mm-hmm. there's a part of you? <laughs> like, whole, and then he says something His like, ankle. it's what he's like, it's one of my biggest regrets. <laughs> it's, like, mm-hmm. it's the only thing that any that happened to you. Yeah. What do you think Oolong Jeff went on to do? I don't, they like Abercrombie and Fitch model, <laughs> like who stands outside the door with his like frosted tips. Jeff Wilson. Yeah. But they, uh, although like those Hollister stores are kind of like island themed, so that might be triggering for him if there were like coconuts involved. He's like, he's like, everybody calls me Coconut Boy and like holds for laughter at the finale. And like, everybody's like, nobody yeah. calls you that. Who sees Jeff Wilson on the street, even in 2005 when Survivor was more hey, popular coconut than it is now? Boy. Yeah. And it's like, it's that guy from the show. It's Coconut Guy. Like, nobody remembers what Jeff Wilson's face looks like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he he's a personal trainer, so he probably he probably has an app now. He's probably doing personal. Oh, training. maybe he's a Peloton instructor. <laughs> yeah, I, I can, no, I can see that. roll your ankle. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna find him on LinkedIn. Oh no, okay. Jeff Wilson is gonna be too common of a name. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Coconut Boy. <laughs> it's, it means clearly Coconut Man by now. I think he's gonna be 38. I would hope uh, so. Yeah, at this point in time. But anyway, so we're going to have another uh, person who is sort of like uh, doesn't really want to be there. Uh, and that is going to be uh, the second boot of our season, Ashley. <laughs> who? <laughs> One of the more nondescript survivors in the history of the show. I I am saying I'm starting the campaign to get her to number one most forgettable survivor of all time. Yeah, I think best known for uh, she had a thing for Ibrahim. She did. And that she well, she mentioned in her final words, right? That she was like, "Oh, I wish I would have like uh, spent more time uh, snuggling with Ibrahim." Oh, you and me both, girl. Mm-hmm. She gets it. There's so much romance yeah. on this season because everybody's hot. Like I said. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Your, your, your point's being proven here a little bit. <laughs> um, I I was looking around for my notes. I'm like, who's the second boot? Who's the second boot? I don't remember. <laughs> so this yeah. is definitely going to your point, Lita, that she wasn't memorable. Um, and that's the one thing that was like, I wanted them to have to fight. Like we're seeing with Steph, like she had the fight that she wanted to be there. Even Bobby John, like he wanted, like, people want to be there. And they beat up so many thousands of people that wanted to be there. I just wish that they just didn't give up so easily or just allow their game to just disappear, you know? 
Yeah, Lita, do you think that that helps the mythos of Stephanie in a season when there were so many people, whether it's your Ashleys, your your Jeffs, your Janus, people who just didn't want to be there, uh, that, that Stephanie just wanted to fight tooth and nail to stay? Yeah, I think it's definitely juxtaposition helps um, when a lot of people are taking this experience for granted or not interested in being there anymore. Or in the case of like Ian and Janu kind of found what they were looking for and it wasn't necessarily winning. Um, now, when we see Survivor as a lot more cutthroat and a lot more fast paced and less based on friendships and more based on, you know, fighting and clawing your way to the end, I think having Steph be there to be like, I am here to win um, as opposed to, I mean, this was obviously played up by Tom, but him being like, I'm here to win and be a good person. Like, you know, not that Stephanie wasn't, she never had to really lie out there. I mean, she did a little bit on Oolong, but like um, she she got to come out looking great because she didn't really have to to deceive anybody, but you kind of have the knowledge that she would have done whatever it takes. Um, whereas so many people on this season are there for something other than the million dollars. Okay. Uh, by the third episode, uh, we're going to see, uh, again, more of Jeff and Ashley and, um, <laughs> Jeff and Kim, Kim, sorry, Jeff Kim, and Kim, Kim. whatever, whatever. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know. yeah. Girls are like the, uh, are like the Lamina guys. They're like Nick and Austin on Panama where it's just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're just interchangeable. Yeah. Long women are not, are not a great representation other than, uh, Angie and Stephanie. Yeah, so uh, Oolong wins another reward challenge, and uh, they win the sewing kit. Uh, Chantel, uh, <laughs> what did you make of the fashion stylings of Oolong? I, I mean, okay, I understand what Survivor was trying to do, like have everybody in like torn clothes and like, you know, just look, looking like they were shipwrecked somewhere. I get that. And I get that they can also use these sewing kits to, you know, make curtains or whatnot. But I just thought that it was just so curtains. such a useless thing. Like, who cares about the damn sewing kit? Like, is, is this worth playing for? No, no, it's not worth playing for. Can I conserve my energy, please? Because we're going to lose the next immunity. Ulan looks like they're in a so cult. <laughs> they make these, like, genderless yeah. <laughs> clothes. Tunics. Yeah. <laughs> I love when Karar is doing the, the puppet show and they're like, my name's Bobby John. I look like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's dressed in like a robe. Yeah, the fashion isn't great. But I do wish we had a fashion show. Like if they did, like you played it up that way, maybe I could get behind the stylings here a little bit more. But uh, Oolong doesn't I seem that fun. I don't think Oolong <laughs> was having a lot of fun out there. Definitely no. not. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's probably uh, a contribution of Katie that she, uh, you know, kept things pretty light over there, uh, over at Karor. There's also a lot of like survivalism uh, going on in the Karor storylines that we see, uh, especially uh, then it starts in this episode where we uh, battle the sea snakes, uh, Lita, that we see a lot of snakes getting their heads chopped off. I know. I don't i don't like how much animal murder there is in this uh in this season it's not the most necessary they're really gonna eat the snakes they end up using them as bait but like how many people even wanted to eat the snakes um i don't know did you eat any snakes in the amazon no rat no did you eat the rat? <laughs> don't remember i don't think we, other than fish we didn't kill any land animals yeah well jolanda did your favorite thing where she eats a bug on the first day like two sure. hours yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i need the protein i'm here, um, <laughs> I'm here. yeah i don't you're know. just showing he, off if you eat a bug the first I, day. I happen to know worked at the at the pittsburgh zoo and uh i am anti-zoo and this is this is kind of proving my point he's like oh i work with animals i love animals i'm like do you work with them or do you do you torture Kill them, them? Yeah. <laughs> in fairness there was no animal torture going on uh, they were only eating killing them to eat i know but no that's what i'm saying is that like ian i think is is a very underrated uh a survivalist i think he mm. is a very nice guy but he's willing to get dirty and kill the animals and is an amazing swimmer and and all of these things i think he's uh really really good yeah. yeah, I think he was surprising himself and learning new things. And I do think he looked up to Tom and Tom was kind of like being like the, you know, father figure type, showing him the ropes. And even when they had a little bit of the, the, you know, the 
argument with uh, Kobe because Kobe wanted to be part of like the guys doing things and you know Tom plucks Ian out to go to fishing with them on their reward and but it's I think it's because Ian is just so eager and then he's good when he ends up learning how to fish and learning how to cast for bait and all that stuff um I think yeah I think it was just like a natural um I don't think that he's done any of these things before I think that he just ended up being quite good at them uh, naturally Tom is uh, kind of the uh, the proto Nadia Anderson in that in that moment. He to Kobe, he's like, uh, "You're basically a girl. Go do the bait thing." <laughs> brutal. <laughs> <laughs> At least um, that's how Kobe saw it. Yeah. Um, no, that's going to come later at the merge. Um, we're going to get, uh, in the third episode, uh, an iconic immunity challenge. And we've talked about the great challenges in this season. We're going to do the challenge, uh, where I don't know what they call it, where, uh, everybody runs around in a lap, uh, and try and do, uh, catch the other tribe. And Tom is going to be the person who is, uh, really motivating, uh, Karor. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff has uh, J Jeff Wilson has the injured ankle. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he would have been able to really uh, help out the team today. But uh, unfortunately, it was uh, all for naught for Oolong. Uh, I've been calling no it effort. snake chase with weight. That's what I wrote down that this challenge is called. So yeah, chop its head <laughs> off. I think <laughs> exactly. it's, it's called like carry the weight or something. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. There's a name for it. I know I'm sure the wiki about. has it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I actually really like this challenge, and I was I was disappointed. Oh, that, hot pursuit! Um, hot pursuit! Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hot pursuit. Um, <laughs> I I I wanted them to do well. Like obviously, like I'm I'm rooting for Oolong this whole time because you can't really it's 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 hard to stomach someone like losing so much, especially because they want to win so badly. Um, and I was like just like Jeff, like like it didn't hurt that bad. Like how badly did you really roll this ankle? Like I, I just so I want a coconut. Like it couldn't have been that bad. And so I just was like I was just rolling my eyes and I'm like oh they probably could have done really well if Jeff was able to play here and he was too much of a a wimp to be able to just suffer through it and help them with this. Win. I feel like they definitely would have won if Jeff was in it. I it's mean, like Jeff wearing the weight for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Je Jeff Probst sounds incredulous when he's like, that was the difference. That was why you lost. It's like, yeah, having an extra strong guy was a hundred percent the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like instead of Bobby John playing and carrying like 80 pounds, like he would have been carrying like 40 and they both have been like yeah. able to handle it <laughs> for a lot longer. Lita, did you find Jeff to be a little extra salty this season? <laughs> Probst? Yeah. Um, I actually thought that this was a really good season for Jeff. I, maybe yeah. it was just because I haven't watched an old season in a long time, and maybe he's kind of like changed it up. But I, I thought this was a good Jeff season. You didn't, you didn't like Jeff. He seemed to be pretty mad at Oolong every time they yeah, lost. Yeah, he. That's what I'm saying. He, he seemed, he seemed kind of mad. I, I, I know that. Uh, you know, Josh was saying that he uh, was overall down on Jeff Probst in uh, TEOS, uh, but uh, I, I did find him to be like. Uh, a little bit of jerky Jeff a couple times uh, all all throughout the season with just like really just very upset with Oolong for not winning any challenges. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I did. I did notice that. It, it didn't bother me. Jeff is always going to get to kind of needle at, at these things. Um, but mm. yeah, there, there are definitely times where like he is intentionally you know, sort of like, so that's it. Like, that's the problem. That's the excuse you're making. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. like, I don't know what to tell you, Jeff. We want to win just as badly as you want us to. <laughs> yeah. Because, Chantel, sometimes Jeff at Tribal Council will be like, all right, let's figure out what's going on here with you guys. Uh, like, what's what are the issues around camp? And there's other times it's like, he's just like mad at them for losing. Uh, and I'm like, I don't really understand. Like, he's got to vote somebody out no matter what. Like, uh, what does he care which team loses? <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, okay, I'm, I'm thinking this out right now. I don't know if it's going to be a cohesive thought, but maybe he was, maybe he wanted things to go differently because he's part of the producing side. Like he, he has invested interest in how the series goes along. And so maybe he wasn't for them not merging right away, like, or at, the, at an appropriate time. Like maybe he was not be, like uh, against that idea. And like, he wanted them to win so that he would like be right um, or something like that, if that makes any sense but mm -hmm. i think that he had invested interest in them winning and they were proving him wrong in some sort of way in production side i guess i must have subconsciously 
noticed what you're talking about. I hadn't thought about it, but now that you're saying it, there was one point when he had lost his voice where he yeah. starts the tribal council by being like, uh, I just want to start by apologizing for my voice. And I remember thinking, I thought he was going to say like, I want to start by apologizing for my behavior the other night. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little too hard on you because especially his parting words to Oolong are always like, you guys better figure it out. <laughs> and even, <laughs> even Steph one time is like, Jeff was really hard on us in yeah. those final words. We oh, made well, dad mad. Yeah. How about uh, speaking of uh, Jeff's words, um, when uh, Jeff Wilson and the uh, Kim are like, can you believe Jeff brought up our relationship at Tribal <laughs> Council? Where does this guy get off asking us about our relationship? It's none of his business. <laughs> they were so pissed. I mean, I, that's the one thing that I liked about them being pissed about something that like, well, of course he's going to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Like, why are you so angry? Like, do you think got outed here? Like, everybody knows that you guys are cuddling up next to each other and that you guys are kind of in an alliance relationship or whatever. So the fact that Jeff, who always, you know that Jeff is just going to ask questions that are probably going to ruin your game. <laughs> like, it's just part of his shtick. And so the fact that they're being so upset by it, I was just like, it was the only interesting thing that they really brought to the table. It's not like Jeff had a bunch of other compelling oolong stories to, <laughs> to unravel. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the fourth episode, uh, the tribes are going to work on building bathrooms uh, for a reward. Do you like the bathroom building challenge? No, this is what the the sponsored by Home Depot one. Yes, is that, is yes. This one? I mean, the, Home it was back. sponsor heavy this season. I don't remember all seasons being that many like sponsor moments. Who else um, did they have this season? They had like it's two different cars. I guess it's like P and G. I guess. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, the shower stuff, sure. Um, the yeah Chevrolet for the cars. Two, two cars. They had the yeah the Corvette and the the other one, the yellow one. Mm -hmm. Um, Pringles. Oh yeah, the um, Pringles. Pringles. Yeah, yeah. With like the having the, I think I even bought those like with the trivia. On oh, the Pringles. I love the the Survivor trivia Pringles. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just remember noticing there's so many plot product placement. I felt like I was watching Big Brother Canada, <laughs> like with all. I the, feel yeah. like th this m there must have been a a dip in. Uh, sponsorship revenue or something because we go from a shit it's from a corvette to a pontiac aztec i think is in the next <laughs> season so I, I don't know if their budget went uh, down. so it was a pontiac torrent next season uh, that's, oh, that Cindy so sorry famously is going to walk away with yes <laughs> Um, so I do have two cans of Survivor Pringles uh, in my possession still from the unopened. And Did they go stale? Wow. I, they're, they're unopened. I, I don't. I don't know. You gotta open uh, them on Twitch sometime. Well, do, uh, do you think? Do, do you think that anybody wants them? Should I? Should should they go up on eBay? Auction those off. Yeah, I think yeah. you would want them. Yeah. Just sign it. Sign it. Okay. Well, here's what we're here's what I'll do because I did this during Survivor All Stars and we raised uh six hundred dollars for Rain. I, I will put my two cans of unopened Survivor <laughs> Pringles on eBay and let's donate the proceeds to uh, the American Cancer Society uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in memory of Jen Lyon and Angie. And uh, I, 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 I don't know if anybody if anybody is going to be on them, but let's let's see what happens with the Survivor Pringles. I love it. That's I love that. Yeah, whoever buys them, uh, host a trivia night. I bet they're very easy <laughs> questions based on what was uh, coming on. Yeah. We're not we're not bad Pringles uh, yet. We're not. It's, it's like the the question. I I do remember them, but the questions were like Rob Mariano is famously from a Boston, B San Diego. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, Stephanie really knew her trivia though on that phone. I don't I don't think Bobby John was a super fan. <laughs> you don't no. think so? <laughs> something, <laughs> something tells me Bobby John hadn't studied the tapes before yeah. he came out. Yeah, uh, both tribes go to work on uh, the bathroom. We get the famous uh, James Miller. Uh, my <laughs> my stuff. stuff. Yeah, uh, but the, the tribes need to like pick a leader, and uh, we see that Oolong uh, can't get it together, and Jeff is like uh, incredulous about that leader. That like uh, like wait, well, you mean you guys haven't picked out who the leader is yet for this challenge? <laughs> okay, but. Oolong did the right thing because they get to see the Home Depot logo before they pick yeah. a leader. Yeah. So uh, who's the idiot now, Jeff Probst? 
Yeah. But like, I would have probably been fighting if I was on Oolong. I'd probably be like, "Hey, maybe I won't have to come back here." So yeah, like, maybe we'll split. I'll go. Like, it, so I probably would have been more excited to go. I don't know if I'd know the right tools in the end to pick, um, but I'm sure like hammer and saw would have been up, like you know, my thought process. So yeah, uh, you know. Should tell you the bath or the bathrooms were pretty close in the competition. Do you think that Oolong lost it by writing uh, for a good time called Jeff Probst on the toilet no, I seat? That, I, I thought that they were going to win because of that because it was actually kind of funny. Um, I felt though that Karora's Kar bathroom, like it just looked nice. Like it didn't look as makeshift, I'd say, as as Oolongs. And I wanted them to win because I'm just like they just need some wins. Like they just need some motivation here, but. I, I felt that Karor's was a little bit more of a, a well planned out. It looked nicer. It was functioning um, a little bit better. So I thought that Ulong was going to lose, but Oolong's not because of that. area was nicer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it seems <laughs> like they really lost it on when Jesse, the production designer, shakes the post. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it, it seems like that that was the like, deal breaker. Oh, oh, that's not sturdy. There are mm -hmm. actually more than any other season. I think we get named cameos from other people we have like joe the the fisher guy we have jesse yeah. the the hardware production man. designer yeah um yeah was it Bob and then in the, was it Bob? yeah we have the the rescue guy go over in mm -hmm. the helicopter we have a, a lot <laughs> of uh, drop master drop master yeah um yeah we have a, a lot of kind of bonus people it's not just cochran on a boat Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ultimately, uh, for winning the prize, uh, for winning the reward, now the Survivor production team comes in and they build the greatest shelter that Survivor has ever seen until, I guess, Survivor Fiji, maybe. And this is probably better than that, because I think that in Survivor Fiji, I think they had to build it themselves. So hey, what about is... Rupert's underground shelter? That's true. That's true. <laughs> that has technically already happened at this point. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is so unfair, Chantel. Like, this is it. Like, it was like, uh, this might have been the point where they said, all right, we're going all in for uh, for, uh, for yeah. Karor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Let's yeah, see. I was just was like, it was too amazing what they were building, like full shelter, like up above the ground, a picnic table. Like they, they built them everything that they needed to feel comfortable and not to feel like they were on Survivor or on an island. Like it was kind of like a, just like a rugged summer camp that they were experiencing. And I, it was probably because they wanted to see like, oh, look how the laps of luxury that Karora is living on. And then look at like, oh my God, poor Oolong. I think it was just to, to make it really, but really- have a sewing kit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's true. That's true. And, and like one can of Pringles each. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. They're probably just like, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So like, it's not even, the rewards don't even escalate. Oolong wins the reward challenge after this. It's probably like, oh, they got a shelter. We're going to get a freaking, like, we're going to get our families to come in here yeah. and they're going to bring us pizzas and it's going to be great. Lita. And they're like, here's a can of Pringles and a Mai Tai. Bobby John <laughs> said that day with the jellyfish was uh, the, one of the greatest <laughs> moments of yeah. his life. It brought him peace. And when he you know goes what? back to his mental Rolodex, that's yeah. the, <laughs> at, the, at the top. And, and I'm sure it's a deep, deep Rolodex. <laughs> I, I think Bobby John probably has so many things going on in his brain. Uh, yeah. I would love to see what's going on in that head. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, okay, whatever. That was like when he experienced peace, but I experienced peace when I sleep not with rats or in a cave. So that's true. <laughs> right. That's and like, true. I know it was later on the season, but like, you know, having like the yacht where they get to go and shower and get their loved ones. And like, there was a lot of like, you know, the, even the 50 gallons of water as a reward, like all these awards are like so good and rejuvenating, making people feel like, you know, they're not bottom of the barrel anymore. Um, they just never got to experience any really rejuvenating rewards for the few that they won so <laughs> they really didn't luck out there so overall i guess this episode was a tough look for uh james miller after <laughs> uh he loses the home depot <laughs> challenge and then ultimately <laughs> chantel he is going to be at the center of things uh when we have our sumo at sea challenge and he ends up losing to kobe in the uh, climactic battle now in fairness to james 
Kobe's got to have probably what, like 50 pounds on him. And then also probably a couple inches taller than him. Like this is like on paper or kind of a mismatch. Wait, which is the challenge? The one where they have, they're holding the thing. Yeah. With like yeah. the pillow fight. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Kobe, but he's probably, he looks like he's quite tall. He definitely has a little bit of him. Yeah. Um, and I was really, I was like really rooting for Kobe. I was like, Kobe, just push him in there. Like, get him in. Like, I just wanted James just to, just to lose really badly. Um, I wasn't I mean, a fan. If yeah. lo James losing to Kobe is not nearly as embarrassing as Kim losing to Janu. Mm -hmm. in a round. <laughs> I mean, Janu is like basically dead and also weighs like yeah, 90 pounds. I don't pounds. think she's dead yet. Janu <laughs> was dead from the She beginning. climbed up a tree the first day. The first day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Janu because I was I I forgot that she kind of spiraled downwards and just didn't want to be there anymore. I didn't really I remember love that. Janu, I just want to <laughs> put this out there: there will be no Janu slander on this. Podcast. Oh no, I'm mm. into her. Like I was, I was definitely a fan even in the beginning. I thought that she was really helpful for the tribe, um, and I was really positive on her being part of it. I definitely forgot that she kind of just you know she just didn't want to be there anymore, and she wasn't able. I think she got sick, and then being sick and not being able to have any comforts like it's hard to bounce out of it so i really wish that she didn't have that experience because i was definitely rooting for her to to do a lot better than she ended up doing not having any comforts other than a beautiful shelter and a shower <laughs> and, and, and so mean. much fish that you get sick and yeah. so many rewards <laughs> that you throw really up so yeah food. yeah um lita i'm more indifferent on janu uh what's the case for janu uh, I just think she's really, really compelling. I think that night on Exile Island is really amazing. Um, love her uh, quitting so that Steph can stay, even though she's mm -hmm. not allowed to frame it like that. Um, but I, I just think that she is a really interesting character. I think uh, rock climbing Vegas showgirl is uh, an interesting <laughs> backstory to, to go on Survivor. And um, I like that she is confrontational when she needs to be. When Katie's making fun of her, she stands up for herself, even though she's like, you know, dead. Um, and she is athletic when she needs to be like, she's, you know, she rock climbs and helps the tribe. But um, I just, I find her really compelling. I'm just very interested in, uh, in whatever Janu is up to. Yeah. And I think this she will would have shined. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I think that she could have, would have shined if she was on a different tribe or with different people. I don't think that she really got along with the people she was, she was on Karor with. Um, I do feel it was a very kind of sexist tribe where it's like the men do the fishing and the women do the, you know, stay at home and tend the fire and, you know, whatever, clothes and food, cooking. Um, and so I think that she didn't really fit the role of that, the, of this kind of submissive woman. And, and she didn't really want to be arguing, arguing with these men all the time. And I think that she just probably felt defeated that she couldn't really be herself and the dynamic of the tribe wasn't really you know suit to her her strengths and i think that that's probably why she was able to get beat down so easily is that she you know she's with these men that weren't really respecting her they didn't really respect any of the women in a way that i would probably want to be respected yeah she also uh is like openly mocked by the tribe Maybe, yeah. at a few points, especially like when she's gonna go to Exile Island, which is coming up later, where uh <laughs> and, 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 and like Katie is the ringleader, but she's not the only person that's just like yeah. <laughs> Jeff is like, Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> she's Jeff going to like, Exile hey, Island. That's my yeah. friend Janu. Don't <laughs> yeah. stop it. <laughs> Jeff has to stick up for her. Uh, but yeah, so ultimately, uh, this is where Kim is going to, uh, and en end up, uh, going out of the game. So sad, sad to see, uh, Kim Mullen, uh, go out so early. Yeah, that's, this is the, the tribal council where Jeff says, let's get to the bottom with what's wrong with this tribe. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know. We didn't get any food. We're getting really bad rewards. Like, I don't know what's wrong with the... I, I found know. Kim's I Instagram recently after she was photo. Out. She's not uh, married to Jeff Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that sad? She's not Kim Wilson now. No, she's she's still Kim Mullen, I think. Uh, but she she's got some kids. Um, mm -hmm. She's like followed by uh, a lot of people that I follow. So Ooh. she must still be in the in the community. Parvati, Steven, Andrea, they all follow her. Okay. Wow. Um, Where's her second chance? Casting. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So 
after we get to uh, see uh, Kim go home, uh, we're going to have our episode where we're going to have our double tribal council, uh, where both tribes are going to tribal council. And this is the only time we're going to see a pre-merge tribal council for Karor. Uh, we get a little bit about the dynamics of uh, what's going on, where... Uh, uh, Kobe is sort of like uh, leading the insurrection against the uh, Tom group. Uh, and Willard is uh, a part of that group. Uh, but Chantel, uh, Willard is a little bit over being on Survivor. Yeah, I think that he he did what he kind of came here to do. He, he kind of could see the writing was on the wall. They never really had to go to any tribal councils beforehand. He wasn't really going to be strategic. He wasn't being strategic. So like, I think that he was just like, I wasn't even going to fight. He wasn't going to even bother fighting for it. Um, I do wish, though, that like the people that were kind of the on the outside of like the major alliance were just like, hey, like maybe we shouldn't just pick off Willard, you know? Like They had maybe- the numbers to, <clears throat> to take somebody out, to take one of the power players out, but I guess it's too early for them to know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. they, did, they probably didn't want to like l- lose any challenges. Like they're they've been winning, so they didn't want to get rid of like the winning their winning combination. And so, I was I wanted him to stay because obviously I just didn't want it just to completely be a blowout. But uh, it wasn't going to happen. And the the title of this episode is the best and the worst reward ever. And so I was couldn't remember what I'm like what happened here. And then I was like, oh, someone's going to be getting some. Was it stew, bread, and root beer? Root beer, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, which they come up the with some wacky combos the for these. Uh, like when I don't, one tribe I don't eats. eat meat or drink pop. Is this a thing that people have together? <laughs> I don't think so. Beef stew yeah. and root beer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I wondered, know which one was worse. <laughs> I wondered at first if that was because, like, maybe somebody, like, I, before I Googled Ian's age, I was like, maybe Ian is 20 or something. Uh, but there is so much alcohol in this season. Mm-hmm. It's true. So it's alcohol. definitely not that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I including also, sake bottles in the challenge. Yeah. Um, I love this because Jeff. Uh, when they win, when Karor wins, is like, Karor is going to have the opportunity to sit in and potentially get some very valuable information down the line. (laughs) Zero impact. (laughs) No (laughs) actionable information to be had. Literally, like, they are never going to see these people except for Steph again. Yeah. Um, And none of them care for Stu anyways. They're just like, you know, they thought it was going to be dramatic. Um, Kobe was like, oh, let's not be too, like, excited about the reward while we're watching the Tribal Council. And, like, people are just probably like, we're good things. We'd rather start. You can keep the root beer. (laughs) I don't like root beer. (laughs) Stu is not really my thing. And then they fucking make fun of Angie for crying over Stu. They're so mean. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't, um, don't cry don't cry over stew and root beer angie so in this challenge uh ibrahim is gonna have a hard time and uh james is I- incensed yeah as because james famously has never messed up a challenge mm-hmm. feels like he never Ib- made a mistake ibrahim has no heart and uh feels like that he should be the person who has to go which, yeah which i'm sure the i'm sure this this is the one where they dive down for the bottles, and but Ibrahim had to run dive. across like the. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. And and Eve couldn't dive down. Um, sure, sure. There's nothing else at work in James's dislike of Ibrahim. I'm sure there's mm-hmm. no racial or religious undertones whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Ibrahim's a very interesting uh, character, and uh, to my recollection, I feel like that he is uh, the first uh, Muslim that we see at least practicing on the show. And I thought that that would have been an interesting storyline to explore more. And I feel like that Ibrahim ends up being one of the most underserved characters in this entire season. Yeah, I, I didn't even remember that he was a part of it. And then I was like, I, you know, from his name, I, I was assumed that he was going to be religious to a certain extent. And then just to actually seeing him doing some of his prayers, because I believe that they pray five times a day, the people that have the, his religion. I'm assuming he's Muslim. Yeah, um, yeah he and- has the, the Muslim uh, tattoo also. 
and so yeah, I mean, I I just I didn't even remember that that was some some clips that they were were showing. So I thought that that was pretty pretty well, forward of CBS at that time. In, in, well, in fairness, like uh, they haven't even shown that. That happens in the next episode, I think, where uh, we see that. So I mean, here we are, five episodes in, and we haven't even uh, mentioned that as uh, part of uh, Ibrahim's story. Yeah, when- but and for for Ibrahim, he probably was underserved partly because. As the only other black person on the season, when he sees Jolanda go home first because she's Mm -hmm. outspoken, uh, that I'm sure made him want to just shut down um, Mm -hmm. and have it not be him next. So I'm sure that he was very quiet for a good reason. So there probably wasn't very much content for, for them to show of him. Yeah. Just um, like out of practicing Muslim representation on CBS, was season six of Big Brother before or after this one? Okay. Oh, this is like a Big Brother actual uh, question. So I think that season six of Big Brother was about to happen, if I had to say. I think that season five had aired in uh, the summer before this, and then Palau aired in the spring. And then I think that season six is going to air uh, in the summer of 2005. You are correct. I thought it was the year before, but you are correct. Okay. Yeah, so this is right before. Uh, you paved the way for Kaser. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, literally one right after the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have a double tribal council. And in the double tribal council, uh, we're going to get the twist. Uh, and I guess this is the first time that this is going to happen where... Uh, that uh, Karora is going to vote out Willard. And then after that, we're going to have Karor uh, uh, watch the tribal council and then they vote on who to give immunity to. And I think this is an interesting uh, decision where uh, Ibrahim, it, it's kind of a split vote uh, where the votes are all over the place because they didn't talk beforehand, but Ibrahim ends up getting immunity. Do you think that that was that they were able to suss out that, oh, he's probably going to go. So he ended up getting three votes. I mean, they didn't need much information to know that he was probably on the chopping block because they were at the challenge. Um, so I bet <laughs> I bet they wanted to just to just throw them off. But I didn't remember uh, Angie getting twist screwed here. Yeah, mm. this is totally yeah. not Angie's time to go. Mm-hmm. It yeah, definitely wasn't. They were probably maybe they were hoping that they would have taken out Bobby John, you know, because that would have been the, the, the stronger person. Because uh, usually when you go for the obvious person that's going to be voted out, it's because you're hoping that they will use that opportunity to get out a strong player. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, yeah, Angie definitely got twist screwed because she wasn't supposed to go and maybe they would have won after and maybe things would have gone differently. Maybe mm-hmm. Love Jen voting for Steph. Love everything Jen does on this season. <laughs> yeah, you. there's a, a, yes, a Jen Stephanie uh, rivalry. It's it's a cute rivalry, mm-hmm. uh, especially because it's like incredibly one sided. It's one sided rivalry. Yeah, <laughs> but, although but Jen, Jen does come out on top in the season. Yeah, but so. I think that Jen could have done a lot better if she had allowed herself to not want to get Stephanie out. I know that Stephanie's like her story's amazing. You know, she if she gets to the end, everybody's gonna want to give her the win. I get that, but you know, taking some control of the game would have been Jen's best opportunity in that moment. She would still have the numbers to be able to get Stephanie out whenever she wanted, but at least she would have a little bit more control with how the vote was going. So I wish that she didn't have that little rivalry with you know, with Steph because like, they were competing against each other often and Steph was beating her. Um, I wish that she was like, no, but she's a number that I can use right now to maybe get me to the end. So... I do like Jen more than I did the first time, but I wish that she used her position a little bit better. Yeah, I think she's also probably underserved by the edit also that she doesn't get a lot of screen time. She's just part of like the accessory to her and Greg. And then after Greg is gone, then she sort of like really emerges like uh, in the last two episodes before she goes home at the final four and the final five. But uh, ultimately, we don't see a ton of her during the season. Yeah, which is a shame. She is a delight. (laughs) Uh, and she was a wonderful person outside of Survivor also uh, that I, I got to know her a little bit uh, outside of the show. And she was just uh, such a, a sweet person. Um, and uh, she was just like a, a, a wonderful person to be around. So uh, I, it always makes me, uh, you know, uh, super sad to go back to uh, seeing her. But this is her 
um, you know, really just having, you know, a great experience on Survivor. And the whole cast came away uh, as just, uh, they they all loved her, everybody uh, who got to play with her. And she was, uh, you know, super tight with so many people from the cast as well. Yeah, like I said, there there is a legitimate path for Jen to win this season uh, in a way that there is not for a lot of Karar. <laughs> Um, and yeah, you can tell that, that she's really likable. And I think she's an underrated player. I think that people kind of remember her being really nice, but not necessarily being a great player because she's kind of in, in a thing with Greg, but I think she's a better player than Greg is. So we're going to see now Karor, or Oolong, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, Oolong is down to only four people. And it's awkward because uh, that uh, James very much wanted Ibrahim to go home. Uh, Ibrahim probably uh, would have been voted out, uh, but yet uh, he's still here. Uh, James is not happy. So this is definitely like an awkward situation over at Oolong. I do have to mention that I did also cry when Angie was voted out here. Aww, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, yeah. you know, you know the, the touching moments of the season, I definitely noted that I was really rooting for her for Angie. I forgot about her arc. And, you know, I was really upset with Kobe in the beginning for not picking his girl. Like, they were supposed to be, like, the kind of oddballs together. And, like, I forgot that that had happened. And then she ends up on this chart that's not winning. And I was like, but then she was, like, proving to be such an amazing competitor. It wasn't her time to go. And I know that she really wanted to be there. So I did, I just had to mention that I shed a tear for her. I think, yeah. Certainly, it certainly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and as we're talking about Jen Lyon, I, I, I don't want to uh, go without also just uh, again mentioning, uh, you know, how sad it is that we lose Angie. And she is so great in this uh, season and she's such a memorable character as well. Yes, definitely a standout star. Mm -hmm. We so, are not going back to immunity. We'll live forever. Mm -hmm. We'll live on forever as... <laughs> the catchphrase of Oolong. We are not going back to immunity. I'm like, the incredible council. <laughs> uh, time for jellyfish and Pringles. <laughs> Woo! The ultimate what, what reward. What a combo. When the I classic think, combo. When I think what it's it's like beef stew and root beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> jellyfish and Pringles. When I think what will nurture my body out on Survivor, I want to do more exercise by snorkeling and uh, eat junk food <laughs> that will well, not fill me up. Alcohol. Like, and drink alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. It's not really just, great for the body. Just, just destroy my body. <laughs> yeah. Would either of you want to go swim with the jellyfish? I'm terrified of jellyfish. No, I would not really want to do this. I, I know it's great for the mental Rolodex, but um, yeah, I'd pass. I mean, no, I, I, mean, I went snorkeling one time. I know these jellyfish can't sting, but I went snorkeling one time. I did not enjoy it. And I saw a jellyfish and got so scared that I had to go back to the boat. There, I, For some reason, jellyfish and spiders are, I can't, I can't mm -hmm. even look at them. I mean, I guess I'd be okay with it, but I would feel a little bit ripped off. I'd be like, what, this is what we get? Come on, guys. Can, can we, we get some, can we this in? <laughs> yeah, can yeah. we have a shelter? Can we, can we have a better shelter, please? Mm -hmm. I don't want to swim with a jellyfish. Can I do that on my own time? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to have the immunity challenge uh, in this episode after a very bad storm. Uh, this is when Janu is starting to uh, really feel like uh, she doesn't want to be there. Tom uh, tries to give her a pep talk. I'm not sure if it worked, Lita. So condescending. Tom is very condescending a, a oh. lot of the season. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I Tom's little little pep talk to Janu. It's like, what does Tom care if Janu stays or not? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I guess he just was there for like, uh, you know, uh, trying to give a pep talk to the team. He's bringing big dad energy to uh, Karor. Yeah. And I wonder when Kobe and Janu became close enough that Kobe would name his daughter after her because Kobe yeah. is not very nice about Janu's uh, yeah. kind of meltdown here. Maybe on the jury. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I think they're, the fir they're the first two uh, people at Ponderosa. So maybe they become like uh, very close. And again, we're going to see like the things that are like uh, the most like acidic in the episode. Like there might've been yeah. like 99% of the time where he just totally loves her company. And then the 1% of the time that he was talking crap about her, that's what they show in the episode. Yeah. That's funny. Actually. I've never thought about like at Ponderosa, it's all Karor and Steph, but on the pre-jury trip, it's all Oolong and Willard. <laughs> I wonder what they talked about. Yeah. You think they had some good stories? I thought Willard and Wanda had a great time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be great. 
Um, so this is a, an interesting challenge. Uh, Chantel, we don't really get too many other challenges. Like I think they run something like this in Micronesia also, which I guess also happened to be in Palau of the, uh, you know, here is your box and then try to tie it up with as much uh, knots and junk as you can. Okay, I like these type of challenges. Um, I do too. The actual challenge, they do things like this where there's like a big kind of monkey bar type thing and then you have to like wrap your rope around and then you go and you switch with your opponent and you try to unravel it as quickly as possible. So I've definitely seen this type of challenge many times and I really like it. I just wish that they didn't put all their faith in James here. Like it, it seems like they were like, okay, we'll let you have the reins here. And um, I feel like it's it seemed like it was against Steph's better judgment to let him take control here, but I well, wish he, he just so stepped well. In. with the bathroom <laughs> i mean right he so even yeah tie his own skirt <laughs> <laughs> definitely took a lot of heat from jeff about that skirt <laughs> jeff was um, pissed. so angry i mean i was pissed too i think i even wrote it down like why are you fixing your skirt come on <laughs> you can't figure out how to knot your skirt you probably don't know a, a complicated navel knot yeah. well, maybe maybe it was a safety pin and you're <laughs> not familiar with using a from their pin. sewing kit yeah. from their sewing kit exactly that was a first guess from jeff probst where uh when james was working on adjusting his skirt then he was <laughs> james is not even working on the knot he's <laughs> too busy adjusting his skirt and this was one of the tribal councils he was livid yeah, he was like, you spent three, four, five minutes adjusting your skirt. Mm -hmm. James was so confident in his unbreakable knot. Yeah, but, but they it, get through it didn't instantly. Look unbreakable though, because it like I was looking at the knot and it just it looked like I was like, oh, they could just be able to slip it off. Like I feel like it was like maybe a whole bunch of knot on top, but like they're like, oh, but it's still really loose here. So let's just no, he that said off. the harder you pull it, the tighter it gets. <laughs> Dude, it's a special. They knot. didn't have any trouble at all mm -hmm. no. and it was i feel like it was one of the one of the challenges where it was more women than men like who was it, it was janu um katie and ian wasn't it that was on their tribe yeah i think so mm -hmm. and then they had you know two guys and or i guess three guys and staff so, yeah but jeff I, jeff was mad because ibrahim was in the water doing god knows what <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, can't swim that well, I guess. I don't know. Leave him yeah. alone. Whatever. He's doing the best that he can. He's doing, he's doing more than James. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, I thought that they really could have won this one. It's something that it, it's possible. Like just make as many knots as you can, and like even a big ball would work generally. But like they just didn't. They just didn't do it well. And I was like, how can you lose this one as well? Like why? Why? I don't know. Uh, we have a four-person tribal council coming up, and this is one of those votes that you were talking about, Lita, where Stephanie is going to force a tie. Her, she and her buddy James, uh, they put two votes on Ibrahim. Ibrahim and Bobby John, they put two votes on James, uh, and we get a tie, and then Stephanie flips on the Revo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why she does this, if she's just going to be prepared to flip anyway. She knows it's probably going to be 2-2. Two -two. Bobby John doesn't really care, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why. I, I mean, Bobby John believes her, I guess, is is the point. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, not a great look from Steph. Yeah. Strategically. Well, tell, what, is James her guy? What What is this James-Stephanie relationship? I have no idea. I, I don't know. <sighs> I was trying to figure out why why she she cared. My um, Steph. She, <laughs> she must think that Eve and Bobby John are close and that they'll definitely vote her mm -hmm. out if if they're yeah, the This next is two. like the final four of the game. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. Yeah. Like, but that's people do say that they one of the reasons that people give for liking the season is because it kind of is two seasons for the price yeah. of one. You get like two complete end games. Mm -hmm. Um except yeah, the first except one just doesn't no really have any strategy because they're <laughs> voting based on who is going to win the challenge um but i mean it's pretty interesting here and and the the final three the ibrahim stephanie bobby john vote is uh also set up to be really interesting because of this mm -hmm. well and i think i think that you're right that you know the fact that the 
that Bobby John and Ibrahim were so tight, they're going to be voting together no matter what, and it didn't seem like anything could waver. I think that that scared Steph. Like, even though Bobby John was like, yeah, me and you being you, I think that she was just worried that if it came between the three of them, like, maybe she wasn't going to be who he would take um, to the next round if they had to vote somebody else out. So I think that that was why she was hesitant with the, the James vote. And then when it actually was a tie and she thought about it and she knows that nobody else is going to flip, she doesn't want to go to rocks or whatever, build a fire, whatever they're going to do. Um, I think that she was like, okay, I'm just going to take this chance and hope that Bobby John will stick with his word. All right. So uh, James ends up going out here. He certainly made an impression over his uh, six episodes on the show. <laughs> Just Do we know what, that, what happened to him? Like, what is he up to? Oh, now? I don't think it's a happy story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. He, oh, he, he's unemployed. He's, he's still unemployed. unemployed. <laughs> he's unemployed. Oh. Yeah. I don't oh, know. No. Um, I, I just think that a hundred times, James could play Survivor a hundred times and he would be pre jury a hundred times. I just cannot see a path for James to ever be likable or strategic or physical enough <laughs> okay. to get to the merge. What about if he's in no collar, blue collar, uh, white collar season? And he's blue collar or he's no yeah, collar because he's, blue he's collar. unemployed. No, he's blue collar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Dan Foley got to the final five in that season or six. Oh, man. Yeah, but uh, that is just the worst season. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I just I feel like uh, Dan Foley kind of found his people very coincidentally. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know if James would even be likable on that tribe. Do you think Mike Holloway and James would, would have a great friendship? Maybe. They're both Actually, family. maybe. Mike stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So we're down to only three Oolong now at this point. Uh, Stephanie and Bobby John and Ibrahim. And uh, they go on the back burner a little bit as uh, we see that Karor is going to uh, gonna have a lot of food, Chantel. Uh, Ian <laughs> is going to catch a giant clam. And then Tom, Tom's a one-upper. Yeah, exactly. Ian, he obviously Tom's Ian like, catches oh. a giant clam as if it's running away from him. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, Ian catches the clam, so I'm gonna have to go and catch a shark now. Um, yeah, he definitely, definitely didn't want Ian to have all that uh, those accolades. Um, I don't think he was doing it consciously, but I do think that he really deep down enjoys being like. I am the best at Survivor. I am the, the master of this tribe. Like, I do think that he enjoys that role. And I don't think he really wanted his, his you know, his disciple over here to, like, come and, like, you know, take the take the show. So, yes, he is Not a, a shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was, I mean, uh, the, did the people on Karor gain weight over the course of the season? I mean, they have so much food. Everybody's new and to keep starting it up. But. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> they eat so much. Yeah. I mean, like they, they, they've got nothing to do out there because they don't have to strategize. So they might mm -hmm. as well go hunt for food. And they have a big merge feast also. And they go on these, like all these rewards. Like, I'm, I'm sure it was hard, but like, I feel like that the, the Karor tribe like had it like really cush. They yeah. did. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they didn't have to do anything. And that's why it was so easy for Tom to not be voted out because it's like they had to always stick together. They never had to strategize against each other. And then Tom also made it that if you were to go against the tribe, you were, that was really bad. That was like, you know, it was kind of like how like Boston wrote a little bit, how it was like, you you have to, we all have to stick together. Buddy and, the buddy system. He was kind of, I was noticing a little bit of Boston Rob-ness Rob in Tom's approach, but I guess I just like Boston Rob better, and I wasn't really liking Tom, especially in this rewatch. I just remember just being like, oh, don't, don't let him get to the end. Like, he's gonna win. It's so obvious, guys. Like, please take some control Tom here. and Boston Rob kind of talk the same, too. I know they're from different places, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely getting some Boston Rob vibes from Tom. <sighs> Lita, who do you think is a better player, Tom or Rob? Rob. I mean, I don't know if you like Rob, but. Uh, 
I don't know, man. It's I, I still can't get a handle on whether or not I think Boston Rob is actually good at Survivor. Uh, I think uh, we've we've got a large sample size. Most of it does not uh, look good for him. But I also don't think Tom is that good at Survivor, no, I which we so see either. which we see on Heroes versus Villains. Uh, I think Boston Rob is probably better, but Tom has a way better average. <laughs> So I, I think that if I was going to compare the two, I feel like that Rob is more cutthroat and more of like the gambler who is like prepared to make the big move. That I do think that Tom is like a, a better like provider for the group. And I think that could pro is probably a better like leader of like a group of people as opposed to like Rob in Survivor Redemption Island had to have like a very specific uh, like group of people who was like mostly like young people who kind of looked up to him. Um, so I think that Tom is probably like a more natural leader. And I think that Rob is more of somebody who is like, you know, it, like him and Amber. I, I don't think that necessarily like leading a group is sort of like comes like a uh, second nature to him where he's like uh, going to be like working like and building relationships with everybody in the group like Tom does. Yeah. Although I do think like when you talk about Rob needing a specific group of people, I do think Tom does too. Mm -hmm. um, I think Karor is a try where um, there's not a lot of really independent thinkers. I don't think Ian has the, the killer instinct. Um, right. I don't think uh, people are ever going to really respect uh, Katie's kind of game. Karen, you know, is never going to win survivor <laughs> like she just believes whatever tom tells her janu oh. is is not that his only real competition is kind of like the greg and jen pair and uh kobe so i i think that tom also needs a group of people who are not the most mm -hmm. uh independent thinkers when it comes to strategy yeah and to be fair um in heroes versus villains like uh rob has uh like the villains tribe uh firing on all cylinders uh and is in like a much better position than tom is on yeah. on the heroes tribe yeah and it well, worked and out great for both of them I think you mentioned before, <laughs> Rob, that like you don't think that Tom's win is necessarily repeatable. Um, I do like I know that Rob has come back and played multiple times. It's not been great, um, but he I think he still has he is able to win. Like he's able to get to the end. Like I think he's better at knowing how to maneuver himself in various circumstances. That makes him to me a better player. And I also feel that strategy kind of started with Rob. Um, that was the first season. Season, his first one was where I was like got into the idea of having strategy in these games before I was kind of like I don't know if I like Richard Hatch like I don't know Alliance like I don't know if that's fair like I was still yeah. kind of in that kind of mode and then Rob's season came along and I was like oh I like this like I like to like, use yourself as like a chess piece to get to the end like yeah. and I started getting into strategy so I do give more props to Rob why are you laughing yeah. at me? <laughs> I, I no. don't know if Tom can play from the bottom and I think no. Rob can play from anywhere yeah. And, and I think that's also like an interesting comparison is that I'm just like thinking about this now, but basically Tom is Hunter from Survivor Marquesas. And so like if, if we saw like a full season of Hunter, like I don't think it's that different than what we see here from Tom in Survivor Palau. Yeah, it's, it's very play. straightforward. It's very like masculine win challenges, you know, all of that. I do think he's better than you know, a Mike Holloway. Um, but <laughs> I, I think that it still comes down to a very basic kind of gameplay uh, where mm -hmm. he didn't really have to zig or zag very much. And I don't know if he has that in him. It was yeah. just a numbers game for him. And he was just making sure he had the numbers all the time. He didn't okay. have to work. Yeah. We talked about the SOS challenge earlier, uh, where <laughs> that, uh, you know, Oolong looked pretty good. <laughs> Karora couldn't even get the fire started. Uh, somehow, uh, Karora wins this. They win rations after they just ate the shark <laughs> and they ate the, the, the giant clam. Then they got meal rations uh, dropped out of the plane. Did um, they do this on another season? Maybe, maybe it was Meal rations? Case? No. Wait, which one? No, I don't think they did it in season one, but they've done it in a lot of the early were, seasons. They did, like it, they did, it, some, they did it in like, Africa. They did it in Marquesas. Uh, they do it. They do it here. I feel like I remember somebody like getting naked or something. Yeah, somebody in Survivor like, Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I know it was just two weeks ago that I watched uh, Survivor, <laughs> the, the Australian Outback, but uh, I, I, but they do it. They do it a lot in the uh, early seasons. Yeah, I, I don't really like this challenge. I don't think it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I just don't like subjective challenges. I think it's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to talk at all about uh, Greg and Jen a little bit more? Speaking all I know of down is. If, I said Greg out, and Jen like each other. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> hey, if, if we're pitching an out list that is hot as showmances, I feel like Greg and Jen rock Greg it and to Jen. the top. Okay. Um, so, all right. Bobby John is going to be uh, the uh, swing vote here. And uh, we're going to see where it is going to be um, Bobby John, Ibrahim, and Seth. Bobby John and Ibrahim have been tight the whole way through. Why does Bobby John uh, vote out Ibrahim? He's he. I think Bobby John is missing a few entries from his mental Rolodex. Mm -hmm. I just think Bobby John is not that smart. Um, or he just thinks the stuff is better in challenges, and he wants to just win one. Um, I is think it's it? probably it's probably more likely that. And he did tell Steph that he was going to to vote with her if she voted out James, even though she like went back on that and voted with James the first time. Um, Bobby John should, Steph should catch way more heat for that from Bobby John, um, but he doesn't seem to really care. Um, I, I don't think he knew. I guess, uh, <laughs> no, the, oh, I is think that the he previous vote? Her. I think, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it was the that. previous one, because I think she's, because she says to him uh, that, oh, it must have been Angie that voted for you. Yeah. Um, so... I, I don't know why he does this. It must be the challenge thing or because he made a promise, but you'd think if he actually cared about the promise that he would not, that he would just say, yeah, I'm going to vote with you and not tell her basically like exactly what you tell somebody that you're not going to vote with, which is like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I actually though, I really love this challenge though. They got um, the, the slide puzzle in tree mail. Um, I miss them getting these things to practice um, and, and having a little clue as to what these challenges are going to be. And so th that was the one where they're doing the slide puzzle in the water. And I thought that that was like an amazing, really cool. Like, Why love slide was puzzle. Bobby John the caller? <laughs> what, what did Bobby John show them at camp that made them think that he was the slide puzzle master? Mm. Stephanie is in the water saying like, no, that's not right. If like, Steph had been there from the beginning, I actually feel confident they would have won. I think, yeah, do you know what? Maybe it's like the two times where Steph didn't really assert her, she kind of just like allowed things to happen. So, you know, with the the knot of James and then with letting Bobby John be the caller, I think that she, both of those times she wasn't really confident with that choice, but she wanted to be a team player or whatever. And let's just be like, okay, if he feels confident, let him do it. But I think that those are two times that she might've wanted to step up and maybe, maybe they would have had a better outcome. I just must know what that conversation was where they were like, <laughs> got to get Bobby John in there. <laughs> that is our puzzle master. He's got what the biggest like mental Rolodex of all of us. <laughs> We gotta get him in there. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I really didn't even feel like I would be confident in him when they had the puzzle, the small one, and he was like pushing things around. Like, there's a there's a specific strategy with slide puzzles, and it's, it's yeah. there's only one real way to do them and do it's them also, fast. It's not that hard of a slide puzzle because they have two empty spaces. Yeah, it's Normally easy. on slide puzzles, you only have one, only one. So I feel like it was just more about speed. And Bobby John just screwed it up, and you can see them make progress as soon as Steph gets up there. Well, and she probably had to backtrack because it's like there's probably like say yeah. ten moves that they needed to make if they just played optimally, right. and they he kind of messed it all up, and so she had to like reset it and then kind of approach it properly. And they, I think they would have won if if Steph had taken it on from yeah. the beginning. Okay, but I love well, the challenge. Now it's just Stephanie and Bobby John. The only two impossible. people, the only two people left at Oolong, and uh, Steph is not loving her time uh, with Bobby John. Uh, Lita, we see a lot of Bobby John snot rockets. <laughs> He's a I Neanderthal hate. man. I hate it. He. So I, the funny. thing is, like, he. I feel like he could have been a, a real heartthrob if we just saw less <laughs> of him. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like the girls watching would have would have been very into Bobby John um, had he not uh, been disgusting all the time. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's look, so funny. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that when I was looking at just like the, the cast photos or whatever, I'm like, oh, Bobby Johnny's so cute. Like I remember thinking that, and then you're totally right. When I was just like, he's not attractive at all. Pre- like, no. Primo Island hot too. He looks way better on the island than uh, at the reunion. Tom too. But if he had, he could have had maybe a glow up like Greg if he was on the Karor tribe, maybe. Like, maybe he would have been canoodling with Jen if he was on the winning tribe. Like, maybe we just saw the worst. I don't see Bobby John as, as a showmance kind of guy. They, yeah, they don't he have doesn't romance. have one in two seasons, yeah. Yeah, from, from Troy, Alabama, they don't know how to have romance. They only know how to work. <laughs> yeah, he loves to work. He should be on Tough as Nails, Bobby John. Yeah, I feel like there's like he could be on uh I don't know, American Ninja Warrior, something that mm-hmm. is only about strength and not talking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not even going to get on Bobby John about the if he if he has to snot rocket, there's there's no tissue on Survivor, but does he have to yeah. do it right in front of Stephanie? He, he, like, like where they like, sleep in the, like, in there's the like an entire forest that he could just go into <laughs> nobody would see him it wouldn't be on television <laughs> it would be fun yeah i love stuff and bobby john alone with nothing to talk about <laughs> after <laughs> all this time yeah um so we're going to get our uh balut eating challenge uh is this our first balut appearance yes i think so it's here to I stay. About it. It's so disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, A, I don't really eat animal products, but B, yeah. like, this is the grossest, like, one of the reasons, like, just gross-wise, that's why I wouldn't really want to eat, like, uh, an egg that's been fertilized. It's just, like, so gross. Yeah, and um, they eat so this, many. This seems <laughs> like one of the least gross to me. Because mm-hmm. really? it's, it's resem- it resembles a food that people eat. I mean, that's probably my biggest problem with it. It's like, it is, but it isn't. You know? I think the and issue... Kind of weird. I think the issue is like that there are like partially formed like uh, beaks? beaks involved. Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, and feathers perhaps. Like, I, I think that that's part of the issue. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm, a, I'm not squeamish at all about uh, these food challenges. Uh, I don't... I mean, they they don't gross me out. The only one that I've ever had to turn off is the Africa one because I think that is just I can't watch something die. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Balut, Balut never <laughs> seems that gross to me. So gross. They also sell it at like Filipino markets. No, I like, know that in the like, yeah. yeah. they, they have it on yeah. the Amazing Race all the time. Like it, it's it's the type of it's a food that I see on like these um, reality shows all the time. I just like think of it as just so gross. Um, and I just wondering what the consistency is. And like, that's Rob, have what... you, have you no, ever encountered it? No, I no. haven't. I mean, I think that Jeremy Collins, uh, once like, uh, didn't even have to eat it and he went up and, and ate it, uh, just, uh, to, cause he was hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think that the gross part here was that they had to fit so much in their mouth. Like it was <laughs> more like this didn't even have to be like balut. Like they could have been eating Pringles and it would have been gross. Like how many they had in their mouth. <laughs> Bobby John to emphasize how close he was opens his mouth that is clearly just so full, full. it's like filling yeah. out he's like no Jeff look uh, I'm like it's so full he, he's like he gets back he's like did you see how close I was and she's like yeah like, Bobby John you like three you're in your so mouth, close why did you do all four at once eat them one at a time you weirdo mm-hmm. but this, this was one of those challenges that where it was just so unfair that they could sit people they should have to decide who they're sitting out before they see what the challenge is. That's, That's I think, how to fix call. this. Well, in some of the other seasons that I've watched this year, when they have the gross food challenge, it doesn't matter if there is like a like a, a mismatch of the people in the tribe. It's not just pick your two best people. It's like, okay, Tom goes, Ian goes, now Katie goes, now mm-hmm. Kobe. Like, uh, what does it matter? Uh, well, I feel like that would be unfair because Steph and Bobby John would have to eat so many of them. Yeah, I guess so. I guess they're full. <laughs> they, would have, they would have to eat like, you know, four times as many as anybody on, mm-hmm. uh, on Karor. But, fair. um, yeah, I just, I think that you should have to sit people out before you know what the challenge is. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe you like, find a weak link. Cause, cause Steph and Bobby John are like great at this for, you take any random two people on a tribe, they're going to be like, better yeah. than than yeah. them you know what they should line up the whole tribe and stephanie and bobby john get to pick their opponents each round <laughs> like i challenge you yeah i challenge you i like yeah. that i yeah janu can't even eat 
regular food. <laughs> yeah, without throwing up. So, yeah. okay. Uh, and the reward, uh, Chantal, we talked about it earlier, the Procter and Gamble reward. Uh, Tom can't wait to just start drinking Scope. Do they have orange Scope? I've never yeah. seen that before. I, I felt like it, that would cause cavities. I was like, not I a fan. Purchase orange flavored mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me, thank you. I'll stick with mint. I'll yeah, stick mint. with the balloon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and for your reward, beef stew and a huge glass of orange scope. Root beer scope. <laughs> Classic <laughs> combo. Yeah. Uh, and then we have some friction over at Karor mm -hmm. where they win 55 gallons of fresh water and they have the ability to take showers. And Tom's like, well, we're not taking showers. Come on. I I'm totally forgot Jen about this, this too. I was team Jen as well. Cause I was like, Oh my God, that's so nice. So like it must, it would feel great. Like just to like wash your hair and just smell fresh for like a moment. And I forgot that he was just going to like, Nope, that ain't happening. And we're just using it for drinking water. And it's like, we got, we've been getting everything. We're doing really well here. Can we just have a damn shower? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have to be that responsible. Let's fill up our canteens. Cool. Oh, Let's so you have, have like eight people shower. is getting water really that hard. Eight people. So. Yeah, you might have to boil it. Like it's it's annoying. It's annoying. I I, I got where annoying is smelling disgusting. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so I was wondering, like, I don't know how the thing worked. Like, could they have taken the uh, either like the ocean water or, or the well water and just filled up the whatever, like the shower part of it was like, uh, could you have taken the shower Ooh. off of the 55 gallon container? Would you feel better <laughs> after showering in ocean water? It's something. Yeah, I, think it, I mean, the soap, I feel like, is doing the work. Yeah, but how is that different from just taking the soap into the ocean like yeah, they do? I feel like then uh, it's a little it's a little different. What about the water from the well that you don't have to boil? Mm, I don't know if I'd want to shower in well water either. Because you, 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 you have a lot of time during the day <laughs> to let work Jen have her shower. I mean, they they, they should have let Jen have whatever shower. she wanted. Like, yeah. who cares? And she just was like, had to be like, okay, well, I can't really state my opinion here. I really would love a shower, but, you know, they said no. And so I like, mm -hmm. just hated that, that she just like, she couldn't get excited about their win um, because he said, no, we were going to be responsible. And it's like, I get it, but like, I don't know. It's bad it gameplay from Tom, too, I think, to make mm -hmm. a unilateral decision. Mm -hmm. It's typical of him, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stephanie and Bobby John have a last stand. Uh, they actually, they go up against Greg and Kobe. So it's not even like that they went up against the A team here uh, in their final immunity battle, but uh, Greg and Kobe are going to beat Steph and Bobby John. What's the challenge here? Like running on uh, like platforms into the water. Oh, um, wow. I don't even remember it. It's close though, right? It's a puzzle. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I remember. Uh, mm. Cause Steph and Bobby John are not necessarily the, the puzzle. Not masters. the puzzle team. No. Yeah. Oh, the, it's, oh, the, it's word the puzzle, but the word search. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, when Jeff, that was, when Jeff was explaining that challenge, I was like, I wonder how many times he had to explain this. Cause that <laughs> it sounded so complicated. Like I had no idea what he was talking about. He's like, you but once you assemble the puzzle with the word search and once you find all the words, you've got to use the words to find a phrase. And it's like, I don't, I don't think that Bobby John like got it instantly. Not a word search guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't think that's what he did on the plane to no. pull out? No, <laughs> maybe Sudoku. But, but uh, Jeff calls it a word scramble, but you call it, a, I call it a word search as well. I, I was like, oh, is this like it an is a word thing? search? But you but have to like unscramble scramble. the letters to make a three word phrase victory at sea yes, yeah it was a search and scramble yeah i think that that's what uh, they should a classic they search and scramble <laughs> search and scramble <laughs> yeah um all right stephanie and bobby john uh they're gonna go to tribal council and they're first. going to make fire against uh each other is this the first fire making uh one-on-one -on -one that we see in survivor i have to think so because jeff explains it to them and they seem surprised because something seems off here. Uh, well, Stephanie and Bobby John. Matches. They have matches. They, 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 have matches. <laughs> they, they, they have matches. And it matches. ends in like five seconds. Yeah, because they have matches. It's not that hard <laughs> to make fire with matches. But also they didn't have to burn a rope. They have to like light a torch. Uh, yeah. Which, I don't know, Stephanie's went up like that. Yeah. It's like the most dramatic moment for a fire making challenge. Like we'll never see anything like this again. A pre-merge 
just like only two people. So they have to make mm-hmm. fire challenge. Uh, and yeah, it's two seconds. And Becky and Sundra are watching this like, hey. Mm-hmm. They thought it was easy. <laughs> yeah. Only three, I mean, o- only three seasons easy. later, they said, we're not doing that anymore. No mm-hmm. more matches. Yeah. So well, the flinch makes it really quite challenging and it makes it more of a skill. I mean, I think anybody can sure. make sure that the match stays lit for long enough to get, you know, the the husks lit or whatever. I think it just seemed very easy. And then she just happened to get a, a bigger flame in one second sooner than Bobby John. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. one second, probably. Yeah, she's like, Bobby John taught me too well. It's like, I don't think he taught you using matches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she didn't know how to do it. So she never I would like to know before. how many Break matches it, she used. And then yeah. it's fire. Close the cover. <laughs> sure. Um, Bobby John, I did think, uh, made an impression on me in terms of his like work ethic. Like This was an interesting experience for me that I've watched Guatemala relatively recently uh like within the last like uh seven or eight weeks and then watching this season and i feel like that bobby john is like kind of a nothing burger in uh survivor guatemala but what you about know when he screams at jamie and they almost kiss yeah i guess so i guess he has that but overall that i feel like that i mean they really do highlight like what a hard worker he is and again it's that same sort of thing that i was talking about like with tom where i do think that that's sort of like the uh, basically like what survivor is looking for in sort of like survivor worldview of the, just be a hard worker. And they call Bobby John the hardest worker that there has ever been on survivor, which I think is uh, like one of the ultimate compliments the show could give a person. It is, but it's framed in such a funny way at the finale. Cause they've just talked to Steph and uh, say like, she's like the most popular contestant ever or whatever. And Jeff is like, Bobby John, if Steph is the most popular, one of the most popular women to ever play Survivor, you have to be one of the hardest working people. And like, yeah. you think he's going to say, oh. you're one of the most popular men. But- yes. Do you think that he was giving him the glow up because he knows that he's going to go out and be on Survivor Guatemala in a couple of weeks? Uh, probably. Yeah. I yeah. I think so. Um, Maybe they reverse but- engineered it, made him look extra good. Except for yeah. the whole snot rocket thing. Who, who wouldn't want to see Bobby John again immediately? Mm-hmm. I said sure. that guy needs a second chance. Sure. He, he okay. makes jury on Guatemala, right? It's been a while. He just does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they let him be the first person on the jury. <laughs> they let him. They throw him a bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could have voted him out. They could have voted him out, but they let him be on the jury. Uh, oh, he begs so Stephanie. Nice of them. Yeah. Aw. I like that. <laughs> She gives him, and that's what, that's what she like. It basically like does him a favor, like, and they vote out Brandon instead. All right, so all right, we are officially at the absorption uh, episode. <laughs> uh, Stephanie is going to be uh, all alone, and Chantel, you were crying just watching Stephanie have to <laughs> find a coconut. Part, but no, I was mean, a big I coconut. Just- I like the fact that she didn't want to give up. And like, that's always just inspiring to see somebody like a lot of people would be like, Oh, I don't really want to do this anymore. Like we've seen many quits on this season or people that are just willing to, I got what I came for. I'm good now. And she did that. That wasn't enough for her. And I, I do feel that she might have been able to do better if they won maybe just one one immunity challenge and she might have had like a different a different uh showing. And so I love seeing her on the beach alone. Um I still am curious though, did she move the 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 boat by herself or did they take her to, you know, the other trial? Like did she have to row it really by herself? How did she get in the water? Her and Bobby John couldn't even get in the water together. Like what I, I know. So I'm wondering what happened behind the scenes there, because it just doesn't seem possible for one person. I suspect she got the boat in the water and then got picked up by another boat that took <laughs> yeah. her close to where the other camp was and then right. got in a very similar boat to the first boat she got in and then rode <laughs> into Karor. Okay. The job master really gave her a ride not... and dropped her off. Awesome. Yeah. That's what I would that's what I would guess. Um Lena, what's going on with Kobe here in this episode? Where Kobe seems like uh, he's like game, 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 and then he's just like snapped. He's like on tilt at this point in the game. Full tilt. Full tilt. Um, yeah. I think that uh, Kobe actually would have lasted a lot longer if he wasn't such a cranky pants. I don't think there was any reason for him to be a target as early as the merge. He's, his personality is just 
a lot and I really like him as a character, but on the beach, he's just unnecessarily combative. And I don't know that anybody would have been looking at him this early, especially with Steph there as a really easy vote um, if he hadn't really made himself a target with his personality. Yeah, I always wonder, Chantel, do you think that somebody told him that he was going to be the first to go or next to go or... I think that he was just being fed up with the fact that they weren't ever, they never had to go to a tribal because we know that the game starts when you go to tribal council. Like the Willard vote really was a, a nothing vote. And so I think that he wants to be able to like make a move, like get some of these people out. He's sick of being dictated by, you know, the toms of it all. And he yeah. wants to something new to happen and shaking it up. And he he's for, you know, three weeks now feeling like he's not really part of this tribe and he's just there and he's not being respected. And I think he was just frustrated and he wanted to make a move happen and he he could have probably made a move happen but everybody else was still kind of under the spell of like we got to stick together as Kuror and they're just like oh he might be trouble so let's get rid of somebody that might cause some trouble let's get him out because yeah. I think he could have maybe made some damage all right so well uh we're gonna get Stephanie at Kuror she's so excited to be there she gets the brown buff also uh there is no new merge buff uh on this season everybody just gets where wear the Kuror buff and so <laughs> Stephanie is very excited to be there uh we're gonna have an interesting merge feast where some guys are gonna uh gonna show up uh we had what Joe was one of them mm -hmm. did you write down their names yeah I, I only uh, remember Joe getting Joe. a call out yeah, there's Joe. Palau and Joe. Palau and Joe. And there's some business about that. Uh, they're going to teach everybody how to fish. And there's going to be some work with uh, setting up the bait. And Kobe volunteers to do that. But then he also says that Ian should help him. And Tom wants Ian to go out and catch the fish. And just seems like that this is uh, like a, not a great strat strategy move to fight over this. I think he was just frustrated because he he wants to be part of the group. He wants to be yeah. you know taken seriously. He wants to be respected, and it just seems as though Tom was not going to allow that to happen. So it's like, oh, like me and Ian can do something together that's you know positive for the tribe, and we're going to learn here. And then he's like, no, actually, Ian's coming with with us. We can have three people on this boat, right? And it's like, oh, we're going to change the rules. There's only supposed to be two people. You're going to change the rules to include Ian, and then just leave me here by myself. Mm -hmm. So I would have been annoyed too. I mean, obviously, in the in these kind of games, you don't want to have this friction because it's going to make people more likely to not care if you're around. But I can see his frustration if he just wants to be part. We, he talks a lot about being bullied and wanting to belong and never being part of a winning tribe before. And so the, the belongingness is something that's definitely so, he craves and he's recognizing that he's not necessarily a part of the tribe in that way. Mm, yeah. And I think he wants agency also. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, I don't ever get to make, make a decision when Tom is around. And I think it's, it's just gotten to him. It's a, he's at a boiling point at this uh, stage of the game. I think both Kobe and Katie have a little crush on Ian. Oh. That is, that is a theory that I have. Ooh. Okay. I think Kobe wanted to spend some time with Ian. I, he, I mean, can't, can't blame either of them, but the way that, Katie and Kobe are both hurt by Ian over basically nothing reminds me of like when your crush says something that like is not a big deal at all, but that <laughs> it like seems like the biggest deal ever. Mm -hmm. um, the Palauan guys are going to make a drink and pour rum into a coconut. Uh, and yeah. Tom gets wasted. He put the rum in the coconut and then he felt better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he got quite wasted. Um, I mean, like, I know that we, they saw some clips of him chugging from the bottle. Um, uh, but like, how much do you think that he really drank? He said a couple of shots. I feel like he must have had like a, like a good, like half a bottle or something for the amount of wasted he was. Yeah. Like, oh, like, when good. you don't have food in your system. I mean, I guess they had fish or whatever. No, I, but, I like, think he drank a lot. Yeah. I think Tom yeah. can drink and I think he drank a lot. Well, like that's not that that well. three, the three shot kind of wasted. Like mm -hmm. it was that was like a that was a, that was pretty. Dry. He says he blacked out, which is so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? This is the only time we get a blackout on Survivor. That's so, like, yeah, I feel like there's another time, but like it's so that be so uncomfortable. I'd be scared. Did you get any alcohol in the Amazon? Yes, we did. Uh, we got uh, some Coors Light at the merge, and oh, then yeah. we also got uh, some wine uh, at the lo loved ones visit. 
Mm, did you get drunk off a of Coors Light? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. It's been, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a very long time since I've watched the Amazon. Was it as embarrassing as it was for Tom? Did they like show it? And they showed it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wasn't like super, like, I wasn't like fall down drunk. Because uh, Tom like, was like yeah. on his ass. Like. Yeah. I was <laughs> slurring my words and, you know, saying crazy stuff, but I wasn't like, you know, uh, like falling down. Yeah. Uh, Butch oh, got rewatch. super. Butch got super drunk uh, and got sick. Uh, <laughs> but more, more on that in seventeen weeks. Uh, oh, it's when probably he, the probably the, the lighter fluid one. for very flammable mm -hmm. alcohol. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're going to see uh, Stephanie trying to like uh, like you know reconnect with Tom and Ian and Katie. Um, but Kobe can't wait to talk to her and he pulls her aside and makes like a very public, uh, showing of it. Like doesn't really hide it at all and, uh, spills all the beans to Stephanie Chantel and says, basically he just outs all of the relationships and says that Jen is, uh, obsessed with Stephanie and wants to vote her out. And I, okay, I know that he was you know, being very obvious and he didn't care that people knew that he was pulling her over to talk to her. Like, and I get that maybe that wasn't the best thing for him to do, but I thought it no. was a good try to get her on her side. Like she's probably looking for any in and the fact that she took that information then went to Katie and Jen, I thought that was a poor move on Stephanie's part. I think that she could have finessed that whole, all that information a little bit better to at least maybe get some sort of, some semblance of an alliance going, even if, you know, he was saying that Greg and Jen eventually did want to turn on Tom. Um, and it was true also that Jen had like a little bit of, you know, competition with, Stephanie. So I wish that she didn't say that. Like, I wish that she used the information a lot more wisely because I do think that she could have benefited better if she had. Yeah. I don't know what really, um, is going to happen. That's going to be positive out of this for <laughs> Kobe. Like, I mean, it's just him, even if he gets Stephanie on his side, it's like him and, and Steph like how many people are left in the game? Is it nine here? Nine. So nine. They need five, uh, even if you had him, Stephanie, Janu, uh, like maybe Karen, it, Karen, maybe, maybe, Ka maybe Karen. That's four. Yeah. Uh, you still unless, need... unless Greg and Jen are ready to flip very early, well, but, but, then, but they're not going to flip with Stephanie after Kobe told her that Jen hates her guts. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if she hadn't have spilled that part. Like, I think that maybe that Kobe could have been convinced. Like, this is our chance. Like, we have the numbers mm. now. Let's use Stephanie to our advantage to get yeah, one step further. I, I think there's a world where everybody except Tom, Ian, and Katie are in on this plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that's possible. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have like hyped up that Jen hates you if that's what Kobe yeah. was looking to do. And I yeah. think for Stephanie, she's like, she feels like, hey, uh, I'm in the inner circle with uh, like, I got a day one alliance with Tom and Katie and Ian. I'm going to run this information back to them and let them know uh, like about these uh, imposters uh, in the mix. Yeah. I mean, uh, nobody thinks that Steph is a, is a strategic power house, but she, <laughs> uh, to be fair, I can't imagine how hard it must be to come into a tribe where everybody has been playing together this whole time and just have nothing, just have no mm -hmm. information from the beginning. So it's hard to blame her for, for anything that she does here. Yeah. All right. We go to an immunity challenge and uh, speaking of survivor, the Amazon, we're going to get basically like uh, this is, we're going to rehash the survivor, the Amazon uh, merge challenge where stand in the water on a perch and Jeff is going to come in with some temptations. Ian even gives your season a specific shout out. Yes. And and Jeff doesn't even entertain the idea from Ian. Jeff does not speak for the audience. Jeff said nobody <laughs> wants to see that. And I said, you're wrong, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, a couple people jump off early, including uh, Kobe jumping off for donuts. Uh, Jeff gets a lot of people to jump off for uh, some chocolate chip cookies, 15 chocolate chip cookies, which ultimately gets split between four people. Not a great haul. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, these people, they have the numbers, so they don't really need to stay up there and fight. And so I was kind of like, I, I felt bad for Steph in that particular moment when people were just like, oh, I'm just going to jump off. Like, I'm just going to jump off for cookies. Well, Steph, and Steph jumps off too. And I, I forgot that that happened. I thought that yeah. for some reason, I thought that she won this one. Like, I remember the first no. challenge being right after the absorption. And I was like, yeah, I feel like she was on for the, till the end, right? And then she jumps off for pizza. I was like, no, because on Guatemala, she cries when she gets her first because she had never won immunity yeah. at all. Um, yeah, but I, I am always surprised when stuff goes off for the pizza. She says, I'm not great with temptation. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah, and especially <laughs> her whole narrative is that Stephanie never quits. She never yeah. gives up. Except that there's pizza on the line. It's well, a different story. Like filet mignon even pizza from Gigi. So Gigi's, well. yeah. <laughs> she but loves pizza. so well, though, on that season, on that tribe. Like, why are they, like, oh, donuts? Like, I have everything I need to, or I do anything for a donut and a cookie. Like, I just. Yeah, sometimes I you want something was... sweet. You've been eating so much shark. That's what <laughs> you don't is have. shark meat not particularly sweet? <laughs> not a high sugar content in shark meat? <laughs> it's not one of the sweeter fish. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. So ultimately, uh, it's going to be Kobe. Uh, and Janu is shocked because she wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speaking of Survivor of the Amazon, it's a Shauna situation. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep they're, Janu. They're not letting her go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And uh, Janu has a big reaction, uh, which some of the survivors are going to comment on. But, uh, yeah, that's it for Kobe. But uh, big, big first half of the game for Kobe. Yeah, yeah I, he's I definitely memorable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He seems like he somebody who I'm sure has also been, I know he wants to come back, but I'm oh, guessing. I'm that pretty sure he was like bag packed for uh, fans versus favorites and then mm -hmm. got bumped like very late in the Yeah, in I was going to say what one of the seasons that maybe not now, but one of the seasons that had returnees after this, he must have been in the mix. Yeah, I think so. So I guess maybe James got his spot, maybe. I would have rather seen Kobe, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he was in he was in the mix. I know he desperately uh, like would would love to uh, play uh, again. And, you know, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Um, we, we live in a world where Kimmy Kappenberg has played twice. So yeah. there, nothing is impossible. <laughs> OK, so. um. This is our Exile Island origin story. Uh, somebody's going to Exile Island for the first time here, and a new twist will be born. Again, uh, the bridge to the uh, teen age era of Survivor. So Janu, uh, she calls out Katie, uh, and this is uh, this gets heated, uh, Chantal. Yeah, I mean, I. I I, I understand Kate where Katie's kind of coming from. Like she's she's being the cool girl and like, you know, kind of chatting and gossiping and kind of teasing Janu. And Janu just wasn't having it anymore. And I just I think that they've been living together for too long. They need they needed a tribal just to like get some of this dirty laundry out. Um, and I think that it just didn't serve some of these relationships to like not have to go and talk out some of their problems. So I think that yeah. both of them were just like completely tired of each other. And Janu was definitely tired of Katie and Katie just didn't understand why. I thought it was funny. And it's like, Katie, you get that you aren't necessarily being super kind to Janu. Like don't, uh, don't be the victim yeah. here. A theme with Katie is that she's really bad at apologizing. Every time <laughs> she, like, even at final, uh, she yet. is like, I'm sorry if you were hurt by anything. She always says, I'm sorry if. Mm -hmm. um, that's what she says to Janu. Yeah. Great. I, I did like it when she talked about how then Janu was talking about that she got overheard Katie talking about the face that she made. And then she made the face that yeah. and she impersonated <laughs> the face that Katie was making. And she said it was even scarier when she was impersonating the face that she mean. made. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so, all right, we, uh, gonna have a reward challenge. Uh, we're going to see uh, a bunch of people go on a reward. Janu is going to get sick. Nothing yeah. that exciting happens here. <laughs> Yeah. With the beginning of Karen getting to eat every week. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have our challenge uh, where you have to put your face underneath the grate uh, as the water is rising. And then so they have a twist here. The first person 
out of this challenge is going to go to Exile Island, and that is going to be Janu. And we mentioned this earlier, the Chatel, everybody was making fun of Janu after she <laughs> gets out of the challenge first. Well, I don't know why it was like, it, that's kind of uncomfortable. Like some people might not be able to control that part of like that kind of breathing. Like it just, it's, you can, might panic and I can understand, you know, the water comes up and you're kind of in an uncomfortable position and you panic for a second and you want to have oxygen. I went scuba diving once and it was the worst experience I've ever had in my life because of the fact that you look up and like, they're, they're so far from real air. Yeah. So I can get having that panic and not no wanting doubt. to that situation so i don't yeah. think she panicked though she was cold <laughs> or, or cold whatever it wasn't it wasn't working for her it, it didn't seem like a, a something that she was going to excel in i felt mm -hmm. like i, mean, I was going to win that one for sure yeah but uh here comes jeff to the rescue here though to yeah. say like hey yeah. like make it off nice. you guys stop yeah. making fun of my friend janu <laughs> <laughs> this is the challenge that uh on netflix for Survivor, they show it, but from uh, Micronesia, which is so weird because Micronesia isn't on Netflix. Um, but I guess it looks very dramatic having the the waterboarding challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but that, it's uh, interesting trivia. I feel like if you ask most people, most Survivor fans, who the first person to go to Exile Island was in the show's history, uh, most people would not know it's Janu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She sort of is like the Gary Hogaboom of finding the first idol of like, it's like a one and done in a season where it's not yeah. really a thing. And then they try it on. And then uh, in not next season, but we're going to have a whole season around Exile Island uh, in season 12, it's, which we will talk about at some point down the I road. Am... And hopefully. What's yes. the purpose of Exile? Like it's just to take somebody out of the tribe. Well, they had the and... idol there for a long time, but uh, I was yeah, just going to say now. that. Hopefully that, that we'll talk about Exile Island many weeks from now. So Shane Powers doesn't want to uh, come and track me down. <laughs> oh, I was, I just hope it doesn't come up because it's one of my favorite seasons. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, the purpose of it is usually as like a, a punishment because you're away from the social politics more than it is about like, you might die. Um, so maybe she actually knew that and was just like, oh, I want to be out first. Like, I need to get away. I from mean, this I think she wanted to get away from those people. And clearly it was the best experience of her life. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk that through, Lita? Why was this so great going to Exile Island? Because uh, she got to prove to her. I mean, she's been at this camp where Tom and Ian do everything. And so she a lot of these people, especially the women who aren't really like, you know, I don't want to say allowed, but they aren't necessarily like encouraged to be the providers. So she's never mm -hmm. had to do any of these things. So I think um, probably Janu came on the show for a reason, right? She wanted the survivor experience and barely ever going to tribal council, not making fire, not fishing, not doing any of that. What does she really cross off of her bucket list, her survivor like experience? And so I feel like once she goes there and she makes the fire, she provides for herself, she survives. I feel like that's when she says, okay, I'm satisfied because otherwise, what has she done? Nothing. She's sitting around at camp and sat out of challenges and mm -hmm. not done any strategizing. Okay. And another thing too, just with along with the sitting out of challenges, I think that's another thing with Katie at the end. I felt really bad because it's like, she didn't decide and be like, hey, I'm going to sit out this one. Oh, I'm going to sit out yeah. this one. Like she didn't get to choose to not participate. And so then, the, then you know, Greg is saying that she was pathetic. It's like, wait, no, you guys decided that I wasn't capable of doing something here. And I just didn't argue back because you guys are in my tribe. And so just like in general, the fact that they had the opportunity of just to sit people out that sit whoever they perceive to be weak out of the challenge and it just so happened to be the women that they perceived this of and i thought it was also frustrating with janu as well so i can totally see her wanting to have at least having some sort of a gratifying experience here and and maybe exile did provide that for her all right uh so we didn't say that tom won the uh water great challenge so no, he, he has good. yeah he has he has individual immunity so we go to the tribal council and this is another like contentious moment of the season where for many years uh fans have felt like okay jeff strong-armed janu out of the game lita going back and watching this 12 times is that your read <laughs> on what happened here um I know Jeff is very defensive about this. I yeah. love at the reunion, he says, does anyone who was there feel like I bullied Janu and Kobe raises his hand and Jeff goes, no one. See, nobody thinks that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that he 
if he did not want Janu to quit. So for him, obviously, um, it makes a better show if Steph stays and Janu quits. Um, I think if he did not want her to quit, he would not have followed up so harshly on the uh, line of question. I think he would have let it go sooner. Um, when he directly asked her, what's the difference between uh, being asked to vote out and quitting? That's like when I think he's kind of asserting his opinion that it is not different. So you might as well just quit. Um but I think she was going to do it anyway. She just might not do it here. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Jeff encourages it in a way, but I don't think Jeff caused Janu to quit the game. Yeah. Well, and what happened though, didn't I felt that when there's been quits in the past, I might be making this up, that they weren't able to participate in being the, in the jury and stuff like that. Yeah, and he still he their torch torch. Yeah. Je- Jeff is like nothing but respect <sighs> for Janu right now. I'm I'm very glad she quit. Je- so Jeff still stuffs her torch. Yeah, I don't think that there's ever been somebody that has quit where they don't let them be on the jury. Uh, yeah, like I think that um, people have been removed from the game and not been on the jury, but I don't think anybody's ever quit the game and they've, they threatened that it's with Nayanka and Purple Kelly after their their season, but I don't think they ever have done that to anybody. Who who have who didn't get their torch snuffed though? Remember, like because it was never step Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But he wasn't on the jury. jury? Mm. Yeah, that was pre-jury. No, that, that was already happened. Yeah, maybe it's just like what I think is like reality television competition show rules is that like if you don't if you quit then you don't get to be part of the rest of the game. So yeah, I'm I was not surprised. sure about. Uh, if in Big Brother, uh, if that's if there's a precedent there, but I, I don't think it's happened in Survivor where somebody's quit and they haven't let them be on the jury. Hmm. But yeah, I would say that based on what what we see on the screen, I don't think that Jeff makes Janu quit. The question is, you know, in this hour, was this an hour of just like, uh, so why don't you quit? Why don't you quit? Mm-hmm. Why are you still here? You know, and where we only saw like a little snippet of the conversation, you know, you'd have to really get into it with somebody who was there that night. Yeah. Well, I also though, did, like, did you know, do you think that she actually really wanted to quit like that particular like moment at tribal? Because it does seem that she was encouraged to do so at that particular time. And then Steph was kind of saying like, wait, like if you want to quit, don't use me like wanting to allow me to stay as a, as your reasoning as to why you're quitting. And so I never really fully heard from Janu whether or not that's really what she wanted to do. Um, so I can see how Jeff might've been looking like he was maybe, you know, advancing his own agenda here and kind of you know, urging her to quit in this moment. Cause it's a good TV moment it looks like Steph had some strategy here as to like getting somebody to quit the game for her. Um, and the story of Steph can continue. So mm-hmm. I don't know if she actually wanted to quit there though. Cause she does seem convinced. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think she got what she came for at that point. She she knew she's like, le- like oh, leaving yeah. on a high note. So I think she was good. She was good to go home. She knows she's not going to win. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading the Survivor Wiki page of quits. It's pretty interesting. There are not very many after the merge. I forgot uh, Julie McGee quits after the merge, and I think she was still on the. She quits the a- after. No, she quits after the merge uh, because she. Uh, but it's but it's before oh, the pre-jury. jury starts because she wants oh, okay. to go on the pre. She's uh, worried that John Rocker <laughs> is going to go off on the pre-jury trip without her. <laughs> oh God, that's so stupid. That was that was why she <laughs> had to leave the game. That would be the dumbest reason for a quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So Stephanie is still there. And this is again, a little awkward now because it's like, Oh wait, you were going to vote me out last night. Right. Uh, and Tom says, uh, no, 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 no. We were, we, we, uh, we that's, that wasn't how we were going to ultimately vote. Uh, and then he puts the immunity necklace on her. Like you, <laughs> Steph, you deserve this. Here you go. You've done great kid. You would fit in great at truck one Oh eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Greg really does not care for Stephanie Chantel. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> why does Greg hate Stephanie so much? Well, I I don't think that Greg respects women in this particular game <laughs> that much. It just doesn't appear Jen. that way. Yeah. Um, I, he doesn't necessarily respect Jen. There's even a, a moment a couple of episodes ago where he's like, oh, I don't want to you know, be distracted by this showmance. Or they didn't call it showmance, but like this relationship, like I, I'm here to win. And so like he didn't even respect 
fully respect their relationship. Um, and I just, I really feel as though, yeah, Steph does have a really good story. And Steph is probably the only woman that could maybe beat him physically at anything. And so I don't think that he likes the idea that he might get beat by a woman in like these individual immunity challenges. And I think that, that, that he was threatened more so by that. I don't think that it was maybe Stephanie specifically or even her story specifically. I think it's that she's just a, a, a competitor that could go toe to toe with him. And I don't think he wanted to be beat by a woman. She also so. beat up his girlfriend like eight times. Oh, yeah. The yeah. yeah. That's true too. Yeah. Maybe no, I, I think he just he just knows that um if she gets too far, like she's definitely gonna win a jury vote. Um mm -hmm. and it's but it's they very... always have the numbers, they'll always have the numbers to get her out. And so yeah. the fact that he was going so hard that like it didn't have to be that early. He could have used her to get out, like get out Ian, get oh, out. Oh, I completely like, agree. Also, even if you're looking at it from a threatening standpoint, like Okay, yeah, Steph is definitely good in challenges, I guess. She hasn't won a single one. What, mm. she's going to beat Tom and Ian in every physical challenge? Like, no, that's that's ridiculous. So um, I'm sure she could have won some of these challenges, but um, if she's going to jump, jump off a pole for pizza. a pizza, I don't know if she's the biggest immunity threat. So, um, I, yeah, I was not happy with... Uh, I feel like I always blamed um, the Tom and Ian contingent for... Uh, Steph getting voted out, but it is Greg. It's mm -hmm. really him that that turns it so early. So we're going to get Tom trying to like really make his case to the tribe why they shouldn't uh, vote him out. And I understand what he's saying, but you probably shouldn't say this to the group. What does he say? He says basically like a, all right, everybody, look, mm -hmm. I played a bit. I, I played a hard game. I showed my cards. Like, uh, don't penalize me for it, okay? Don't vote me out because I tried to. Like, uh, that was like I, I could have hid. I didn't. I provided for the tribe, so don't vote me out. Yeah, he says I showed too much heart, too much will. I'm just like, yeah. uh. <laughs> hoo hoo. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. get out of here. Like, yeah, you did, and you didn't play the game well. Don't make people feel bad about the fact that like they don't want to just let you win the game. Yeah. yeah frustrating yeah that's where i feel like that the young people are like sort of like uh like okay boomer like uh we're gonna <laughs> vote you out anyway like uh, so you know i i don't think that this actually is what works i think that tom is gonna have to ultimately you know uh find his way through with the help of winning immunities down the stretch because i think there were so many people in this group that would have voted him out the first time uh they had the chance Speaking of Boomer, I can't believe I'm older than Tom was at that oh, time. I'm like, yeah, what? Tom, I, <laughs> I'm older than Tom? Like, yeah. He's three times me. Ian's age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, That's a good line from the finale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, Tom is, I mean, he's only 40 years old, I think, in uh, the planet season, yeah. but he's yeah. like completely has, uh, you know, white hair. Uh, to play, and I think he uh, tried to use that as like to like hide if people thought he was older than he was. But yeah, you know, he's only forty. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was just like I thought he was so much older, and then he mentioned it in the the finale, and I was like, wait, what? Like a tribal council is like you're four, and I went, I looked it up. I'm like, no, he must have been in his forties, like you know, forty. Mm -hmm. Like wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Um, there are four women left in the game. Uh, here at the final seven. And there's some talk about Katie, Karen, Jen, and Steph could uh, vote out Tom. Lita, do you think that uh, Katie says that she's just exploring this idea? Do you think that she really was on board to potentially do this? Uh, yes, I think she was on board to potentially do it. I'm not saying that she 100% would have done it. Uh, I don't think even she knows that. But I think the we can't do a women's lights because Karen sucks confessional is yeah. uh, telling. I don't think she would have said that if she wasn't considering it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, put a pin in that uh, time for the auction. Uh, Chantal, I feel like this is kind of an uneventful survivor auction. I, I forgot that like idle clues weren't going to happen. So it's like, okay, good. Okay. So maybe they can save their money and like they get something that's really useful. And then I forgot them like, Oh wait, no, they just, they just get, Okay, great. Letters from home give you that family rejuvenation for the rest mm -hmm. of the game. Cool, a great, great gift. But like, I don't know, it just seemed a little bit underwhelming yeah. for people playing. Nobody even gets like in a bath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff tells Ian he needs a bath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Definitely. yeah, that's, that's really it. Lita, what's the best moment from the Palau auction? Oh, boy. 
uh, well, I really don't care about Tom's kid's turkey mm-hmm. hand or whatever. <laughs> so uh, definitely not that. Um, I don't know. I guess I liked Greg pitching in $20 for a bite of whatever Ian gets. <laughs> yeah, the but, no. spaghetti with meat sauce. Yeah, but no, it's it's an uneventful action. Also, all the items are covered, which is just like, I don't think it's that fun. Um, I'm glad nobody got a jar of crabs, but like, yeah, I don't know. It also seemed like only some people were like into it. Like Katie didn't get anything at the auction. Mm-hmm. Well, and, like, is it just because it wasn't shown? Because they had a lot of money, and I don't think everybody. I guess they got to keep the money. You that can they keep the money. Yeah. The um, yeah. I don't know. I I think the auctions. I I don't love uh the auction when there are like um idol clues and things uh because you know everybody just just saves it i i've just never been like the biggest fan of the auction anyway but i feel like when everything's covered and it's like just food there's like nothing interesting um then it's not that fun (laughs) yeah all right so uh tom and karen had uh enough of a bond where tom could say to karen like hey like i'll watch out for your back you watch out for my back if you hear anything and karen comes in and tells tom that um, the girls are talking. Katie is looking at doing a girls' alliance, and Tom is a little bit like, "Why are you telling me this?" She's like, "Yeah, you said, exactly. Tom, Tom, you said, you said yeah. that much in your back, yeah." And so he's like, oh, "I don't think she should have told me that. I think she should have just told me out. Out, Karen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why is she telling you know the person? Like, I get it. You want to show that you're you know you're doing what he, he asked you to do, and like you're giving him information, and like you, you're working together. We're in an alliance. Like, you know, I, I get that. But also, we know that knowledge is power here. Like, if that's the case, like. I think that she, sh- I do think that she should have gone for it, to be honest. Um, I don't know why she's spilling this information. Maybe it's so that he would just go against Katie and then she could take his, you know, second, second hand man position. But I don't know, Karen, I wanted to like her so much and she just frustrated me with all her decisions, just running back to Tom with everything. And I just was like, Ugh, he's not even keeping you. Like, I know. Ugh. Karen yeah. really does suck. So she's a total Karen. <laughs> she felt differently though. I like the way she spelled yeah. it. So Lita, if if they did this plan and the four women voted out Tom, do you think that then Ian would have been out next, or does Katie then try to get to the end with Ian? Like, because who does Katie want to be in the end with? At this point, it wouldn't matter what Katie wanted though. It'd be what Jen and Karen wanted at that point, wouldn't it? I think. Katie what if Greg? To- Oh, Greg. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think they'll want to get out Greg, Greg next and just blindside Jen is, on it. Is Jen going to uh, – so they're going to blindside Jen and vote they, out Greg yeah, next? Yeah, they don't, they don't need Jen. I mean, they didn't tell her when they voted out Greg but in the season. The, um, I think Katie wants to go to the end with Karen in that situation. But does sure. Katie want to go to the end? Of the, that Katie and Karen hate each other. Well, if Katie's smart, which I think she is, I think even Katie from wants the to go. beginning of the game, like the first couple of days, like Karen yeah. pulls Katie aside and it's like, "What's your problem?" And, and it seems like that there is like no relationship there. Yeah, but I, I know, but I, I think enough. I think if Katie, I'm I'm not saying she does want to go to the end. I'm just saying in this alternate universe, that should be who Katie is angling to go to the end with. Yeah, oh yeah, I she don't, should. Yeah, I don't. I think that she does want to keep Ian, but I don't know that she wants to go to the end with Ian. You got to get rid of Steph too. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, I mean, it was always going to be tough because it's just one of those seasons that's so frustrating because at any point, if they vote out Tom or Ian, who's ever left is just going to run the table on the immunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I feel like Tom, <laughs> Tom or Ian wins this season basically no matter what because the immunity challenges are so lopsided but i don't know maybe steph being there would have would have kept things interesting or greg being there longer um Mm -hmm. but i don't think there's a world where katie or karen or even jen wins any of these challenges yeah so in a round where like tom was vulnerable they had four women who could have gotten together to vote out tom ultimately stephanie's gonna go out six to one Stupid. And also, though, with Karen, though, like I know that she doesn't really have a great relationship with Katie, but she has to know that she's of no threat really to anybody's game and that people, not just Tom and Ian, are going to want to take you to the end. Like everybody wants to sit beside you, Karen. Like I wish that she realized her position in the game and that she could have just, like, hey, like I know everybody really wants to take me because I haven't seemingly done anything here. Like let's make a move. Let's let me build my resume and like do something here. Take out one of these big guys. 
and, you know, change my fate here instead of just allowing Tom to drag her along and then decide mm-hmm. to discard her, her whenever he felt like it. It's insane uh, that she's voted out at five. That makes no sense. <laughs> Everyone should want to keep Jeff her. even mentions that at the I, finale. Yeah. Like, yeah, how did that happen? Shocking. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, here at the final six now, we see that uh, all of a sudden uh, the uh, Greg and Jen relationship is very much in focus. Karen is very much uh, worried about this. This is going to be, they're going to control the game. Um they don't really seem to have a ton of power. Uh, like the, the, I think the Greg and Jen threat is there. Uh, they're talking to Katie, but they need a fourth. And I don't think they have one. They're just tired of uh, Jen getting pulled out. I, I guess they're going to they vote out Karen. <laughs> and then at five, they're going to vote out Tom and Ian. That's the, I guess that's their plan. It's not uh, a great plan. No. Yeah. It's not people, people just see a showman and they're like, that's uh that's a threat no matter what. Yeah, because who's going to beat Tom uh, and Ian? I, I guess you vote out whoever doesn't win immunity at four. And then somebody's still got to beat Tom or Ian at, uh, at or you vote out whoever doesn't win immunity at five. And then, but somebody's still got to beat Tom or Ian at four. That's what I'm saying. That's why like playing out different scenarios in this season is different than other ones because I do feel like Tom or Ian wins out no matter what mm-hmm. in the challenges. Yeah. Did anybody else win an immunity besides Tom no. or Ian? Yeah. Tom won five and Ian won two. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yeah. That was it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So anyway, we're going to get, uh, Greg is going to win this reward. And uh, there's a whole thing about Ian and Katie promising to take, take each other uh, on a reward challenge. But um, Katie goes on the, she gets picked to go with Greg uh, and Jen. What What is the issue here that Katie uh, snuffed one of Ian's torches in uh, the um, uh, coconut chop challenge here. I uh, guess yeah. that's what the problem was. I mean, like, Ian doesn't make a huge deal out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't like go to Katie crying about it. But it seems like he feels like, oh, uh, that uh, oh, Katie's not working with me now because she uh, she just snuffed one of my torches here. So, and it seems like that that's the reason why he feels like that she's not with him anymore. Yeah. So. I mean, it could just Fair be strategy wise. Like Katie's like, oh, I don't want it to look like we're super tight here. So like, let me, you know, he has a few strings that we can, I can still chop one and he's still going to be in the game. Like, I don't yeah. know. I don't think it was that terrible of a decision of hers. And I okay. don't think he's that mad about it. Yeah. So Greg picks Jen, then they pick Katie. They go on the cruise ship. Uh, this part's kind of boring when Greg is uh, hanging out uh, with uh, his friend, Greg gets a massage. Uh, we go back and Greg, forth. Greg, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I wonder the why for the season did they take away all of their their bathing suits and just force them to wear their clothes? Like, I don't know. and then they're like, "Oh, here's your bathing suits bag," and you're like, "Oh, thanks." That's what I thought I was gonna be wearing this whole. Well, season, a lot but... of people get get some action out of Greg's shorts after he's voted out. Katie wears them sometimes. Jen wears them sometimes. Um, yeah. These are also the weirdest loved one relationships. Like, I mean, Jen has a sister, that's fine. fine, but Greg has his buddy Greg, and Katie's sister's husband comes yeah. out to see her. Mm-hmm. Well, like an I, assistant coach. Assistant coach, for, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they must have sent the th- uh, three loved ones home, uh, right? Yeah. Like, they must have had them all there, and they must have sent three people. Like, uh, that's also like, uh, forget Wanda and Jonathan. I mean, yeah. so I'm sure it was just been, you know. Uh, what Tom's wife? Uh, I don't know who Karen's loved one. I uh, probably one of Ian's parents. Like, all right, yeah. go home. That's I feel so like uh, Katie got to see her sister's husband, and Greg got to see Greg, and the people who like actually have kids didn't get to see their loved ones. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. Meanwhile, uh, we're seeing Karen feeling like okay, we Greg it can win. He's very affable. Uh, we got to work on that. And I think that this is very interesting, Chantel, that Tom and Ian say, okay, we're going to go to rocks. We're going to rocks at three, three, and we're going to tell Katie and she's not going to go to rocks for Greg. 
No, I, and I think that that was, uh, that was probably the most strategic that I saw yeah. anybody working this particular season. Um, I thought that that was a really good assessment about Katie. Like, so they can see that Katie does want to get to the end and win. And he could, they can definitely see that it's a potential that she might form something with those other two while they're on this reward challenge together. So do you know what? Let's force a tie and force her hand. I didn't know, though, that Ian was going to tell her the plan in the way that he did that completely kind of unraveled all the goodness of this being a potential plan like i feel like how he he told her he told talked at her as opposed to like letting yeah. her either in on the plan or letting her find out in the moment and her well, they, they the had to moment. tell her because the whole point of the plan was to force her to vote with them they didn't want they they i believe firmly that they would not have actually gone to rocks because they had to know that it was very likely that one of the two of them would win immunity meaning that from their side, only one person would be picking rocks. And like that, it's not enough people to go to rocks uh, <laughs> when only three people are drawing them because uh, mm -hmm. one person has immunity. So um, I think that would have been a really bad plan. So they had to tell Katie beforehand um, to force her to vote with them. But um, I mean, if Katie's smart, she should know that they should not go to rocks. Um, but also you're right. The way that Ian told her like right before tribal was just like, this is the plan. Not what do you think about this plan? Um, showed that clearly Ian was not playing the game with Katie. Like I said, I think that they're a duo in terms of their friendship, but Ian is playing the game with Tom. He's not playing the game with Katie. So just to talk through that rock scenario. So Ian was immune. He has, he has the immunity from the second chance immunity challenge. Uh, so then it would be what three votes on Greg and they would put uh, three votes on Karen. I guess. Yeah. So then only Tom, Tom Jen and Jen Katie and Katie would draw rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think one in three is not a good, I don't think that you should draw rocks there. No, yeah. but um. I don't think Tom's going to flip his vote. Uh, so um, I think he'd go to rocks. Tom? Yeah, you don't think he would He would flip to vote out? Uh, I, I guess he'd let, he'd let Karen go? Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I think he'd let Karen. I don't think that's disastrous for Tom's game to let Karen. I think, I think, I think his everybody... odds with Karen out of the game are still better than 33%. You know, he might have to win every immunity. He might have to win out immunity wise that, you know, that it's like, okay, let me let Maybe, her go. But I, but I still feel like even if Karen goes, I still feel like uh, you can maybe get Katie back. And mm -hmm. cause there, nobody's going to want it. Katie's not going to want to be the third in Greg and Jen. I'd rather be the third with Greg and Jen and yeah. um, the third with Ian and uh, Ty. I, I guess if, if Ian yeah, wants to, yeah, <laughs> wants <kidding>. to uh, <laughs> take it to the end. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, these, these final six, I feel like uh, a good final six. See, it's a good final six. Cause I could kind of see any of them flipping and voting with each other. Yeah. Um, other than Greg and Jen and that are like kind of a pair and Ian and Tom that are kind of a pair. There's a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. Uh, it would have been yeah. really interesting though, if there was the tie and then everybody just flips their votes. So then there was just another tie um, that would, that would have been actually hilarious. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of this is when they tell Karen that she has to pretend to be upset. Like, uh, <laughs> all right, Karen, you're going to be sour and dour. Like, okay, got it. Sour and dour. Uh, uh, I'm a great actor. I'm a very good actress. Very, very good. <laughs> I, love I it. did like seeing her sit, like, you know, by herself at the tree base. I think it was hugging her knees. Sour and dour. Out. Remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, Karen, don't be a good job. Karen, don't be your usual peppy self around <laughs> camp. You have to stop skipping just for one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So ultimately, uh, Greg is going to go home. Uh, blindside. Katie is going to vote with Tom and Ian. Uh, and uh, sorry, Greg. Sorry, Greg. Time sorry to go hang Greg. out with Greg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess he'd probably still be around potentially. So Yeah, whatever. Greg can go grab beers with Greg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So at the final five, this is really where we start to see uh, Jen start to emerge uh, that, you know, we're hearing her called a smooth operator. Uh, and um, she takes the blind side of Greg very well. She's just like, oh, okay. Well, she's very good with the, the, the same with the shower. She's good at knowing when to, when to let stuff go, at least uh, in front of other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and so now there's a lot of like a fighting, a tug of war for Karen. Where's Karen gonna go? Well, they they should have used her better. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they they definitely definitely wasted a, a Karen being on their side. And I think though the problem was though Katie and Karen really never got along, and so they just didn't ever have any trust for each other. And Katie and Karen was always going to be have her trust with Tom, even though she wasn't really getting it back from Tom, even though she felt that she was. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't realize the position that she was actually in, but they definitely didn't use her in the best way that they could because anybody could have won against Karen. They should have been just yeah. clamoring to keep her and they, they, she was expendable, which was very surprising. You know, one yeah. of the things uh, that I was uh, thinking about this week, uh, watching this season was with uh, the, all the positioning for jockeying to be in the final two where that last week, uh, Taryn and Mary, uh, Taryn, Mari and Matt, uh, talked about, uh, cook islands, which has the first final three, which I think that people feel like, Oh yeah, you had Yule and Ozzy in the final three. But I think that this season is a lot less interesting with a final three where I think a lot of yeah. the yeah. interestingness about the season comes from, there's only two seats at the end. Oh yeah, I I think final twos are almost always more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, well, especially because there's usually one person that gets zero votes, so it's just kind of like, mm, yeah, why are you there? Uh, yeah. does it, I mean, and you, you want to get to the end. It's, it gives an opportunity to peeps, for people to fight for more spots at the end, but chances are it's only between two people. And it's a lackluster final tribal council. It certainly would have been more interesting if it's Tom, Ian, and Katie uh, at the final three, as opposed to Jess, Tom, and Katie. But it really comes down to like, what's better in a survivor season? Is it the journey or is it the destination? Where I think that Cook Islands is a little bit more about the destination of mm -hmm. Yule and Ozzy in the final three, where I feel like this is a lot more of a like journey to get to that final two. Yeah, I, I mean... I just think like generally the final three kind of positioning for that final two. I mean, the, the stuff that happens maybe before the immunity challenge and the stuff that happens at four, it's always going to be more interesting with the two because these are the people that have gone the furthest together that have spent the most time together. And it's when it's going to get the most personal. So uh, mm -hmm. I always think it's, it's really dramatic going into a final two. I just think it's interesting that survivor has clearly come down on the side of they're more interested in, in the destination than the journey. Yeah, that's why I've had so many electric winners recently. Mm -hmm. And really, <laughs> the the one season that is like considered to be the best of uh, the modern seasons in Kagiyan happens to mm -hmm. be the season that has a final two. Yeah. Although that that one would have been better with the final three, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have been, it would have been more more interesting. It would have been yeah. a more interesting final three. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, and Lita, uh, were you gonna say something else about uh, this lead up to the final five? Uh, I just, I don't understand. I, I just watched the episode today and I still don't understand why they go against Karen instead of Jen. What is yeah. the upside to anybody? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> like, they don't explain it either. They just go to tribal and they're like, all right, it's Karen. Yeah, they have the reward challenge where Tom and Ian work out ahead of time. All right, do not do not leave the three women back at camp. Uh, and Ian wins oh, the car. Oh, yeah, we, we have to talk about that. Talk about this it. Is this is so dumb on Ian's. This is such an unforced <laughs> error. I mean, Jesus Christ. Tom explicitly said, do not bring me on the reward. And Ian explicitly said to Katie, I'm going to bring you on the reward. Just no one likes this, inc mm -hmm. including Ian ends up not liking this decision. Well, this if there was a point. car involved, when yeah. Tom's <laughs> dream is to ride shotgun in a Corvette on Palau, who cares mm -hmm. if there's a car involved? Tom's not getting the car. Yeah, he's gonna get a different car, but it was a bad, bad move. And I, so I forgot bad. about this bad move too. I'm like, oh, Katie gets to go to. Oh, okay, yeah. I forgot about that. Why is he leaving the three women there? I'm like, I'm like, oh, remember it was that all thing bad that we explicitly move. just said that we're not gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand. Chatel, this is like a real turning point for Ian because it feels like that then there's no coming back uh, from this with Katie and basically he's going to spend the last five or six uh, days of the game just like getting guilt tripped by everybody. Well, and I think that that's what he was maybe avoiding with Tom. It seems as though um, how Tom kind of manages his 
relationships on his, his tribe is that he kind of makes them feel guilty or like they're doing something immoral or you know they're acting like a weasel and they're ma he's making that being such a terrible thing that I'm sure that Ian doesn't want to disappoint Tom he doesn't want to like you know let him down he doesn't he, he doesn't want to go against his word he doesn't want Tom to think of him in a certain way and I think that that overrides his like decision making skills in this moment because he doesn't want to let down Tom or whatever feelings that he has towards him. So I think that that made him make a really bad decision for his game. And in the end, he still got the guilt thing that he was probably trying yeah. to avoid with Katie, you know, in a more emotional sense, because he, it was a really a bad move all around. Yeah. And then Lita, it gets worse when they come back from the challenge and then Karen confronts uh, Tom and Ian and wants an answer right now about uh, if she's in the final three with them. Yeah. yeah. I, Karen is so gullible. Oh my gosh. Even at, at final tribal when she's like, what was I to you, Tom? And he's like, you were a great person i'm gonna let you figure that out in your heart okay and she, all right and she's she's like what a great guy like <laughs> she just buys anything that tom says so uh mm -hmm. for her to to have never been told by tom that she's in an alliance with them and to to know that they don't have a deal uh and to still you know have faith in tom is it's mind-blowing Whatever the combination was to Karen's lock, uh, Tom had it. Yeah. Uh, he he put those three tiles in a random order. <laughs> yeah. He knew. got it Fast, he knew faster than Ian did. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, so uh, Tom and Karen talk and, uh, you know, uh, Tom ends up uh, being able to uh, rope Karen uh, back in, but... Ultimately, by the time we get to tribal council, then everybody's throwing Karen under the bus. Like, I don't really understand what, uh, how we got to this point. Yeah, what did Karen do? Yeah. Well, I think it's that she kind of aired out everything. So she was asking, she goes and confronts poor Ian, being like, is it you, me, Tom, or you, me, Katie? And um, poor Ian's just like, blah, 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 blah. I think that it was the fact that she was willing to, like, make him put him on the spot like that and kind of out Katie's game like this. I think that both of those scenarios allowed them to be able to come to the agreement that like, Hey, she's too much of a loose cannon. She's like, she's ca causing all these risks between us. Um, like, let's get rid of her. We can all agree upon that. And then neither of us are actually going against our word here. Um, and so I think that they're just trying to save face amongst each other. But why don't yeah, they go down Jen? Had it up to here. Yeah. <laughs> like was it did katie tell ian like hey if you want to get back on my good side then don't vote out jen either it has to be karen you have to vote out karen it's just probably easier to get everybody on board with that mm -hmm. you know what who's, i mean like, who's scrambling to keep jen <laughs> maybe katie I, well katie says it's her best well, friend in the island. i think that yeah. they're really good friends well, Maybe that Katie feels like, okay, well, Jen will take me to the final two. Ian will take me to the final two. Karen's Karen not taking me to the final two. So, yeah. Ian, if you want to ever be my friend again, then... Although, uh, Karen should take Katie to the final two. <laughs> Karen, and, Karen and Katie should be protecting each other at all costs here. No, they, they can't get along. So, so, Karen ends up going home. Yeah. Uh, really good finale of Survivor Palau, by the way. Uh, again... Ho hum tribal council, but great final four, great final three. Yeah, yeah and I, I missed the the fire walk, you know, uh, where they kind of went oh, right burial at sea. Yeah. Like I, I missed that. Like we haven't really done that if I if I'm remembering correctly in the in the latter seasons. So but I believe, yeah. Go no, ahead. go ahead. I think uh, Blood versus Water is the last one that they've done. But, you know, we've spent a lot of time in the earlier seasons of Survivor in the countdown recently. So we've been uh, seeing a lot of the rites of passage. I, I, I think I, it's I, so ahead. funny to watch them be like, oh, Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> Kim like, Mullen. Like, in the water. Like, what I are do. they saying about their good friend, Ibrahim? <laughs> Mm -hmm. no, but I like the, the the voiceovers of like them just kind of explaining their game a little bit and like it's all in slow motion about like you know the, yeah. the arc that they had like I know I just kind of like it dramatic wise to seeing like their arcs told in like a short s snippet so I, I miss those um, I wish they brought those back in mm -hmm. yeah they usually have the people who are like uh, discarding the torches say a few words but <laughs> they don't know <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 people for one day uh, everybody on the <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, at the final four, we're going to have a final four breakfast, which uh, we're doing at this point in time. So, okay. Final four breakfast. don't do that breakfast. anymore? Final, we do a final three breakfast. Uh, oh, right, we're, right. We're yeah. in, I think that it's like, hey, start of the finale. Uh, we're going to put yeah. the breakfast here. As opposed to we've well, made it to the finale. Well, now the finale starts with like 10 people. Yeah, too many people. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, Tom's going to win immunity at the final four after they show him the car that they, he's going to win. I just think that's that's weird. I know. It didn't understand it. It's like, it's not for you, but look at mm -hmm. the, the glove compartment. There's a ch blank check. Blank check. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, Tom is going, I firmly believe that Tom, it's not, I, I don't know for sure what Ian was going to do, but I believe that Tom would have gone home here uh, had he not won the pure luck final immunity challenge when it was just between him and Ian, that was 100% luck, uh, and Tom would be a, a fourth place finisher in another The world. combination luck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because you see Ian and Jen and Katie talking about like, oh, well, if Tom doesn't win, we're going to vote him out next. Yeah, and and it's not certain that that's what Ian's going to do. But if Katie and Jen are going to do it, doesn't really matter what Ian's going to do. What is he going to do? Like, I, I guess he could force fire. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I, I just think uh, Tom, Tom was a lot closer to going home than maybe even Tom knew. Yeah, uh, we well, talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. We talked about this earlier, and we didn't really get into it uh, when it happened in the episode. But the uh, big uh, Katie and Ian uh, confrontation happens. Of uh, that, Katie feels like she lost her best friend. Lita, do you feel like that you could represent what these two sides are that they're fighting about? Yeah. So Ian's. So, so this is over Ian not taking her on the reward after explicitly telling her that he would take her. So Ian's side of this is it's dinner, you know, it's a reward. Um, why is this such a big deal? But Katie's side is it's not about what the reward was. It's that you directly told me a lie. Like you said that you're going to take me um, and you didn't. And so for, I, yes, I think Katie is blowing it out of proportion, but I also understand where she's coming from, which is that like, it was just such an unnecessary lie for Ian to tell. It was just so unnecessary for him to take Tom. And, and so for Katie, um, that compiled with not being let in on the Greg plan until the last minute and not having any input just shows very clearly that Tom is more important to Ian than she is. Um, and so I understand her frustration. And from Ian's perspective, he doesn't see it as sort of uh, representing a broader relationship mm. status between the the two of them he just sees it as like it's a reward who cares um so i get where both of them are coming from i do think katie is laying it on thicker than maybe she actually uh feels to to try to get ian to feel guilty and and guilt him into um you know being being closer to her um and i feel bad for for ian here but i do understand where katie's coming from okay um Ian is going to get in hot water here because uh, that he uh, says to Tom that it would have been a difficult decision uh, for him if Tom uh, hadn't won immunity. Uh, Ian's unforced errors this episode are yeah. just... <laughs> and Jen explains to Tom, like, oh, you didn't know that Ian was going to vote you out. Yeah. Jen so, is so great here. Oh, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry you, to be the bearer you, you of bad know? news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, you didn't know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chantel, uh, Tom is very upset now. Well, and this is where the side of Tom that came out that was reminding me of Rob, where he just was kind of like, well, like, tell me what you said. Like, well, you said this, and oh, that's your second strike against you, and kind of like outlining aligning the, the, the things that he's done wrong within their relationship to prove the trust and allowing him to want to keep him in the game. And so I actually didn't particularly like how Tom responded to this yeah. because I do felt like poor Ian, like he's really young and he's, he's, he's trying to win this game as well. I don't really think that he, he, I do think that he would have voted out Tom if Tom didn't win immunity. Yeah. I do think that he would have, but I think that that's because he just wanted to have a chance at winning the game. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when Tom won the immunity, like obviously he wants Tom to take him to the end. So he has a shot to win the game. And so uh, the fact that, 
Tom, instead of like being compassionate a little bit to his his disciple, you know, his little person that he's been grooming this whole game, he was just kind of kind of being mean and giving him like tough love and making him feel really shitty and, and guilty. And I, I didn't really like how how that was landing with poor Ian. Wait, just just to be clear, Tom is the one who votes against Ian. Yes, who, Tom and Jen. Where are the votes? Exactly. Tom, Tom and, and Jen, Jen vote okay. against Ian, and Ian and Katie vote against Jen. That's wild that Katie is so dedicated to Ian. I think that people talk so much about like Ian's it, and Tom's sort of like loyalty and their gentleman's agreement and things like that, but uh, that's a that's a lot of loyalty from Katie. For so she doesn't need to do it. Well, in fairness, it, Ian is going to get Katie into the final two, uh, like well, an she orchestrated didn't, deal. She didn't know an orchestrated that. deal. Uh, so I think that she felt like, okay, well, uh, that probably between me and Jen, we're not going to beat Tom for the final, for the final two. And then maybe is yeah. Tom going to take, but, but she, I think Katie felt like, okay, I can't beat Tom. Maybe that I've like, d like, uh, Ian has taken enough damage to his reputation that if Ian takes me to the final two, maybe I have a shot against him. So I, yeah, I kind of see where she's coming there. from. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that she was just knows that especially from what happened with their just most recent fight and whatever, like he would take Katie over anybody else that was left. And I think he even says that after later on is that like, he would have always taken Katie. And so I think that she was going with a sure thing and that yeah. maybe he was going to be able to get out Tom and win that immunity. Then they'd have a, a kind of a different scenario and it would have been her and Ian sitting in the final two. I think that that was her ideal scenario all along as it was Ian's. And so I think she was just trying to hope for that to happen. Cause I don't think she just wanted to be her, yeah. her Jen and, and Tom. I, she may yeah. not be able to beat Jen either. I mean, uh, Jen has no, Greg on the jury. And, yeah. and then she, Katie also has Karen and Janu, who both will not vote yeah. for her under any circumstances. And like That's, you said, people love Jen. Yeah, like, just from a personality Jen. standpoint. So, yeah, no, I... Yeah, that makes sense for Katie. Um, but, I mean, Jen, again, I just came off of the season so high on Jen. She's never it's even really actually good. voted out. Yeah. She, I, I always forget that, that it's a fire thing here. Yeah. Um, with matches, so like <laughs> it's, it's like a total crapshoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they do have <laughs> to burn the rope now. The flint? Like yeah. when, um, when did that come into play? Where they forced them with the flint instead? It doesn't happen in Guatemala. Oh, Thailand, um, I think. Well, I think that Sari loses a fire making to Terry oh, right. uh, or or Danielle um, in uh, Survivor Panama. So yeah. that's to come. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, Jen's, yeah, she's really good. It comes down run. to the fire to get her out. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to have a super iconic final three challenge uh, that's going to come up. Uh, Bob, Bob, Booey, uh, where <laughs> Tom, Ian, and Katie are going to be out there. And uh, Chantel, did this live up to the hype on the rewatch? No, because I hated how it ended up going down. Like, I just, I forgot about it. And then I'm seeing like, oh, eight hours, 11 hours. I'm like, oh, maybe Ian's going to win. Like, I can't remember what happens here. And then how it all, like, obviously Katie stepped down pretty early. Um, I mean, after five hours, let's give Katie <laughs> yeah. a little credit. Comparatively. Um, yeah. And then at eight hours, Jeff starts chirping them a little bit, being like, oh, you haven't been making any deals here or anything like that. Like, you've been, been very quiet for the last five hours, et cetera, et cetera. And then at around the 11 hour mark, it, Tom starts kind of talking to, to Ian and Ian ends up feeling guilty and decides that the only way that he can rectify himself and his relationship with Tom and with Katie is if he steps down and Tom promise him that he will choose Katie instead. I was like, what? Like Tom says, if you step down, I'll, he'll take you. Like. What? You're going to step down and allow him to take Katie? Like, I just didn't think that it made any sense. Um, I really didn't want him to do that. Like, I would if he's going to step down, I would have I would have loved to see whether or not Tom's kept his word there because it wouldn't have been his best move to keep um, Ian. And so if he's always preaching, like, keep your word and not a weasel, blah, 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 it, I would have loved to see him in that position where is it going to be better for my game or am I going to keep my word? And that would have been more compelling. So I didn't like that quit. At I all. totally just I think that this is so compelling. I think that <laughs> this is I think that this is why I mean Tom Tom making this deal and then whether he takes or whether he doesn't it's it's the same we see this every season that has a final two is somebody making that decision. And it's never really like that interesting. I don't know. I don't think Danielle making a 
pro and con list because she's a Gemini and can't make a decision is like that <laughs> interesting. Um, so I, this was something different. It's the reason this is the reason that Survivor is so great is because everybody just has different things. We saw all Janu needed was to make fire and that was satisfying for her. And all Ian needed was to like have his dignity and stuff. And, and it sucks that they made him feel bad enough that he has to do this. I right? just like, don't I, think that he would have done that if they didn't both guilt him, like make him oh, feel for so sure. bad. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And yeah. So the yeah. reason why I didn't find it that compelling because he was on there for 11 hours, I wanted him to stay on there and 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 him make the decision and him win and him have some power. And, and I just didn't like the fact that he had to succumb to both yeah. of those two that kind of guilted him into allowing them to get to the final two without him and allowed him to be okay with that. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's it's just so human and so unpredictable uh, that you can't like you can't really believe that he's actually doing this. And I think that's what makes Survivor so amazing. And uh, I think I think Ian uh, is somebody who's looked back on as really well liked. I think probably one of the the most uh, well well remembered one time players ever. Um, and I think that he's much more iconic going out at three in the way he does as being as he would be being a losing finalist yeah i think for ian i think he thought okay i'm gonna go to the final uh three and and i'm gonna win i'm gonna beat tom and i'm gonna take katie to the final two and that's how i'm gonna make it up to her and i think that Mm -hmm. uh ian somewhere around that 11 hour marker realizes uh, tom is never coming down i'm never gonna beat tom uh and tom in that interview that uh we did with t-bird tom talks about like he'd still be there right now like he was yeah. never, Tom was never going to come down. And I think that Ian uh, realized that and realized, that, okay, well, the only way now I can make it up to Katie is that I will give Katie that spot at the, at the final two. So that that way, like I've made it up to Tom, I've made it up to, uh, to Katie. Uh, that's good. His life is fine. Uh, that Ian went on to do cool stuff. I think he's making uh, backpacks that are yeah, going to- Yeah, he lives to... in New York now, but Ian and I have some uh, some people in common because he was in the Pittsburgh nonprofit space uh, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and, and, he, and he, and he uh, does uh, char- charity work and he has a daughter and uh, his life is fine. And so I think that ultimately this would worked out fine for Ian. So, Rob, you're saying that somebody can recover from coming in third place on Survivor? I think so. Okay. You can. Doesn't have to be a death sentence. Yeah, <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. No, I I think Ian is um, really fondly remembered. Uh, my question for you guys is: Is this a quit? I I kind of think of it as a quit, a noble quit. I think it's a quit too, but I had never thought of it that way until yeah. I watched it this time around. I do think it's a quit, but I, again, I, I'm not as hard on quitters as a lot of people. Are. I think, uh, well, you know, I'm still team Janu. I, I think that quitting, uh, is not necessarily the worst. I mean, well, for. let me ask you this. Is it, uh, I, I guess cause he seals his fate, but I mean, like when Richard Hatch steps off of the immunity challenge intentionally, uh, in the first season, like he might be losing the game. I guess he doesn't know. He didn't like engineer like, all right, Kelly, you take Rudy to the end. Uh, no, so, it, it's different because Ian specifically asked to be. Voted yeah. Out. Yeah. Uh, I guess it is technically, but you know, I, I, I don't like, uh, hold it against him where I think that no. maybe, uh, like, uh, in like, even in my like younger uh, days, I would have said like, Oh, stupidest move ever. What an idiot. Like, uh, and not really try to like, get to understand what he's thinking here. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's technically, but I don't consider it like uh, th- the same thing. Like, I don't think that this was like uh, Greg uh, or Jeff Wilson. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't think of him as a like quit. Like I'm, I'm not fully mad at him. I just wanted him to. I wanted him to stay up there, and I wanted him to beat Tom, and I wanted him to go to the end with Katie. Like that's what I wanted to happen. I wanted yeah. that. Way and to also, go. I don't think he wanted to sit there in the final tribal council and just get berated by that's seven true. more people. Oh yeah, um, that's actually a good point. Ian is listed as an unofficial quit on uh, the Survivor Wiki, which it's funny to see <laughs> okay, to see Ian the on the same list as a uh, Chet and GC. <laughs> yeah, <So, laughs> not really the same. <laughs> all right, so that's Ian. Uh, Tom and Katie go to the final Tribal Council, and 
ho hum of final travel yeah. council. Uh, a- a- any highlights for you, Chantel? Well, it's not really a highlight, but what something that stood out is the fact that Katie just didn't really defend herself in a way that was like, I do think that she could have potentially gained some of these people's votes. Like, I know that she's never going to get Greg's because Greg doesn't respect how she was forced or to play Karen, the game. Or Karen, or Janu. Fair, 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 fair. She might still have been able to, to steal Jen's vote, but Jen did say when she was leaving, you might have lost my vote. So she you know, was in a sticky spot with her as well. But I just felt that she kind of didn't articulate her game very well. And she didn't look at the relationship that she built with any of these people, bad or good, and like try to figure out a way that she could get their vote. Like, I think that she was just like, yeah, we didn't like each other. I don't expect your vote. Like, what? Like, well, Mm -hmm. you could still get it. Like, don't just give up like that so i felt that she was sitting in the final two seat that she wanted to be there she she had a game that i think that could have been respected if she just showed people what she had done um and so i think that she she wasn't really promising in in how she kind of represented herself in the final two lita do you think that it would be uh harder or easier for katie to beat a tom in modern survivor Say 30 um, seasons later. Man, I I mean, one has to think easier because it's hard to be to do worse than six to one. Um, but <laughs> I I don't know that that Katie ever really wins here, even in modern survivor. I, I think that there there is a time when sometimes you're bitter about the the person who and I don't use bitter pejoratively. I big fan of bitter jurors. Uh, but uh I think there is there are times when people are bitter at the the people who made all of the decisions, which uh, would be Tom in this case. But I think it's always coming down to who people want to represent their season. And so people are compelled to vote for a strong person. And, you know, this is not an original thought. People have, have said this many times before, but people want to vote for a person that they won't be embarrassed to have lost to. And so I think even if it's the person that you don't necessarily want to have the million dollars, even if you personally like Katie more, um, people want to be able to look at it and be like, well, at least I lost to Tom who can do anything. He could kill a shark and win five immunities. Like it makes you feel it's like when your team goes out in the first round of the playoffs and then the team that they lost to goes on to win the Super Bowl. You like kind of root for them because you're like, oh, well, at least like, you know, we lost to the best team there was. So yeah. I think it's it's always going to come down to that. And when you look at the the people who um, have won with less dominant games, it's always a final three where it's not that clear. It's not like, uh, you know, Aubrey was like a Tom when uh, when Michelle beat her. Aubrey mm-hmm. was maybe more strategically dominant, but she wasn't, you know, like yeah. out there being physically dominant. So I think it's always going to be a tough road for the Katie's of the world. Yeah, and Chantel, I-, I think that the issue for Katie might have also been like uh, we saw some of the issues with like she had like uh, like great strengths in her social game, but then she also had like things that weren't great in her social game. And the show definitely like highlighted those over the course of the season, uh, maybe to explain why she's going to lose uh, six to one, where she made def- definitely like clear cut enemies out of Janu and Karen along the way um, and had other moments where she's like, you know, making fun of other people in the tribe. So I think that it's hard for her to be in that spot to sort of like, uh, even if she was going to sort of like where we see like a Natalie white is able to beat Russell or Tina is going to be able to like, I, I think that um, she just doesn't have like that. She doesn't have the, the, the like, okay. Uh, I loved Katie uh, yeah. where, <laughs> Which is well, why I think, I think Jen could have won, even maybe against Tom. Jen could. I think Jen had a better chance against Tom. Yeah. Well, and I also think with Katie, though, that she, she kind of had a couple of blunders, too. Like, she was going to make a couple moves, and then she didn't. And then she's going to try mm. a couple things, and then she gets caught. Like, so I think that she didn't follow through with any of her flip-flopping that she kind of was doing. And those would have it would have shifted the game. People would have stayed that were differently. They would have seen something flashy that they can like uh, say like, oh, Katie made this move. And she would just have a little bit more that people can speak on as to her playing the game. But really it only looks as though she sat out of challenges, she made fun of people and she was carried to the end by her original uh, alliance. So I think it was just going to be very hard no matter what for Katie, especially because she didn't follow through with any of those moves after the absorption. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Survivor, Palau, Reunion, Lita. Uh, good reunion or bad reunion? Great reunion. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, Jeff gets to everybody. Yeah, I, I love this reunion. Wanda sings. Yeah. Keeps it short. What do you want? You're done. It's, yeah. It's great. We hear we get an update on the on the showmances about who's still getting plowed by the showmances, which turns <laughs> out to be nobody. Yeah. Um, did you make and... that pun? <laughs> what? Did, did, did Jeff did make not say that? No, he did not. Hey, Kim, you still getting plowed by uh, Jeff over there? <laughs> uh, no. So, um, I, yeah, we we get a lot of updates. Angie talks a lot. Um, yeah, uh, one of the better reunions, short and sweet. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, should no, I, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, any favorite reunion <laughs> moments for you? Not really. I I don't. The only thing that I usually like about the reunion is just seeing how much better everybody looks. Um, and so you know they get. Oh, all I think everyone down. looks worse. <laughs> really, in general, or yes. this one? Uh, in general, but particularly this one, I think everybody looks worse, except Ian. Ian looks better. I just like when they're just like cleaned up though. You know what I mean? And so it just, that's it just seeing the transformation there because you start getting used to them just looking so depleted and dirty. And so mm -hmm. I like seeing them kind of spiffed up a little bit. I okay. do like seeing the 2005 fashion at the, at the <laughs> not at the reunion, but uh, when she's asking the jury question, Steph is wearing a pink camo denim skirt. And the shiniest <laughs> lip gloss you've ever seen. And like, I do the remember 2005. The was camo. That's true. It was <laughs> World War II. Yeah. So, yeah. Stephanie was uh, was staying on brand. <laughs> she was ready. Okay. All right. Um, you want to get into some feedback questions? Let's, Let's just do, do a couple. It. I mean, we're cl closing in on four hours. Uh, we'll do more over the weekend. Yeah. We, we should have taken two two rests by now. Two two hour one hour rests. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and then let's see. Um, how about? Um, okay. Uh, Christian Galdones uh, says, uh, "Why did Kobe vote for Katie instead of Tom in the final tribal council? Because if Kobe voted for Tom, he would be the first person to have played a perfect game in Survivor history before JT's win in Survivor token genes. Uh Kobe did not like Tom. Exactly. I don't think Kobe cared if Tom played the per first perfect Survivor game. <laughs> that that might be the reason why he like voted for Katie." He probably didn't want it to be a blowout. And like I, I definitely do not think that Kobe likes Tom. And I think that he probably wanted it to not be like, he didn't play a perfect game. He didn't treat everybody in a way that made them want to vote for him, including yeah. especially Kobe. And so I think he just wanted to be like, have his mark being like, hey, like you didn't do enough to get my vote. And I, I, I like that actually. I don't want to gloss over. Uh, I meant to bring it up when we were talking about Kobe, like kind of overreacting to the fishing thing. There's, a bit of casual homophobia on this season. They uh, they make a I think more a, than a bit. Yeah. Yeah. They they make a really big deal out of ooh, Greg's giving Ian a bath. Like yeah. they make a really big deal out of that. Um and I think probably Tom was was part of that culture where we talked about how it was like uh there were a lot of gender roles going on on Karor. And I think uh overall Kobe didn't love Katie, uh, but I think he never she never made him feel bad about himself in the way mm -hmm. that I'm guessing Tom did, if not directly, at least kind of contributed to as part of the boys club over there. Yeah. I think like that's always been a strained relationship. Uh, Kobe and Tom, like they've yeah. never really seen uh, eye, eye to eye. Um, Corey Copeland says, uh, do you think that Jeff and the survivor executives will ever allow for another tribe to be uh, decimated again? Like it happened in this season. Chantel, could you ever see another scenario where one tribe just gets completely picked off? No, because now they love the twists, and so like they're, they're going to shake, you know, into three tribes, and then it's going to be a, a, a swap. And so I don't think that that will happen again in that sort of fashion, because there's usually a swap or a or a, or a bunch of merge. I think, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we we saw they didn't let it. It could have happened to Matt Singh, and they didn't let it happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I don't I don't think they're interested in doing that again. I think it's very fun for one season. Uh, I don't know that anybody is scrambling to see it again. Mm -hmm. They may have done it again if Stephanie ended up like getting to the other tribe and like winning a few things and like she ended up winning the season. Like maybe they yeah. would try it again. Be like, ooh, maybe we can get that good arc again with like a woman taking it all and taking down both tribes. But um, mm -hmm. they didn't get the, the the ending for it to be something that they wanted. Yeah, the intentional Matt Singh doesn't work when you go straight to the merge and there's only one of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Casey from Seattle wants to know, uh, how would Tom have done on Winners at War? 
<laughs> we, we saw how Tom does on an all-star season. Mm. Uh, um, I, it's really hard to say. Cause like I said, um, I don't know that Tom knows how to play from the bottom uh, and he doesn't necessarily know how to lose. I think he would probably do better than he did in heroes versus villains. Cause I don't, necessarily think i mean no matter how kind of dominant his win was or whatever i don't think he looms in those other winners minds super large i don't know how well they know palau um and he's much <laughs> older at this point um he you know i i don't know that the the 60 year old is going to be uh the biggest threat out there um to those people so i i think tom uh i think tom would be an early merge boot i think he would be someone that people want on their tribe and he would be, he'd be okay. Um, he'd never raise the flag at the mm -hmm. island. Yeah. So he would not quit on the edge of extinction. Yeah. yeah. He'd do great well, on edge of extinction. Uh, you know, so I, I think he'd do okay. I don't see Tom outwitting a lot of the people that were on that season though. But I wonder though, with Tom being so much about team and let's stick together, if he would have been able to get all the, you know, like earlier seasons of Survivor to stick together. Cause it was kind of Sandra that kind of strayed outward and like kind of started having a little bit of dissension within the, the older season um, Survivor winners. And so I'm wondering if maybe he would have helped them be a little more cohesive and, and stick together because that's kind of what like the newer season of Survivor winners, they kind of all stick together no matter what. And and the, the the older winners were kind of yeah, kind but of I I feel like there was also an issue with the older winners where it was like they weren't necessarily as good. Like I don't think Danny Boatwright <laughs> is like the person that you like, <laughs> you like need to steer your ship. You know what I mean? Like uh, I just I think yes, part of it was old school versus new school, but I feel like uh, old school had maybe a, a little less talent. I don't think that Tom would have, strategically I'm saying, and I don't think that Tom would have contributed to that. Who does the production bump for Tom Westman? Oh my God. I would have to look at who's even on that season. Uh, who are the, who are the guys? Who do you think, Rob? I'm trying to think of somebody that would like, I'm trying to think of like uh, who's in his age group. Like uh, does Ben get bumped for I don't, Tom. I don't think production is bumping Ben. Yeah, for so, anything. I don't know. I think it's hard to come up with uh, who it is. Like, I feel like that uh, Nick and Adam are like different demo than uh, Tom. Uh, I don't know. Is it Yule? I, I think the Yules would get. I don't think they'd want to bump Yule. Really? Uh, it, is it? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think they'd want to bump Ethan either. Yeah, I think the uh, male cast is pretty loaded. So oh, uh, they they Nick, might bump uh, Nick. Nick. It might be, it might be Nick. I don't think that uh, production Nick, like yeah. lives for Nick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's that's a better world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even like Todd that much. I, I prefer yeah. that. <laughs> so all right, let's get into our survey for this week. Of course, uh, we'll answer more feedback questions this weekend on the Patron Feedback Show. Uh, be on the lookout for that with Cameron Haas and. Danielle Doby. Okay. Who is the season's MVP? According uh, to the staff. There's nobody else. Oh, oh, according to the listeners, are we guessing or is our yes, opinion? Yes, you're guessing. I, guessing. Uh, they probably put, picked Wanda. Tom? Who? Wanda? They probably picked Wanda because because it's the patrons. Mm. Yeah, like they, they would it's be all listeners. It's all listeners. Oh, it's all listeners. Either way, there's a whole podcast dedicated to Wanda. It um, is I, I think <laughs> Tom Westman, 65%. Big run away from Tom. Boring. Too basic. Like, that's so shocking to me. Is it usually the winner? Um, Not always. 18% hmm. okay. uh, for Steph, 10% for Ian. All right. Which one-time player would you most like to see come back and play again in a future season? I would love uh, Ian to come back. I think, I think probably everybody said Ian. Yeah. Ian, 57%. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've got one. Kobe, 14%. Katie Gallagher, 11%. All right. Which Katie name on this list made you pause and think to yourself, wait, <laughs> who's that? It got to be between Kim Ashley. Mullen and Ashley Ashby. I think it's going to be Ashley because uh, Kim had that little relationship. So Yeah, I hope it's Ashley. Ashley, 55%. Yes. <laughs> I just watched the season. If you showed me a picture of Ashley... <laughs> And like, and and three other women from like a Google image search. I don't think I could pick out <laughs> Ashley Ashby. 
Oh, it's to the extent that I looked for her on Instagram and scrolled through a bunch of photos of someone and still couldn't decide if it was her or not. Great name, <laughs> Ashley Ashby. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who was the most underrated player of the season? Maybe I think Kobe. probably a lot of people. Maybe Kobe. I think maybe Jen. It is Jen. 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 18.6%. Uh, Katie Gallagher had 18%. Uh, percent. Greg Carey, 17.5%. How about that? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. Greg, Greg has played, a carbon copy of Greg has played every season of Survivor. Yeah. I call him poor, poor man's Burton in the evolution of strategy. Oh, yeah. Oh, good for Burton getting, yeah. getting the OG <laughs> status on that. Yeah. Okay. Kelly Wentworth Award for best pre-merge boot. Who was it? This one has to be Wanda. <laughs> it is close. It is super close. One and a half percentage points separates first and third. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, who else is on this? Okay, so who's on the that? Okay, Angie. I think Angie. Angie might have yeah. gotten some votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's in there. And then who Angie. would be the third? It's Wanda, Angie, and uh, I don't know, Bobby John, maybe? Bobby John, yeah. Uh, the order is Bobby John, 24.7, Angie, 24.6, Wanda, 23.3. Wow, Wanda, you were right there. Right there. Bronze medal. <laughs> All right. Out of the 40 seasons, with one being the first best winner and 40 being the 40th best winner, where would you rank Tom Westman? And we got the average from the listeners. Oh, it's listeners, not me. Um, I, I, I think he's top half, but uh, not top 10. Give us a number. Yeah. Uh, 16. I okay. was going to say 18 is my guess. No, you're too low. 12.15. So that puts oh, him as not, the fourth best winner we've talked about here in the countdown. Wow. Who's the best so far? Uh, best is Kim Spradlin with a 5.8. Oh, then yeah, yeah. big drop off for Yul Kwan, Rob Mariano, Tom Westman, and then Earl Cole. Yeah. Yeah. Top five, baby. Okay. I, people, people like Tom as a, as a winner, I think. All right. Do you feel like this season is placed too low, too high, or just right? I think probably most people i got a lot of uh tweets that said too low so i think probably mm -hmm. people said it was a little too low i think i think it's just right so i'm gonna go i'm gonna hope that the viewers are with me and just right 39 percent said just right uh oh. 36 said too low okay. and 24 said too high uh oh. all right what season are we talking about next week all oh, right oh my gosh I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, every everybody is fighting about San Juan del Sur in our mentions. Uh, mm -hmm. so, it's like, relax. <laughs> yeah, I feel like What maybe... will be the 18th best season of Survivor? Or is this the 18th Wait, best season? 17th. 17. Yeah. yeah. 17. My first week back. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, think, for me. Um, I think San Juan del Sur could come up. I think Korong could come up. Korong has a lot of people who love it and also hate it. I think those are the two that I'm looking at. Okay. I don't remember what, what we have left. All right. <laughs> I don't have a drum roll for you, so I can tell you that next Wednesday night, we'll be talking about the 17th best season of Survivor. The audience thinks it's going to be San Juan del Sur. <laughs> there you go. But they're wrong. Ooh. Oh. They are co-wrong because <gasps> that is going to be the 17th best season of Boo, we love co-wrong. All yes. my faves are coming back to back. So very excited. Uh, next Wednesday night, I will be uh, back with Puya Zambakili and Jenny Autumn. It's going to be a lot of fun next Wednesday night. Talk about the 17th best season of Survivor. Survivor go wrong. Uh, this is this we're we're in the like the we're talking about the, all the good seasons now. We're in the top yeah. half of the countdown. This isn't <laughs> like when me and Chantel were talking about <laughs> we're like, the island of the island idols. Of the idols. <laughs> And that was fun. It was super Chappelle. fun. Uh, we definitely made it made it fun. But this one was a lot uh, better to talk about. I felt better watching it and better better having these discussions. So. Yeah. <laughs> so this was great. This was so much fun to be back. And uh, yeah, we're we're in the uh, like the the fun part of the countdown as we are on our way officially uh, our march to Survivor Forty One. Here we are back uh, on the top half of the countdown. Only good seasons left. All right. Let me tell you about what else is coming up here on Rob as a podcast. Uh, we had over this past week that 
Liana Boris uh, filled in for me on Twish Ultimate Trivia. And we had a uh, great matchup between Jessica Lee, Jason Reed, and Michael J. Clark. Uh, check that out in your podcast feed or at robinswebsite.com, of course. Then also, lots of other great stuff. Uh, out, Without Play Out list. Sasha Joseph joined Mike Bloom and <laughs> Shannon Gus to talk about the top merge tribe names. No merge tribe name in this season. It's Karar. <laughs> yeah, just Karar. Put it number one. That was great. <laughs> we loved it. Okay, uh, check that out. Uh, Podcaster Mafia is happening uh, Thursday night. I will be joined by uh, a panel of RHAP podcasters to play the first ever podcaster mafia game uh I, I just will be the invite i was back making bait with uh with everybody else. <laughs> kobe I, yeah. I will be there tomorrow to do this so yes okay. <laughs> that will be live at 7 p.m uh be on the lookout for that 90 day fiance happily ever after puya and liana uh were back together on the podcast to talk about the latest episode of 90 day fiance happily ever after check that out as well and of course uh we are back here in full swing we got our patron feedback show coming up this weekend find out more about everything we have going on over at robinsonwebsite.com slash patron thank you so much uh scott uh for that of course check out special offers from our sponsors anytime at robinsonwebsite.com slash offers and of course you can follow us on social media subscribe to the podcast as well Hit the subscribe button if you're watching us here on YouTube. And then check us out on Instagram and on Twitter. Rob is a podcast on Twitter, at RJP Grams on Instagram. Uh, thank you again, Scott. Okay. All right. Wow. Look at us. We made it. Four hours on Survivor Palau. <laughs> Chantel, what, what's coming up for you? <laughs> Just hanging out on my YouTube channel, Reality Realness, with three S's. We're talking about The Bachelorette. That's the only thing that's really going yes. on right now. Um, it's a Katie season, so on Tuesdays we're usually having a little live chat about the episode. And then I'm hanging with Sarah from Nerdtainment on Saturdays, and we're talking about Survivor South Africa. So you'll oh. catch me on it over there on Nerdtainment talking about that one, which has been pretty fun so far. A really good first episode. Okay. Well, Chantel, uh, great to have you back here on the countdown. Love it. Yeah. It's uh, so, so much fun to, to check back in after uh, such a, uh, <laughs> uh, can you believe, months ago. <laughs> what, what has it been? 20, 23 weeks? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Long time. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Chantel, uh, great job. And Lena, it was so nice to talk about Palau with you. <laughs> it, I mean, just we to pull give, out through this thing. We did. Um, just just to give some closing thoughts on Palau overall. Um, I understand why people don't like lo necessarily love this season. It is a decimation of a tribe. It doesn't have the same kind of electricity on a rewatch as it did originally. There's not that much strategy on this season because the whole pre-merge is just voting people out based on challenges. So uh, I, I get it. Um, but... For me, I think this is one of the mo the most character driven seasons yeah. ever, um, and I just think every single person on Karor is memorable, and it's a great tribe. And then you have a couple stars on Oolong too, um, and I just I I think it is such a memorable season, and it's so human uh, and unpredictable uh, in some ways, not in others. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I just literally love the season, so I'm I'm very happy to uh, have been on this podcast. Yeah, I, I can't agree more with what you're saying. And that's why I say that Palau is the best season of Survivor I have watched in 2021. Number one <laughs> on my rewatch rankings. There you go. I um, loved it. Yeah, it's, it's very, very fun. Um, I think it's also, I think, one of the funniest uh, evolution of strategy uh, <laughs> chapters. So if you yes, haven't listened to thank that, you. definitely um, go back and, for that. And maybe it's just that I haven't watched a season of Survivor in two weeks. But uh, no, this was uh, this was great. I, I I really enjoyed this. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm excited for uh, Panama to come out because that's another. Well, I'm not. I hope it doesn't come out. But that's another thank one you. that I think. Thank you for thinking of me and my safety. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's, Panama and Palau, I feel like, are the ones that people don't always have in their in their top the ten. Two P's. Um, that that are very very high for me. Um, but. Because I love characters a lot more than I than I care about strategy. So, um, yeah. yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter at Lita Tweeted. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Lita Grammed. Um, 
I am not sure what's happening with American Enjoyer. Taryn is uh, a very busy person, as you can imagine, um, as am I. So uh, we'll keep you posted. Just follow us on there. I'm sure we'll do a one-off or something. Um, you can follow my dog on Instagram, at SassyCathyPGH. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't streamed in a really long time because uh, my job uh, just wrapped up and was insane. Um, but you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash pity gaming. Okay. All right. It's been very fun to be back here on the countdown. Uh, got a lot more podcasts coming your way this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed our discussion of Survivor Palau. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.